A very good morning for everyone. A very good and warm morning to everyone assembled here. The digital learning which was introduced only a few years ago has been warmly and graciously welcomed by the world. 
the digital learning and teaching community as well as learners can take comprehensive advantage of the technology and can make their professional more interesting thereby breaking the shackles of conventional teaching methods anyone stops learning is old whether 20 or 80 anyone who keeps learning stays in the greatest thing in life is to keep your mind young with this i welcome all of you to the training program digital teaching techniques both physical and virtual from department of agriculture extension it's a mark of our undying tradition to invoke almighty at the beginning of an important event like great philosopher once said the function of prayer is not to influence god rather to change the nature of the one who prays i would like to call sahana and veena psc students to pray for us महागणपति महागणपति मन सस्मरामि महागणपति मन सस्मरामि वशिष्ठ वाम देवा दिवंदित महागणपति महादेव सुत महादेव सुत गुरु गुहनुत मारकोटि प्रकाश शांत महाकाव्य नाटकादी प्रिय आल महाकाव्य नाटकादी प्रिय मूषिक वाहन मोदक प्रिय महाकाव्य नाटकादी प्रिय मूषिक वाहन मोदक प्रिय महागणपति मन सस्मरा वशिष्ठ वाम देवा दिवंदित महागणपति thank you we are all feel blessed indeed now i request dr ganesh muthi sir associate professor department of agriculture extension to welcome the gathering a yeah, very good morning to all of you respected dignitaries and the dais and of the dais uh, trainees of this program and then the participants uh, participating from the online also and i uh, welcome all of you uh, man has uh, transitioned from the stone age to digital age now so the transformation has happened over millions of years but still in the last decade and in the last century and as well as last decade the changes have been phenomenal and at an unprecedented speed the reason being the knowledge explosion happens because of the sharing of information around the globe and in this context uh, the farmers and the agricultural scientists also need to cope up and they have to be in track with the developments that is happening so we have elected into the we are not uh, bordered the industrial revolution but we are rightly bordered the uh, it revolution and the current digital age developments are the consequent part of that uh, it development ict is and then and now the digital age is the ruling now and uh, the we have to take forward this technologies to the farmers uh, the, the, who is the ultimate consumer dr norman borlak uh, in his uh, end of his uh, uh, period he was uh, introduced with a researcher who came with a new novel in uh, innovation and his last words were take it to the farmer so that means whatever is developed that has to be taken to the farmer ultimately then only it will be serving the purpose so in that context we have to take this technologies to the farmers also so in that process not only the digital technologies is applicable to the teachers and also to the students and ultimately it has to reach the farmers so in that direction we are pro pro progressing uh, to uh, so the students are also have to be trained up so that they will in turn they will be serving as a uh, future section in personnel and also researchers in the years to come so they have to be also equally equipped to use the uh, teaching skills wherein they will be applying the research education or even in the extension point of view in the years to come 
so in that perspective this uh, today's training program the digital teaching techniques has been designed for the students to equip themselves for uh, coping with the uh, future needs of this communication era so for this uh, program uh, we have requested uh, our uh, uh, beloved uh, controller of examination to be uh, to inaugurate this program uh, as we all know that the uh, last one month we have been very busy with multiple uh, commitments of the university like accreditation and other things and uh, now it know the examination is going on so in, uh, so since our uh, request and he has kind enough to accept our uh, request and he has uh, he has come over here so on behalf of the department and on personal behalf i invite him and i welcome you sir to the program and uh, the next personality dr uh, h philips uh, my own uh, teacher uh, who was uh, taking my my msc course in instruction technology not only for me but batch of people uh, he is uh, has joined online uh, so he is very phenomenal in the discipline as well as uh, guiding and all of us know that uh, the 2 plus 1 course but uh, we have undergone under him 1 plus 2 course wherein one theory and two practicals so that means weekly seven hours he used to spend and he used to guide us vigorously so we have learned a lot and he has uh, uh, one of the leading person with respect to he has picked up the from the print and electronic media itself in 1990s itself he has used the he has uh, heading the video production unit and then he was uh, anyway the detailed by data will be presented but my experience i want to uh, highlight a little bit so he has uh, uh, trained us to use the umatic camera and then he has also arranged a tour to a film institute to know the production process or video production and all and then even we visited the doordarshan in 1999 wherein we used to see that touch screen itself was there at that time people is in the special the people in the technologists they were using it for drawing purpose on touch screen itself so such an exposure he has given through that exposure visit also in chennai so he is a phenomenal after later on he went on to become a de and all so the anyway before that our colleague will be introducing Sir, uh, on behalf of our department and on, uh, on my personal behalf, I welcome you, sir, uh, to the program. Thank you. And then uh, uh, our uh, the dean postgraduate studies, uh, Dr. Srinivasa, sir, uh, he is uh, he has joined us and uh, he has been phenomenal in the last one year in organizing multiple digital events, uh, starting from the Science Week. For the first time, the Science Week has been organized under the Corona pandemic time uh, through online. the event was successfully organized under his uh, steward leadership and also the another important event is again that is also first time the digital krishi mela was uh, uh, organized in our university uh, during the november so that also uh, he has was he has been very instrumental and he has been supporting a lot of our department in organizing various programs so on behalf of everyone present here and i invite you sir to the program and uh, dr sudhir sir uh, the director at uh, skill development center and uh, coordinator of ppmc uh, who has uh, the who has been very instrumental and he was uh, inspiring us through his uh, uh, timely guidance and also support and uh, we thank we are thankful to the center for uh, providing this uh, training programs uh, during the year and on behalf of everyone i welcome you sir to that uh, program and uh, the program we planned as to conduct earlier itself but uh, due to the other commitments we keep on postponing on for one or other reason and ultimately we are scheduled and it is starting today so because of this tentativeness we could not contact our uh, experts in time and uh, only just last week we could uh, contact and for, we are fortunate and lucky enough that uh, most of the speakers they have uh, accepted our request and they found some time to uh, they find a slot to accommodate themselves and get permissions and all from their institute and they are all joining i invite them dr jilli sir has already joined i welcome you sir and dr basavapur jilli from banaras hindu university and dr murthy sir and chentil vinayagam and tamiraj sir from north and then we have this experts from coimbatore dr sriram and sentil uh, and anand rajya from coimbatore uh, and uh, we have uh, our own uh, colleagues uh, dr uh, raghupur sir and uh, govind gowda sir are going to be expert for this program so i welcome all these speakers of uh, this program and also our two more uh, speakers of our own uh, department alumni uh, dr vinay kumar and uh, dr dishant 
they are also joining for this program and they will be delivering lectures so on behalf of everyone i invite uh, i welcome all the experts uh, to the program and and i welcome our uh, professor and head uh, department of agriculture section dr d krishnamurthy sir uh, who is uh, behind uh, supporting us to the, to the maximum extent possible and he has been guiding and to take right decisions at right time and uh, he has uh, been phenomenally supporting us for conducting this program on behalf of everyone i welcome you sir to this program and uh, the participants uh, trainees are assembled here i welcome you all of you and also some of the trainees are going to join in the online also for uh, some of the students even joining from uh, so far around 50 registrations have been uh, made and uh, some more students are getting registered maybe we may expect another couple of uh, one hour one hour maybe they may be joining from others uh, our alumni students and their friends may be joining through online also and some of the teachers are also requested to join this program so for them also we are permitting through online so i welcome all these trainees of this program and uh, in, in from the bus bangalore and outside also and and also i invite uh, welcome our departmental colleagues those who are uh, part of this program and i invite them also dr narayan uh, lakshman sir and uh, dr banu prakash sir i welcome you all uh, to this program sir. so i welcome one and all uh, to this program and i need your support and cooperation to conduct this program and make best use of this program thank you very much i cordially welcome you sir for this program Thank you, sir, for your cordial welcome to the gathering. I fold my hands before the Lord, the maintainer of this creation in the form of this light. I adore this light, which destroys all the pains resulting from my omissions and commissions. Lighting the lamp is a symbol of an auspicious beginning. We will now begin our program by lighting the lamp. I request Dr. K. C. Narayan Swami, sir, controller of examination, USB, and all the dignitaries on the dais to inaugurate the training program by lighting the lamp. Thank you all. Please be seated. Technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of the great teachers can be transformational. I am the great privilege to invite Dr. K. C. Narayan Swami, sir, controller of examination for the inaugural address. Please. Sir. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, respected uh, Dean P. D. S. Dr. M. C. Nath Sir, respected uh, uh, Chief Guest Dr. H. Pili, former uh, Director of Extension T. N. A. U. Coimbatore, and the pioneer who was pioneer in uh, implementing IT based uh, extension activities in T. N. A. U. Then Dr. H. Siddhaya. Professor and uh, uh, Skill Development uh, Center Director and also Coordinator of PPMC AS Bangalore, Dr. B. Krishnamurthy, Professor and Head, Department of Extension, Dr. Ganesh Murthy, di Course Director of this training program, then my dear colleagues, Dr. Raku Prasad, Dr. Lakshmi Narayan, Dr. Banu Prakash, and uh, Ashok Gadmani, and uh, other uh, the colleagues who are online and also the the participants of the training program invitees and friends so once again i welcome you all to this digital uh, teaching techniques training program which has been uh, hopefully organized at the right time by the department of agricultural extension in the gkvt campus you know that the world is changing all around us 
we have to change ourselves for sustenance as well as survival. So, in fact, in Canada, in Prabhar Bhaja, so, Badalhavani and Jagadani Manante. So, we have to change. We have to change according to the, the technological advancements. So, in fact, in this context, the internet has played a major role in every man's life for past one year, particularly in uh, delivering the academic uh, contents, okay, academic contents. So right from online teaching, online meetings, online working, even online recreation, online whatnot, everything, everything. We have learned many things. I mean, in fact, uh, the COVID-19 is a boon one way and it is also a bane another way. So in fact, we have learned ourselves many new technologies, techniques. And the, this also has provided an opportunity to strengthen the connectivity across the countries, connectivity across the states by the governments, in fact, to cope up with the pandemic. pandemic. Even the teachers have changed their traditional way of teaching to the modern or the IT way of teaching. Even the students have also adopted. Students have also adopted towards the IT learning as well as the e-learning. And what do you mean by e-learning? Digital education or digital teaching using the digital technologies or the digital material is nothing but a digitally enhanced learning that is called so DEL or e-learning. E -learning. So now it has become an integral part of everybody's life, including I mean, students. In fact, government of India has initiated many IT-related I mean, programs in the country from past eight to nine years. I will mention few important uh, IT related uh, Government of India sponsored programs. The first one is NMECT, National Mission on Education through Information Communication Technology. So, this has provided leverage of ICT in uh, implementation of uh, modern I mean, teaching tools in higher educational institutions. And uh, the, uh, the MHRD has made it, I mean, mandatory to implement ICT tools for imparting teaching and training uh, in higher education institutions in the country. Then second, the most important, uh, the program of the government of India is FIAM. I think you must have heard about this FIAM. Study webs of active learning for young aspiring minds and aspiring minds. So this is an integrated, again, online platform offering online courses right from ninth standard to 12th standard and also up to postgraduate level. So this has been designed to meet the requirement of the present, I mean, the students. Then another important uh, the program is the Swayam Prabha. Swayam Prabha providing 32 high quality educational channels through DTH mode, to DH mode, so which are available 24 bar seven, 24 bar seven in different languages, different languages. Then another important one is the National Digital Library of India. So here there is a digital repository of learning resources which are available. So like anywhere, anytime more. So on this basis, so digital repository has been made by the government of India. Then another program is FOSI, F-O-S-S-E, FOSI, that is free and open source software for education. This is freely available. This is also an open source software, so which enables the education institutions again to take up ICT activities across the country. Then the virtual lab project. So this is particularly meant for the developing the e-contents, particularly for the technology-based institutions like engineering institutions and also the agriculture-based institutions. That is the special program that is virtual lab project. Then what are the effective online teaching methods? We know that PowerPoint presentation is the most popular and one of the, I mean, you can say the popular method of presentation or the digital way. In fact, if you know, the, if you see the history, in fact, I way back 31 years back, I have seen the first presentation of PPT, using for PPT in NCBS, so, uh, not NCBS, BCR mm -hmm. laboratory, biocontrol research laboratory. You now this has been renomenclated as National Bureau of Agricultural Important Research. See, when I attended one workshop, they made presentation <coughs> using PPT during 1991. So that was my first 
I mean, uh, the uh, experience about the PowerPoint presentation. Now it has become an integral part of everybody. So we are using for everything, even for classes, online classes, offline classes, seminars, everything. Then online whiteboard. So this has become very popular across the I mean, globe. Then live online classes. So there are many platforms, you know. So we can use the, uh, uh, the there are one-way platforms, two-way platforms, then video conferences, then the pre-recorded uh, video lectures are also available. So that is contents are available. Then say uh, game-based teaching techniques are also available. Game-based te techniques uh, are nothing but animated techniques. For example, I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, game-based it is very efficient on board and board and so on. These are some of the I mean, most of online teaching. So you know there are many there are many advantages. Advantages are the benefits of our digital uh, education. So see, as you know that there is a possibility for personalized learning or you can say customized learning is also possible. Then there is abundance information. Anybody can share any information across the globe within seconds you can see so abundance there is abundant literature available which can be shared so unlike in case of hard copies or the i mean books or notes then there is a great opportunity for the educators to use the different modes of i mean the teaching technologies teaching technologies then it makes the students smarter. See, nowadays, most of the students, they are smarter than the teachers. They know better, I mean, skills. They have better skills of IT than the teachers. So then, therefore, there is a higher engagement rate. Higher education engagement rate is nothing but the involvement. So there is an involvement rate because, so you are more, more I mean, you are uh, clearly adjusted to the, I mean, IT-based activities. The University of Agricultural Sciences, Bangalore, so is actually is no way inferior to any other institutions in adopting IT-based activities in teaching, research, and also the extension and other administrative activities. I would like to mention a few of the initiatives of U.S. Bangalore. In fact, U.S. Bangalore uh, uh, developed a software called Hukum Software, Undergraduate Academic Management Software. So during the year 2012-13. So which addresses or uh, which covers the entire study cycle of a student right from admission to exit. So there are 42 modules which covers pre-examination, examination, and the post-examination activities of all undergraduate I mean, programs, courses, and students. So we can automatically generate the grade reports, progress cards of the semester, OGP cards, migration certificates, and even the uh, communication degree certificates with security features. We have introduced the 13 security features. Then, subsequently, the university has introduced a barcoding system for uh, answer booklets. So, in order to I mean, avoid the identity of a student, see each barcode has, I mean, six features ID number, name, course number, semester, academic year, and program. So, these are the features. So, they are unique numbers. So based on that, even if they get mixed up, generally what we do is, while uh, subject, subjecting them for the evaluation, we mix them, we shuffle them. So we shuffle them. So based on the barcode, we can easily identify the students. Then we have introduced the OMR technique for the evaluation of objective type of questions in the year 2015. So it has not happened, uh, see, all of a sudden, over a period of 10 years, so in the university, many IT-based initiatives have been incorporated. Then the, another important aspect is centralized digital evaluation system was introduced during the year 2016-17. So the, all the answer booklets of undergraduate students were scanned. That is the process we have to be scanned. Automatically it will shuffle. 
then it in the i mean we will allocate to the teachers in central sitting in a single i mean a platform so they can uh, evaluate the, the answer booklets in fact this is actually uh, we were the first to implement digital evaluation even before vtu implemented we need to implement it this way then web based announcement of results as soon as the i mean uh, the results are announced they are published in the i mean uh, the university website then another important milestone in uh, uh, the us bangalore is establishment of national academic depository cell in the university so national academic depository cell is nothing but it is like with a repository a repository of academic certificates so initially we got registered with the uh, nsdl nsdl mumbai and based on the mhrd so now we are with the digital digi locker now we are with the digi locker so in fact uh, we are uploading all your database to the digi locker and henceforth all degree certificates will be generated like this it will be like uh, it will be common certificate across the country irrespective of the program irrespective of the university this will be awarded digitally by the by government of india so here no signature nothing will be left except digital uh, i mean um, qr code name of the candidate and uh, the digital signature of the uh, uh, this i mean digital locker uh, that is national that is as a pro, uh, under the national e governance division of uh, ministry of uh, electronics and information technology then we are actually in fact you may not believe so in fact uh, from cashless that is online payment is very it has become very popular uh, from 2016 onwards after demonetization in fact in the university so uh, right from 2010 11 so we are dispersing the remuneration and other things through remuneration am i taking my time <laughs> okay <laughs> so we are uh, in fact uh, dispersing the i mean the remuneration everything digitally digitally we are not handling the, the cash right uh, from 2010 11 2011 then we are also pioneers in uh, introduction of uh, uh, digital classes so when uh, the covid pandemic uh, was a threat so in fact on 7th april to be precise on 7th april 2020 so we conducted orientation classes for the students faculty how to use the digital platform for uh, e learning then uh, it was familiarized and uh, st- uh, it was uh, i mean uh, introduced then recently that is in 2018 so the university has developed the ugam app for the purpose of uh, cashless fee payment and also the paperless registration of the semester so in fact this facility we would like to extend the even for the pg program now we are in fact uh, so developing a separate program for the post graduate uh, activities also that is a post graduate academic software it will be integrated with the uh, ugam software so wherein everything will take place in a cashless and paperless form okay. right from submission of form number 1 by the respective chair persons to the submission of the for number 6 everything will happen online then another important thing is feedback mechanism feedback mechanism in the ugam app we have incorporated one module before registration by the students online so they have to provide the feedback of the feedback on the courses what they have studied in the previous semester and also what they have i mean about the teacher also suppose if they have undergone nine courses in the previous semester for each and every course and also for each and every teacher they have to provide i mean feedback then only it will be taken to the next page that is payment page followed by the registration page even the supplementary registrations also they can select using the drop down uh, bar and also they can register then during the covid period the university has conducted even the online examinations even online evaluations see digital evaluation is uh, different from uh, online evaluation digital evaluation sitting in one room uh, in the centralized place then here online evaluation it was a platform wherein uh, see the uh, answer scripts were available in soft forum 24/7 
So even teachers, by sitting in, in, in their home and or any place, working place, they have evaluated. Then our uh, C model, academic model or examination model has been appreciated by ICR, ICR and also um, almost 17 state agriculture universities they have adopted our model, including our, uh, I mean, uh, foreign universities of Karnataka and uh, other universities, many have implemented. Then, Dr. Ganesh, as Ganesh Murthy was mentioning, U.S. so conducted uh, digital Krishi Mela during 2020. The, I mean, our beloved dean, he was the instrumental in implementing. Then, uh, 55th convocation of the university was also conducted digitally as well as uh, physically. And uh, in foundation day also we conducted digitally and this one. Then, uh, even in uh, research also, many initiatives, IT initiatives have been uh, uh, taken place in the university. I'll just mention a few important uh, uh, things. That is seed inventory management software. So this is an integrated software. It covers a right from sowing to harvesting, processing, grading, packing. So this is managed, developed, and now it is being managed by the MSc Building of Research. Then online fertilizer recommendation software that is called Krishi Ganaka. Krishi Ganaka. It is calculated just like so here, based on the nutrity I mean, status of the soil, so here we are, one can able to, I mean, uh, the generate the, the, I mean, nutrient requirement and accordingly the fertilizer application can be taken up. Then, see, the ICT and internet, uh, IoT based, uh, so technology for the pest and disease management, this has been again initiated by the Department of uh, Entomology. Entomology. Then there are several mobile apps, Beej Hadar mobile map. In fact, uh, this uh, is the brainchild of uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor. So here, the information is available on the seed, uh, I mean producers, seed sellers, private seed sellers, seed producers, buyers, and also seed availability, their prices, and also the, the variety wise prices, everything is available, and also regarding the some package of practices. So it is in a comprehensive, app so available then farm calculator see farm calculator this is an another uh, app mm, so our, this in fact it helps in calculation of fertilizers it helps in calculation of seed rate according to the package of practices plant protection i mean measures like the calculation of pesticides herbicides likewise so this has been actually developed by the agronomic division then Another important, uh, the vector, I mean, uh, in the research is using the IT technology is sensor-based automated irrigation techniques for important uh, crops based on the soil status, based on the soil moisture content, based on the, I mean, weather conditions, it will, uh, I mean, uh, the calculate. So based on the IOT and the artificial intelligence and uh, provides the quantity of water required for a, um, a particular plant species. Then other weather advisories, this has become a daily, I mean, uh, the advisory for the farmers. So weather advisory, this is helping in the farmers to plan for their uh, crop, crops and also for marketing or harvesting and marketing of their product. And ICT in extension, extension also, extension, especially in the directorate of extension. So they have developed one a portal called E Krishi portal. So, wherein the cultivation practices of agriculture crops, horticulture crops, silviculture, animal husbandry, likewise, including fisheries, everything is available, including other information. So, that is available in Canada language. Farmers, they can browse, they can get the information according to their requirement. Then, US has also established video conference in the halls in seven KEKs and also one extension education in a distribution, I mean, distributed in 10 I mean, districts of Karnataka. In fact, if you, I would like to mention here, as per the media conferencing is concerned, way back in 2007 itself. So we have established one, I an mean, expert center, just, I mean, in the North Block itself here, one expert center and one video conferencing of that is, we are the village resource center in Dorbalapra Taluk under RBRC projects. 
So under the I mean uh, the able leadership of former Vice Chancellor Dr. K. Narayan Gora. So in fact, uh, in that we have delivered nearly 171 uh, so video conferences on different or diversified topics, right from agronomy aspects to the agriculture, uh, whatnot, everything related to the farmers or farming community. So we got, in fact, uh, we used to get so very good interaction feedback from the uh, stakeholders, particularly from farmers as well as the line department officers. Then, uh, so the extension directorate has also have the kiosks, so which gives information, so the, on different aspects of uh, agriculture. Then, in addition to these, the athletic uh, uh, division of uh, directorate of extension has one dedicated WhatsApp for uh, getting the queries from the farmers and also attending the queries. Similarly, they have one. Uh, dedicated the line that is toll free number so this is again uh, it is open from morning to evening so the farmers or anybody can call and get the information likewise so university so is i mean uh, it is actually has implemented many digital uh, in, i mean uh, techniques not only in the field of teaching uh, and also in the field of research and extension for the benefit of teachers for the benefit of uh, uh, extension personnel for the benefit of students and also for the benefit of farmers so in fact so as i told we have uh, the university has uh, some future plans also like automation of uh, pg activities right from admission to again exit then e governance implementation of e-governance in the university then uh, see already university has introduced uh, e-courses e-courses those are they are the sandwich courses then so with this in fact uh, i expect all the i mean uh, the teachers i mean uh, this program will provide a I mean, uh, the platform for the teachers as well as the students to learn more about the, I mean, digital activities or digital teaching techniques. If I see the programs, uh, I mean, on the, I mean, on the back side of the invitation, so there are a wide range of uh, the topics which covers entire digital uh, so area in the field of digital education. So with this, I thank the organizers, I thank uh, Dr. I mean, uh, so, B. Krishnamurti Sar and the course director, and also the director, uh, SDC, civil development, and uh, dean teachers, and also all the participants, and also the participants who are present online, and also the speakers, speakers, so for giving me an opportunity to deliver the inaugural address. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful inaugural address. As sir mentioned, the digital teaching techniques are also considered as a partial COVID warriors because these are the one of the major source during the entire lockdown condition. They are for an online methods so effectively used for teaching, training programs, and also for conducting of national and international conferences. Thank you, sir. Now I request uh, Sakshi Srivatsav, senior MSc student, to briefly introduce today's chief guest, Dr. H. Philip, former director of extension, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. Good morning, everyone. I am Sakshi Shivasta, student of Senior MSc Department of Agriculture Extension. I would like I would like to take the privilege of introducing the resource person of today's program, Dr. H. Philip, former director of Extension, TNAU Coimbatore. He has 35 years of experience and served in various capacity at TNAU as Professor and Head, Department of Agroforestry, FCNRI, Metro Palayam, and Professor and Head Training Division, DOE, Special Officer, and Director of Extension uh, Education. And some of his uh, initiative and responsibilities taken by him are encouragement and motivation to BSc AG students by instituting Professor Dr. H. Philip Award for best students in BSc AG who scores high marks in agricultural extension subject. 
established educational media center at tamil nadu agricultural university coimbatore for facilitating the professional video and audio production for education research and extension related works implemented seed hub projects with budget of 1.5 crore per center at five icr kvk of tnu connected all tnu centers through multi party video conferencing tool to facilitate virtual learning for students teachers farmers besides extension professionals has guided 6 phd and 15 pg students produce more than 600 program for doordarshan and more than 700 program for all india radio and has 1000 3g video modules produced for empowering the extension professional and students on specific technologies some of the awards he receives are obtained best kvk award by honorable prime minister in 2017 best extension worker award in 1999 natraj rolling shield and medal for extension in 2002 National Best KVK Zonal Award at KVK Dharmapuri in uh, 1718, and Best Cluster FLD Award to KVK uh, Vidra Chalam at uh, 2017-18, Best Book Award in 2016, and 25 years of meritorious service in TNU in 2010. I welcome you, sir, for today's program. The stage is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sakshi. I request chief guest of today's function, Dr. Ed Phillips, sir. to address the gathering thank you very much uh, respected dr kc narayan sang sir director of examination dr siddhaya director of skill development center dr b krishnam of the professor in red department of agriculture extension just those persons my student dr ganesh murthy the organizers of the this training program participants and a very important persons the computer personnel those who are actively involved in organizing this uh, inaugural program and also the training program and my close friend dr jerry from bhg good morning everybody i am very proud to say uh, under my guidance so we produced around 600 video films now it is being digitalized in tnu and out of Uh, six PhD students whose thesis were on ICT, and six PG thesis were on ICT. Then I am very proud to say our students, Dr. Sri Ram, Dr. Anand Raja, Dr. Siddhartha Gayan, Dr. Sendil, and Dr. Ganesh Murthy, they were they are actively involved in ICT field. So, Dr. Siram also he developed expert system on different crops. When I was DE, I established, I also, I formed some 31 WhatsApp group, farmers WhatsApp groups, in almost all KBKs, not only to pass information and also to monitor the activities of uh, my colleagues, those who are working in the field. Almost all 31 KBKs. and we produced around 200 complimentary videos for uh, manage to support the pgdm courses now it is an era of electronic everywhere we are talking about digital 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 even uh, for uh, mug the coffee mug they are digitized if you pour hot water you can see the images something like that everywhere digital in future i think even the beggars will beg you through online it is also possible everywhere we are talking about the digitization and also the ict how this uh, training programs will be useful how this uh, uh, <coughs> digital uh, technologies will be useful for example to the subject to specialist or the source of the program or the teacher it enable them to rapidly share their information to the participants or students not only within uh, the lecture hall outside the lecture hall in india and also globe so within one hour a person is able to communicate to entire globe this is the greatest advantage of the students when we were doing our uh, we were delivering our we were conducting our uh, teaching courses only the registered students can hear 
those who are inside the hall but now it is opportunity for the teacher to expand or to expose his knowledge to almost to the a mass then uh, it is a very good opportunity for them to connect the uh, lecture hall to the entire world through digital technologies it will also help them to uh, potentially utilize the digital uh, technologies uh, they can download any number of information when we were uh, 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 presenting or going for a lecture i used to visit library in those days during 85 90 we used to color, uh, refer so many journals and uh, books and prepare notes sometimes over a projector over transparencies and uh, we are presenting now it is very easy on the table you can download any number of uh, information and you can convert the information what you have collected digitally it can be very easily communicated to the students or the participants this is the great advantages and uh, the merits the teacher have and here the teacher if he is highly talented in uh, ICT, he can catalyze. He is a he. He can act as a catalyst to influence the students and to change the students for not only creating awareness, not only interest, and also to to change their attitude. Also, is possible through this uh, digital technologies. Then coming to the subject matter, it is worldwide. Whatever information available in the globe can be downloaded. with the help of a small mobile phone now we can see even you can see a person without a dress but you cannot see a, see a person uh, without mobile everybody is having mobile especially to the youth and also the retired persons the uh, without mobile you cannot see anybody some some person may have more than one mobile one for it uh, is personal mobile and another one for is conference mobile so mobile is inevitable why they are using mobile because of this icit applications the your world is in your pocket or your world is in your hand so like that the end all subject matters you can very easily download even through uh, what is that uh, google cam you can identify the species anything any class you can identify you can download the information so lot of uh, facilities are available the subject matter is in your mobile even uh, even uh, there is need no to there uh, there is no need to carry uh, voluminous textbooks and other transparencies then coming to the tools is very interesting tool you can very creatively you can present even those days when i was presenting with the powerpoint uh, with uh, over transparencies i used some striptease method of transparency and different methods now yeah, anything you can do it is very the tool is very very flexible for the teacher to utilize it properly what are the uh, uh, positive or uh, merits of this uh, ict tool or digital uh, technology to the students the students get lot of information through this technology they can very easily download from their uh, table or from their bed they can get all informations all assignments can be written and the room itself they did not go to library so when i was special officer for publication and public relation uh, libraries of tnau were under my control but uh, when i visited the library when we were uh, studying lot of uh, crowds will be there even to refer books and journals i found only few students on an average five students per day i observed in our main library then uh, 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 i was very much upset then what i said okay we will identify we will give award to the persons the number of the students who is visiting library mostly then we gave award uh, to one, one student then i interacted with him uh, really great thing boy you visited the library frequently you tell me what are the reasons for visiting the library sir the computer facilities there through uh, online i can download all the information uh, with the help of the <coughs> pen drive i can collect the information so he visited the library not to read the books uh, it lacks in the facilities internet facilities 
uh, you visited the library. So this is the thing. The students, they can get a lot of information from their place. They need not go anywhere. This is the greatest advantage. Then active learning. Since it is very interactive mode, and uh, you can even uh, add something and uh, unwanted questions can be deleted, anything can be do. The learning also very creatively, if the teacher is presenting, it will be very useful for the participants to actually involve. Here, it induces the knowledge construction uh, because it's a digital mode. The students are very aware of the digital technologies they, they are automatically motivated to go for uh, this learning. They can get information. This also to develop self-directed learning skills. That is to identify what they need to learn. Find and use the online resources available in the globe. Apply the information on the problems at hand and even evaluate resultant feedback. The feedback is very, very quick. The feedback is very, very quick. They can feedback through online uh, as a video, as an audio, and even as a text. This increases their efficiency and the productivity. So this will increase their knowledge automatically. This not, not only increase the knowledge, it is sharpened their thinking capacity. They can very actively think what the teachers taught, and they can elaborate and they extend the subject matters even uh, even after the class is over. If the students are involved in this process, uh, in this process actively, they can uh, gain a lot of skills on the subjects taught by the teachers. And uh, this digital mode is far more interactive, far more interactive than the traditional method. Anytime they can interact, even uh, while uh, delivering a lecture, you can get the students' uh, interaction through SMS based on that the teacher can change his presentation or add information. Coming to the feedback, the feedback is very, very good. Feedback is very good because the students are in online. When I was taking class, I used to ask a question, uh, 10 minutes at the end of the, my lecture will be for interaction. But I found it very difficult to get even a single answer. Then I fixed, I identified the person, called their name, two questions you have to ask from me. Like that, we forced them to ask some questions. Now what the students, some uh, thousand or two thousand students, even the teacher, they cannot identify the person, so they can very easily send the SMS, ask some questions, or even through video or audio in, after the class is over. So this is very, very possible. Okay. These are all the, uh, the merits or advantages or uses of the, uh, these technologies. What are the problems? First thing is the teacher should know the ICT tools. He should have confidence in his presentation. If he doesn't know, if, uh, even in nowadays, there are so many scientists, they don't know how to use, how to go download the Zoom or how to download the apps, how to interact with the students. Even they find it very difficult. So it is very much essential to give training to the instructor or the teacher on ICT tools or digital uh, teaching techniques. Then only they can very easily deliver the, uh, the lecture. And uh, <clears throat> second one is, the network connectivity. This is the problem everywhere. Even when our uh, uh, control of the examination he was presenting, uh, some audio disturbance I noticed. He didn't get audio for 40 seconds. So like that, this network connectivity is the major problem. A student in a rural area sometimes is not able to get the video highlighted by the teachers. So this is the major problem, even for establishment. Uh, uh, before uh, start of this program, myself and Ganesha Murthy, we found a little bit difficult to get the network connectivity. So this is the major problem in India, but in abroad, it is not a major issue. So this is another thing. Then monitoring and control of the participants of the students. This is very, very important. In traditional method, we used to call it as eye contact. 
if 50 students are there when i am a teacher i can very easily the students will attend my lecture keenly whether he are getting information or not but he will concentrate on my lecture but in this digital or online courses is it possible for us to control the students it's very very tough it's very very difficult uh, last year i uh, i was invited to present a lecture on the media production uh, uh, to the students of an university private university so there when i was presenting uh, after 30 minutes i got a beautiful song feedback audio song from some other sources even the organizers the computer persons they found it very difficult to identify the persons because it was connected so to some 22 colleges so we it disturbed my presentation and also it affected the learning uh, environment to the students so it's very difficult to control the audience then mental strain so voluminous data voluminous information the various media we are using sometimes it may uh, lead to problems all students be normally for first year bsc agri students if i take i call them as a homogeneous group but now we cannot call it as a homogeneous group it is a heterogeneous group uh, in case of digital learning because we cannot give assurance that all students they know about the digital uh, that is ict some may be fast so maybe in the beginning so they find it very difficult to uh, even get the information understand and other things this is a other uh, problem the diversion it is possible it is possible the students may be diverted uh, they may uh, <clears throat> they may concentrate on some other activities already i told in present of the teacher they can act <clears throat> very easily another thing is manipulation is possible it is very very possible uh, for example now you see i have uh, i visited san francisco this is the san francisco bridge i am presenting in front of the san francisco if a scientist presenting from usa the reception will be more if a scientist from uh, presenting from us bangalore or from the farmers field it may not be taken care of so anything can be manipulated even your presentation can be manipulated anything is manipulated these are all the major problems what i want to say i like here okay this is a good effort by the department of agricultural extension to organize such a very very important programs so we are going to teach the students and not only that you get the feedback from students about the fee, uh, this training program you conduct the effectiveness of the training program and impact of the training program so that in future you can redefine or modify your training program uh, how it can be used further this will be much useful this one aspect then you have to train the resource persons teachers uh, in digital uh, technology so that they can very effectively uh, go for it <clears throat> so like this uh, these are the plus and minus points of this technology only uh, only 10% of the negative aspects i thought so others are positive in any technology any new technology if you introduce even for a new rice variety it has both plus and minus points considering the 90% of the positive aspect of this uh, digital technology uh, i think it is a good attempt we can uh, conduct so many training programs on this uh, at this juncture i like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this program and I wish all the participants who have uh, actively involved in this program and uh, use it successfully and uh, efficiently and effectively wish you all the best thank you Thank you very much, sir. The 21st century has been rightly termed as digital era. The e-education has certainly ignited the teaching sector. Almost everyone owns a smartphone. Google is our library. Wikipedia is our encyclopedia. Thesaurus is our dictionary, and Kindle is our textbook. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, addressing.
We have with us the very committed and jovial Dean Postgraduate Studies, U.S. DKVK Bengaluru, Dr. N. Srinivas, sir. I invite you, sir, to address the gathering. Very good morning to all of you. I think uh, I'm left with uh, much about uh, digital exchange and everything. It has been our uh, computer examination that uh, you know, mentioned about the digital things in the university system. And uh, in this one, I thank all the different uh, organizers for giving an opportunity. I will not get into actual uh, digital teaching. And what I just want, uh, I want to have my own uh, comments or uh, this one, what I have understood that is, that the management is beginning with the people with an era of digital. Definitely, we have actually transferred, transformed from a, this one, uh, from a knowledge bank uh, to learning, teaching, and other. What, what I, this one is just naked. Uh, if you are entering into a digital era, I think uh, you know, everybody is very comfortable with the mobile phones these days. And in the mobile also, we have seen a lot of transformation. It was only a simple basic model. Now everybody is having the Android. And all options for getting information, interacting and exchanging information. In that respect, really it is a very good development that we can have an access to all in any information for that matter. But what I could, uh, this one, uh, uh, learn from earlier days, actually, whenever we want, actually, earlier, we were telling that people were also addicted to the, the internet and other things. They were telling you, he's a more and it is and like that. Because those days, we had a limited access to internet. And over years, uh, it has been already improved. It has improved a lot. And right from the simple uh, individual workstations or the computer, and it was an improvement of a LAN, and this one interacting over through machines. And over a period of time, we were able to just interact, chat, and other things. Definitely, this is an improvement, but that can be related to, I think, uh, the what uh, this uh, today, uh, this one uh, theme is uh, digital uh, basic technique. I think I didn't. Uh, I don't want to just tell you anything about the teaching and other things. As I could uh, just understand, there are different aspects of the teaching, whether it is a learner centered or is a teacher centered or a team centered or the interactive. I think uh, this has it has been possible. We can address all these uh, phases in teaching because of this digital. As Dr. Billy Philip was telling, there will be a scope for manipulation. The presentation. That means there is a because we are teaching in this one uh, learning techniques or digitally, definitely there should be a, a, a scope because all the technology we have research advantages and also equal more of advantages. But unless we start using them in the right direction, we will not be able to what are short -terms. And of course, uh, the, but here, what I want to make uh, mention here is that more relevant to research is that we are getting a lot of information, like just like the Nara Bandara. We have a lot of information because if you're sitting at one place, you can get a lot of information about your subject or ever any topic you think of just if you have time. But when come to the research, earlier we used to spend a lot of time for getting the literature and also reviewing it and studying it. Now, yeah, this digital era has made us to a very, very important of a time management. Wherever you sit, you can just start browsing and you can just uh, think of this. Because we have the Kindle facility and also in the Wikipedia, we'll get information, everything, and immediately you can do it. But this is only of enhancing your learning and also the teaching ability. But we have to have a platform for all these things. I don't think because now we can say it is e-learning and other things, but there is no uh, substitute for e-wisdom or e-research. At least one has to this one involve, involved in the research. But of course, in social sciences, you can just uh, get the information 
and you can also creatively organize it and also you put it from your creatively you can have the objectives and other but one thing i appreciate is that because of this digital era we have finding it a, a harmonious combination of information and also communication this has been possible with the, only with the digital world it's not possible otherwise earlier in the, the previous years i think in the last 5 10 years i think you were of ganesh muti also mentioned and also nanthu was also mentioning we were also up, this one impressed about the people they are using the power pi because those were the days and actually this actually if uh, using the powerpoint presentation now it has become very common every even a call uh, to uh, class to uh, this assignment presentation you will have that will save your time and also we can just see how he that particular person has involved in preparing that slide is also very very important that also it shows that because you cannot have a good presentation unless you get involved in that but nowadays everybody it has a lot of scope that that uh, philip was telling we can get because in youtube we get all the things whatever you see you can just download the slides and do it but that is not the way because everybody will be able to make out that he has copied from something somebody somebody's information but they definitely we have access and also we have the capability to make use of this information and put it in our way that is what actually the today digital technique tells us see because the digital technique is only making it a, a very good environment always whenever we are any speaking or other things we say it has got a good ambience that is very important either for teaching or for learning and on one thing also here because for all these things we need to have a, a some basic requirement or we can say it is a basic platform and using of this either the mobile or the digital technology there should be some uh, what you can say ad stick for a age group up to certain age so about up to over 15 years they they are expected to have the like, classroom teaching and education very important and after that they will be able to make out the, how it began be we can get lot of information and other and this digital can only enhance your learning and then and to the but also it will improve your interaction but uh, i was just going to that uh, uh, this one what are the advantages and disadvantages of this they are telling it will become a wing for the social isolation and there will be a problem with the development of the there is no scope for the development of our enhancing the communication skill so it is not it doesn't happen like that. but at the one after crossing one age group definitely you are matured enough to make use of your communication skill but only thing the digital tech in this one technology helping you all with all the logistics that you can use it in your uh, this one in either in a profession or in academic career in the right direction that's what and one more thing i want to make it clear that it is all all your icit is a combination i say it is information and also the communication as uh, dr narayan is rightly pointed out This biology of world is actually it is a combination of mitosis and neon. You will not see any variation if there, there is a, a lapse of neon. Mitosis is only dividing. This is mitosis. In meiosis there will be a recombination, but only this recombination can help you to get an individual thing having a variable. That's why this is an error that we have the information. and we have the logistics for this communication we will blend it in a harmonious way so that it can be in a more what we can say it is pleasantable form and also easy for understanding and easy for learning i think now i think i have this is an opportunity i think when I, before coming here i was just uh, talking to our technical officer he told that uh, he mentioned about they had a similar type of training in at least 19 2018 or so and that was actually organized in collaboration with norm i think i could also make out from this and i think there are certain pioneers who have made use of this digital technology for teaching training and also for learning in jai jai in tamil nadu at tnu they have made a this pioneer study and also the norm is also there. but coming to this agricultural university 
I just request all our PhD students who are there here, whether it is a social science or it's a biological science, now it is time you are getting more. We can have a very less time for preparing the report of the project. And that time is saved, it can be more effectively used for your research. Because earlier, those, those were the days when we were actually preparing the circulation copy and statistical analysis and also final copy. It was taking much of our time, hardly about 20-25% of our time is going for. Now, I think that part is also, as uh, Dr. Nantum is mentioning that we are also automating the process of uh, the thesis submission and thesis plagiarism check and also the final submission and evaluation sending. I think this has already been practiced in some of the universities, always they are sending the thesis evaluation online and they are sending us the PDF version. And that is easy also for them. We can do the evaluation at any point of time. But this is the, this is the time when the digital technology in our research field, it can be more used because once you have done the research, if you have made use of that research time very effectively, the preparing the, of course, that also needs some different skill. Of course, we have a set uh, framework for it. We need to have an introduction chapter with your some methods of research. But only the dream of your work is actually evolves around the results in this. And also, how briefly you will put it in terms of a summary and conclusion. And the last part is very, very important because nowadays I want to just see that. All our references are mostly, I am just I'm seeing the references on uh, online. There is one. There are a lot of online publications. And you need not have to worry about uh, this one, uh, stealing your findings. Because whatever you do, immediately you will publish it. It will be online there. And there will not be any scope for plagiarism or misuse of your findings. That confidence, I think you can do it. You adopt in your research and then put it in a good what I can say is a presentation. And then I think in that line, our director of postgraduate study will help you, whether it is a biological science or social science. But coming to the actual theme of this, today's one is that they are concentrating more on digital teaching techniques. And it's very, very important to change the interest of one. And the other, it should be either it is a theme based, or I think it will also have the interactive sessions, and it is definitely you can exchange information. And then we, nowadays, actually, we have a lot of information. Only thing is, we have to use it. That means the human intervention is there only in making it, up, churning it, and getting the cream out of it. And what you get out of it is very, very important. And all information are available. Uh, how it can be. As of, uh, Philip was telling, we can get connected to anybody. Earlier, we were getting the, for getting reprints, also, we had to wait. Now, if you just put a request in research gate, you will get the report. And also, they will be available. Uh, you can also interact with them. Email is there. Earlier days, in, I think in the 80s and 90s, we used to run to Tata Institute for some person to have this email community. Now, at the time, was also everything has been changed. And all of you have easy access for getting the information. And best thing is that you put it in your frame. And also you have, because that also the organization and then presenting your creativity also needs to be there. Where exactly we have landed in that portion. And that means 30% of our work has been made ready for us. And only thing is that we have to organize. That's why you plan your research. And I think in a digital world, as Dr. Ransom is telling, we have made all platforms the hazards to remove it. Submission on form ones and also your data with everything that it will save a lot of your time. And also, there will be a lot of uniformity and there will not be any scope for manipulation or group works. That has been definitely taken care of. Also, in terms of the financial benefits also for getting scholarship, everything is streamlined. The only thing is, you have to be very time bound and you have to be very just. That means we also have the system like the semester at the beginning, you need to have an advisory committee meeting and everything. And everything, if it goes in a, a protocol or in a programmed manner, definitely your end result is very easy for us to shape. And the, as you are showing the uh, preparation of the certificate, degree certificate, 
because all these are happened because of only the digital technology and there will not be any scope for any misuse manipulation and also the there is always a uniformity that be once you have that research and finding and you i we have scope to publish it online immediately and also we are also just supporting you as this one innovativeness and creativity creativity in publishing in the high rated journal and that also it is you can say it is a stimulation or inspiration for you i think everything i think also we are also starting a new uh, msc program bioinformatics that that is also actually bioinformatics is an integration of all biological sciences information together one they will be handling lot of uh, data from the wet lab and it will be organized analyzed in a dry lab and also they are coming with a good model for that where exactly we will find the integration of the social research or the research finding in the biological field how it can but definitely there is no any scope for manipulation or unless in a biological system the changes we see it may not be due to mainly due to mutation it also due to uh, by default also the nature also has got very that variance actually has to be addressed so i think it is very crucial in agriculture especially for keeping the soil i think i should also make a mention that ganesh was mentioning that the when we started the, the science week online it was also actually it was a very good presentation and also some people they suggested we have got to continue this definitely we can continue this but always there should be a physical presentation then no need they should let us have a harmonious combination of that. and some people also suggested we can't have it a online qualifying exam and other things and during covid era we had a provision for that but we did not want to continue this and we wanted actually we took this one uh, came back to the physical seminar program. otherwise we should have a platform or the uh, convenience for the others who wants to attend uh, the uh, the seminars outside there they should be met here we can have the uh, zoom meeting and then others who are interested they can also interact and they can watch from anywhere else or in, across campuses also we can have them it's also one thing we are also looking for a zoom uh, this one online seminar so that the person who is from other campus can also participate at the same time and also they will get into otherwise if we are working a loop or in the different different they will also not having the information what is going on in the main camp and we will also we can also monitor it's not just a different a mechanism of checking it is only for exchange information and also we could also say how the students are being prepared there and showcasing their findings or whatever the seminar is. i think with this i want to just uh, uh, thank the organizer for giving me opportunity and to all to know many things about the uh, especially uh, etc or this one what i can say is a difficulty and uh, dr uh, raghupata also mentioned sir if you are interested definitely you can attend some of these things there are very good uh, lectures are there and also i can make out the resource person they are also handling all these things whether it is a, a non formal teaching non formal learning and also the mass media how it can be utilized for the teaching and other things and also the vocational very very important i think in the extension there you have the data demonstration and result demonstration that those things they have made it digital now i think i also request all of you for anything and everything i think if you want a simple thing if you are putting id you if you want to just know how these things are handled definitely you can put this on a youtube You will get a demonstration because there are simple things. They are repairing your this one small, small tap and how to have the screwdriver and how to handle it. Everything is available in the, on the YouTube. They have prepared a small film and I think it is has been uploaded. I think you should also develop the skill of making. I think you are free to upload your this one, uh, whatever the films or the images onto the YouTube and let us have that professional touch in your. digital use utilizing it and also sharing knowledge with others i congratulate all of you for participating for making use of this but i think this two days you will be connected to this uh, training program more digital i think only thing is that you have to be attentive
I think I was when I was coming to this uh, inaugural program, I told that because of the digital, your time management has become very, very accurate. Very wherever you can go, but unless there is a, a, a stoppage of the this one a broadband connection or the net, otherwise everything is possible. But other for that also, you need to have some supporting uh, this one. I can say some this this one. Uh, very well, and I request all of you to make use of it and also you apply it in your feet, either in the academic career or in the research career. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Sidaya, Director of Skill Development Center, US Bangalore, to share his thoughts about time. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Namaskar <laughs> Golo. Thank you, sir. Uh, the technology, we are talking on digital technology. Digital, digital technology is already integrated with uh, many areas of uh, learning. It may be education, it may be agriculture, extension, and research. Almost our speakers they made it clear already most of the technology have been integrated with all the sectors of our economy. In fact, even our university has been totally digitalized with respect to academic research and extension. And there are misuses or misinterpretation of this digital technology. You can use this technology for constructive and destructive, but there are options, but you should make use of good things. That is the main advantage of uh, and disadvantage of the digital technology was mentioned by our today's chief guest. No doubt uh, this digital technology has brought to many changes in our uh, life, even smile and faces of many students and teachers. Otherwise, this whole year could be a standstill or we can say it could be handicapped if the technology has been not in proper sense. We must thanks to uh, uh, this era of digital technology, but uh, still there are uh, huge challenges we are facing. See, there is a huge gap uh, with respect to digital divide in India. In case of rural area, we just have the access of 25% of the population. This uh, access of information in IT part of internet. When it comes to urban area, we have more than 90% of the people have access to internet as well as information access. Still, there is a need to do many things in this uh, uh, area. And there are people working on uh, this particular development or reducing digital divide among the group, it may be geographically or uh, among the uh, population. And uh, Particularly, this kind of training they are enriching, and it is most of the training skill development trainings are in sync with uh, Atma Nirbhar. That means uh, you, they want to make it self reliant. You must become an entrepreneur or you must become a technologist to use this all the, the technology in your day to day life. When it comes to digital teaching, already you have many tools to use in digital technology, like artificial intelligence, machine learning, then rapid and augmented realities, then robotics, then there are blockchain technology. Already they are put it in use in the agriculture sector as well as uh, different sectors of economy, even marketing, value chain development. Then this, there are many uses and advantages of this technology. As a skill development center, on behalf of uh, university, we are conducting this training program. You must make use of best, best and effectively for your development. That is the only we look from your side. You must uh, use this training effectively. And there are uh, good experts and resource persons. They are already mastering using this digital technology in different uh, areas of 
agriculture. Like Sarvanan is master in using all the technology in extension. Dr. Murthy sir, he was my coordinator in focus. He is also best uh, master in using this technology in agriculture and other allied subject of our agriculture. Then Tamir Raju sir is also there. Then Katharishan. When Swayam came, he was the first person in National Institute of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj to integrate all the technologies to develop the course curriculum and course content. In fact, I was also uh, party, means, uh, partnering with him because he was front runner in developing many course content and curriculum. And uh, Dr. Santil Vinayam, he is also, he has uh, proved in all the agriculture sector. Uh, most of the technology have been adopted by himself in the uh, development of rural technology park or maybe agriculture extension activities. Then uh, Sentil Kumar also was happens to be my senior at IRI. He was using most of the he was advanced. That time he used to have mobile and uh, usage of this mobile application in his uh, uh, research. He was our core researcher. In fact, I could see him most of the time he was behind the research. Uh, that is how the most of the people, resource persons here, I know them personally, and they are using all the technology in their respective uh, subject matter area. Friends, uh, you will be enriched and enlightened by them. And I must thank to Dr. Ganesh Murthy, organizing a wonderful and very well architected uh, training program with support of our uh, committed head of the department, Dr. K. Krishnamurthy and other senior faculty of this department. My dear students, I hope that you will gain something, you will take something to your uh, knowledge kit. And at the end of this training, you could be able to independently handle or integrate some of the technology in your career development. With this, I wish you best of luck and good luck to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Ganesh Murthy and Dr. Krishnamurthy sir, giving me this opportunity. Vice Chancellor and uh, today's chief guest, uh, and Dr. Uh, Naran Swami sir and Smart sir, and uh, other important <coughs> guest of the day today is Dr. Philip sir, sharing his valuable time with us, sharing his experience with us also and with our students. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all, and wish you best of luck. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. Now I invite our beloved head of the department. Dr. V. Krishnamurti, sir, for presidential. Respected uh, dignitaries on the dais, uh, control of the examiner, uh, Dr. Nayan uh, sir, and uh, Dr. Srinivas, our postgraduate uh, dean, and the director, uh, Dr. Siddhaya, and the program director. Dr. Ganesh Murthy and my colleague Rabu Prasad, and all my other colleagues and student friends. Uh, indeed, uh, it is a uh, uh, pleasure for me uh, to have a, a, a renowned person in our university, Dr. K.C. Nansani, as the uh, chief guest of the inauguration of this program. Uh, when we chosen him, I had a discussion with the program director. So whom we have to call for this uh, inauguration as a chief guest. And when we were thinking, it has comes to, come to my mind because he has already narrated what has been happened and what are the initiatives uh, taken up in our university. He was the responsible for the many of the <coughs> digital initiatives, <coughs> especially uh, examination and the online evaluation and uh, many other aspects he has already uh, uh, <clears throat> explain to you uh, there are more than uh, 10 to 13 programs have been initiated uh, by the US Bangalore. Uh, it is the uh, the bright child of the uh, Dr. Casey Nagsdami. Uh, he has ignored him. So I recommended uh, Dr. Ganesh Murthy to invite him uh, for this uh, program as a chief guest and also the inauguration of the program. So he has uh, really uh, uh, gave very good uh, information about the various uh, uh, the achievements and the aspects of the our uh, uh, programs. So where we can use uh, uh, these uh, digital aids or the tools in the research extension and the teaching. Well, our uh, Dr. Uh, <coughs> Dean, sir, 
and uh, Dr. Srinivas sir is a very much a knowledge, knowledgeable person and he can speak on any aspect. So we have invited for many other programs like uh, these training programs. He has spoke very nicely and gave very good uh, information, uh, very uh, meaningful and useful information to you. I don't want to reproduce them. So we have listened to him and our director is always with us and uh, supporting our program and uh, giving the very good uh, uh, hints uh, about the program. So well, so uh, I don't think uh, you are all very well versed with the ICT programs. So I know with, uh, although uh, you are hailed from different states and uh, different uh, uh, areas, you are very good in ICT application, but still there are a good number of uh, speakers, uh, especially uh, Dr. An Anandaraj, uh, Dr. Philip, he has given, he was, I was associated with him long time. So when I visited this lab, like the AV lab during uh, 2000 or um, maybe 2005, so he has developed, uh, he's the pioneer in developing this uh, multimedia lab and heavy lab in Tamil Nadu. So we have followed certain, uh, what are what is the achievement and also contribution from the TNEO. So then uh, Dr. Anandra, Dr. Sarvanan, they're all very well versed with the ICT application. They're really implementing it. Dr. Prasov Prabhupada is conducted regularly with the MOOCs program. So online, then the uh, recently our uh, alumni like Dishan, so he has joined recently one of the private universities. He's uh, so very good in uh, digital technique. And also the Vinay Kumar, so he's also a, an established in uh, Ananda Cricket University. He's also very good in uh, uh, ICT application. So I hope we all make use of these uh, lectures and the uh, information, whatever uh, they are going to give in another uh, one, uh, the afternoon and also tomorrow. Without uh, uh, fail, you please attend these programs and the uh, enrich your knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now we are in the last step of the inaugural program. I invite Dr. M. A. Shashini, Madam Assistant Professor of Extension, to deliver the word of thanks. Very good morning, God. Feeling gratitude and not expressing it, it's like a wrapping present and not giving it. So I take this opportunity to, to, to thank each and everyone who are involved in this training program. With due respect, I would like to thank Dr. K. C. Narayan Swami, controller of examination USB, who aggregate who agreed to inaugurate this program even with his busy schedule. On behalf of Extension Department and my own, I thank you, thank you, sir, for uh, attending this program. I would like to thank one of our chief guests, Dr. H. Kili, former director of extension TNAU, who joined virtually and enlightened us with his knowledge on digital technology. On behalf of extension department and my own, I thank you, sir, for uh, grazing this occasion. We have been fortunate enough to back by our beloved Dean of Postgraduate Studies, Dr. N. Srinivas, for his constant support and encouragement. On behalf of Extension Department, I thank you, sir, for raising this occasion. I also extend my thanks to Dr. Sidaya, Director, Skill Development Center, USB, for enormous cooperation in organizing this event. So on behalf of Extension Department, I thank you, sir. So I would like to place on record our hearty thanks to Dr. B. Krishnamurti, Professor and Head of perfect logistic support and guidance for organizing this program. Thank you, sir, for, for your wonderful support. I'm also very grateful to Dr. S. Ganeshamurti, Post Director for his, uh, for, of this training program, who ha worked hard for organizing and easy conductor, conduct of this training program. So on behalf of Extension Department, I thank you, sir. Finally, my sincere thanks to all the professors, resource person and students who are present here and joined virtually for your valuable uh, presence and your enormous cooperation for conducting of this training program. So once again, I thank each and everyone for making this program most successful. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now the sessions will start immediately. 
The first session is Collaborative Digital Technologies for Better Teaching and Learning by Dr. R. Saravanan, Director. Dr. Kanish, Dr. Kanish Murthy, good morning. Small thing. Huh? There are somebody uh, physically also attending, students, others, is it not? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please, you break for some five minutes at least. No? Let them already two hours they were listening. Maybe five to seven minutes we can break or 12 we will start exactly. Another 10 minutes. Otherwise, uh, 11.50, fine. 11.50, 10 minutes. Okay, oh, already 11.50. Maybe 12 we will start. No, I will cut that. Don't worry. No, because now people are continuously sitting again. They can't sit. Let them go and come out. Maybe another five minutes you give. No, okay. I will cut that my session. No issues. Yeah, okay. Thank you, sir. For five minutes. No, when I need to, yeah, you can tell me when you need to complete. I can. No issues. Yeah, okay. Five minutes break. Reception, sir. Fine. Yeah, fine. Yeah, I need to complete at 12. <laughs> no, you find out no issues even uh, twelve thirty or so if possible. I can, uh, you, because no others who is next to GRK Murthy sir, uh, we should not make him to wait. Uh, kindly you talk to him. Accordingly, we'll stop our session. Uh. You tell him no once uh, our session going to start only two one. Please call him and uh, find out. Uh, we will uh, stop it even fifteen or thirteen minutes also fine for me. No need to worry. After all, it is my college, my my department. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, shall we start? Okay, so we shall start the session. Uh, I request uh, Ms. Sakshi to introduce the speaker now. No, Sachi, thank you very much, Sachi. I am Saravanan Raj Sachi. There is no time. Uh, and uh, you can see www.saravananraj.in. Uh, I am Saravanan Raj, just I am Director for Agriculture Excellence Not Managed. Sir, we'll have a brief introduction for you. <laughs> it's okay, Sachi, yeah. Okay, uh, I would like to take privilege to introduce Dr. Sarvanan Raj. He is the Director of Agriculture Extension at National Institute of Agriculture Extension Manage, uh, Management, Manage Hyderabad, India. So he is leading the Management manage Center for Agriculture Extension Innovation Reforms and Agripreneurship. And uh, he is, in, uh, his, he is uh, the Director of Program Management Unit, Feed the Future India Tribular Training Program. And he is the Director for MSc and PhD students at Manage. He is also the coordinator for the Manage in University Alliance for Advancing Agriculture Extension and Advisory Services. He has been organizing training programs on E-Extension, M-Extension, Agriculture Innovation System, Agro-Tourism, and also workshop for capacity development of extension professionals. He is editor of 100 startups by agripreneurs, responsible for editing and publication of Extension Next, Next and uh, Agripreneur Bulletins. And uh, his previous uh, works in, uh, include, uh, he was associate professor at uh, Ag Extension Education and Rural Sociology in charge of School of Social Sciences. And uh, he has specialization in area of ICT for agriculture extension, social media, extension reforms, privatization, institutional pluralism and innovations and related policy is issues. And his publication includes four books and 45 articles in referred scientific and international and national journals, books and proceedings. And he has successfully implemented four innovative e-extension projects, e Eric, e-village, e agri Kiosk, and M4 Agri NEI and Arunachal Pradesh in Meghalaya states. I welcome you, sir. The session is now yours. Thank you. Thank you for your kind uh, introduction. And thank you, Sulbi. Thank you. And, uh, good afternoon to all of you. And uh, it's al always it is a privilege and uh, it's a great opportunity to come back to GKVK for the Department of Extension Education. And uh, it's because it is almost more than uh, two decades. I can see it is not the about I am uh, talking about ICTs, but I can relate with my students' days, uh, student days at uh, GKVK and also along with my junior, Dr. Ganesh Murthy. And uh, we were, uh, we were uh, excited to see dot matrix and dot matrix printer, you know how it works and whole night it will be running like rice mill, the sound will come and we are taking thesis, some of the papers dropped like that. Dot matrix we started, then there is a LCD projector, maybe we are so much excited, we are very thankful to head of the department, PGD and all for providing one LCD projector for us and with one computer. Are you hearing? Uh, it's audio is fine for you. It's audible. Yeah, that's what we started our when studying dot matrix and LCD. It made a lot of difference for our learning. And uh, the Ganesha Murthy is the guru for all and uh, all the people, including some of the even faculty, all uh, Ganesh Murthy joined uh, in uh, GKVK with a lot of computer skills from TNAU. He was our computer guru for us all. We have a lot of passion for computer, but all technical knowledge are uh, things we used to get from Ganesha Murthy. And uh, that's very great. And the, uh, I can see two decades how whole digital education is evolved. And also I can relate with my own story or our own story with the GKVK Department of Extension Education, how it is evolved uh, using the technologies. And uh, I'm very happy really to see this uh, training in online and also large number of PG, PhD students are there. I appreciate and also I congratulate a uh, very dynamic uh, Head of the department, Professor Krishnamurthy, sir. I see him very active in WhatsApp and everywhere. I every day updated with I always I see the GKVK activities and thank you for that. And also <clears throat> Dr. Ganesh Murthy for organizing this training and very timely and very interesting training. And uh, another interesting thing I see in some of the resource persons, they are the resource persons, they are uh, uh, they are the people really do, maybe except me, many of them, they are uh, they are working on their own domains from NOM to BHU or TNAU, these faculties I see. And uh, all of them, they are, uh, they are working on this particular domain continuously in uh, this one. There may be very enriching experience. And 
I may not going much. That's why a lot of uh, resource persons are coming. That's why I may not uh, going much presentation because already Ganesh Murthy or uh, inaugural session cuts out me some 30 minutes of my time. And I'm not going big presentation. I will uh, keep it very light because, you know, the whole digital education, uh, this time management is very important thing. And we used to conduct large number of programs nowadays, but uh, it is not, uh, there are differences. There are advantages in when using digital technologies, but at the same time, it is very difficult. People continuously hearing even after 20, 30 minutes, it's very tough to hear, but uh, I appreciate those who are sitting with us, taking short break and uh, almost one hour, 45 minutes, they hear the inaugural and a lot of uh, senior people, they told very interesting experience thing. A uh, lot of things, and uh, that is very much useful. That's why I'll go very, very simple. And uh, uh, we can today, because we are talking about the digital uh, online technologies, always we can reach and you can get from online. Uh, you can connect with us also, those who resource persons, those who are doing. That's why uh, I will another 24 minutes. I will see that a uh, little, I will give some hints and uh, I'll try to share my experiences. Out of this 24 minutes, some at least four, five, five minutes, somebody asked some questions. I will be very happy. Something I can share from experience. And uh, and today it is. Uh, I no need to go. Why these digital technologies are important for not only for learning or teaching somebody. It is all things. And their learning environment become. Ex it will be interesting because or it is enhanced because of uh, this digital technologies. And uh, I'm taking from somewhere developed countries, but I don't want to take Indian example because there is a specific reason. For example, there is Anna Maria College. It's a random pick. It is nothing specific about this college or this figure, but I want to tell somewhere developed countries how they are telling. For example, many of the teachers, uh, they talk about in 50% uh, of the instructional design technology experts, 15% of the teachers are working on, they become the technology experts. They are trying to, put the technology in online like that. And 95% of the teacher agree that uh, digital resources engage their students in a big way in learning actually. And again, 70, almost 75% of the teachers are believing that uh, the variety of learning styles we can import to them. And uh, again, more than 90% you can see, uh, teachers believe that it is helping the students academic achievement because over the years, many years, because of pandemic, thanks to pandemic, because of pandemic, we are forced to use digital technology. Otherwise, our uptake in India or countries like uh, many of the developing countries, it is very less because internet penetration itself may be average 53 or some 50 percentage in India. But we used to be, we, we slowly little, we are not adopting in a big way, even though we adopt a lot of WhatsApp or Facebook or YouTube, but not really for digital learning technologies. But if you see, uh, this trend going to come in India also. Teachers are going to have a lot of uh, positive opinion opinion about digital technologies. At the same time, universities and others are going to have higher, like uh, persons like Ganesh, Ganesh, Dr. Ganesh Samurthy. People are having something specialized knowledge in uh, instruction technologies are handling the ICTs. And again, students, so you can see another perspective when we are seeing teachers are all overwhelming. But students also, why they are telling there are six reasons. Again, this also little random speak. Uh, randomly, I chosen this one from uh, some university and 71% uh, of students engage more with the digital and course material. And uh, again, 97% of students found adoptive learning technology help in retention. And again, it is, you can see more than 75, 85, all know. Uh, they believe that that is enhancing that knowledge and 45 percent of the people they learn from mobile phones that may be very exciting because india today every students might be having the college students might be having the digital uh, smartphones and including the villages there are almost 25 percentage ac across the rural area we can see smartphones that's why this will be more helpful we don't no need to have the computers big connectivity and only we need to have the mobile phones and it makes our learning become more and more enriching. That's why uh, it is It is not time to talk much about what is the importance for digital technologies for learning and teaching and learning, but how to adopt. Everybody can adopt because the, the interesting thing is it is not only teachers can uh, know the technology, teachers need to adopt. It is the students because already there is an open resource available across and everybody can learn and everybody can uh, engage and uh, we can contribute. It is not necessarily teacher need to teach about some technology or need to tell the source. Today, every college going student, they can 
uh, they can access, they can have the resources. It's a global. Today, resources are not confined to the particular teacher. It is generally, it is a global knowledge we are having. And again, when uh, I thought of having the talking about collaborative learning technologies, something like um, uh, the quite interesting thing is we are sitting in online far away virtually, and but we can have the great collaborative learning environment that makes a lot of difference while using the digital technology. It is not one-on-one -on -one using or it is a collaborative. People are coming together and they are doing it. Like, you know, many of you, Wikipedia will go and you will be seeing some Google's uh, blogs or Google apps you'll be having. These are all collaborative, we can see, and social networks, it's a common. Facebook, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, many of you will be available and you know how we are working and it is going. And again, now interesting thing is many may not be using, uh, these are social bookmarking. This may be very interesting because uh, there are large number of resources, somebody when morning, it is today is easy because every resource is available in online, but uh, I may differ with that opinion because today the large number of information available, it is very difficult to student to identify, choose the correct resource because no resources are million, every minute and millions and millions of documents are uploaded. Every second, uh, every 60 seconds, 2 million tweets are coming across like that. No, the millions of messages passed and information is stored. That's why, you know, social bookmarking may be quite interesting thing because when you understand something is very useful for, for example, endomology or extension, you feel something important, you can put as a bookmark so that you can circulate some bookmark to your own community, learning, teaching community, maybe student community or your own class community, whatever it may be. And uh, they no need to, again, redo the things. That may be very interesting. And uh, social bookmarking will be very helpful. Apart from that, like we do brainstorming other, other uh, earlier days, sitting together, we'll do something. Today, you can see something collaborative brainstorming. And very rarely, we might be using, but maybe pandemic interesting. Somebody interested, you can uh, find out. Mindmaster or Parlet, like that, it is, uh, there are uh, a large number of collaborative brainstorming. People sit across, but online, they will be contributing and like brainstorming. People come in the group and they will talk about some idea and there is a brainstorming. Ideas can be collated and insights we can get from that. For classroom exercise also we can see. These are very quite interesting things are there. And um, because of uh, this interactive learning, something uh, generally the collaborative learning, if you talk what it is, it's a, to, it's a group of members, they can learn something or they can generate something together. Something together we can make it. Knowledge also we can create something together. Like Wikipedia, like our social media groups you are using. We are something doing together and creating knowledge. And uh, when you are doing the, we are using the collaborative technologies, it promotes the interaction and also critical thinking and reflection. Today you can see large number of people are uh, talking in uh, uh, videos, their creative skills are coming up. Videos every day circulated in uh, WhatsApp and everybody tries to communicate in better and better way. All the, uh, we can find out sometime, you know, very ex excellent, uh, the write-ups are come, some critical comments will come like that. No, there is a, this is a, the promoting the critical thinking and re reflection among the community it develops the there is a sense of community even so you you belong to particular uh, whatsapp group you, you you will see it's a you are in the community like that that's why you know this all uh, provides the flexible learning path you can learn your own time for finding the information getting the information or passing the information sharing the information understanding information like that the use is much more actually and uh, and technology in 21st century, you can see the symbol, it, it is long, it is, uh, there are hundreds and thousands and thousands of applications and educational technology tools are available, which one we can use. It is not necessarily we need to use many, but at least if we use one, for example, only using something like uh, brainstorming, only use one, one, techno one thing or social networking, you can use effectively, even LinkedIn, you can make it, or you can have the Wikipedia, there is university particular course or something like that. That's why, you know, it is not we need to use everything, but we can choose which is for us more important, including PowerPoints. Nowadays, online Google Docs and Google all will put in online. You know, somebody, uh, Google Forms or Google Files are all uh, collaboratively edit in uh, across, and we can see, you know, that one very well. Like that brainstorming and all, uh, there is a uh, simple brainstorming like uh, traditionally we'll do. 
in a traditional setting same thing you can see simply i will pass this powerpoint to you and you can go through you can see because this is uh, we are talking about online tools not necessarily somebody need to explain too much how it is you can see in classroom or you can try just even individually two three people you can try it excites and you people sit somewhere different rooms you can sit in the hostels and you can uh, try this one and you can contribute and you can like whatsapp or five six people can join and you can do and so collaborative tool and apart from there are wikis universities are coming with wiki wiki universities like that they will come with even separate course there is a wiki pages and they can put the information and there are other blogs you know a lot of education blogs are very important developmental organizations are doing a lot of educational blogs you can have your own blogs and you can do that and uh, it is available online you can create you can collaborate even people are uh, putting it together there is uh, collaborative blogs also and uh, there are some blogs collaborative blogs five six people particular topic they will contribute like that block is uh, interesting way it is going uh, other things are like a conventional classroom we will teach and they will go for the homework activities but flipped classroom we can see they will go through online all the lectures and uh, they will come to classroom and uh, they will uh, discuss and insights they will create and uh, because you no know, conventionally we will teach the lecture then uh, they will do the homework but uh, before coming to the class individually they will do homework uh, in online and they will understand teacher passes all the resources and they will come back to the class and group activity group uh, they will insights they will share it will create a lot of uh, uh, learning and teacher facilitates those ex uh, experiences sharing or insights sharing like that that makes a lot of difference we can see the individuality how students are creative like that and again wiki is it is common wikipedia it's uh, we can make the knowledge management platform for even particular course or for university and uh, many more things we can there is a spaces for classroom somebody can go and the separate phases we can create we can conduct online all classes whatever doing we can do in online including teaching to assessment and marks and everything evaluation all something uh, create the student center collaborative learning for there are library and online it is the pb works like that this also you can explore in online it is for the students to create the collaborative learning and uh, and a lot of wiki educator wiki itself a lot of tools wiki wiki university may be one of the quite interesting because universities are having some of the content and their own contents uh, university of davis you can see there is a separate content for that particular university wiki university all are available collaboratively you know as wikipedia everybody edits and they used to get that will be that is available and uh, as blogs already you know and i'm not going too much on blogs and blog and edu blogs and google docs and again i will try to skip facebook linkedin whatsapp because many of you, this all you can be used for the educational purpose collaborative learning it is not only for the good morning good evening and sharing political messages and uh, only you now nowadays people very easy don't contribute only emojis they will share but really for educational groups we can contribute teacher can keep in uh, put the resources to the students in the social media and people can claim there is a public group private group we can have that is a lot of things we can use and uh, this all detail i'm not going anyway i'll pass bookmarking and mindmaster all things and it is not necessarily only these tools which may not much used in the indian context but today you can see kv kids uh, because they forced to use all online tools they are collaborating even simple facebook facebook live and large number of people are coming and collaborating maybe our own karnataka kvk goni couple may be one of the best example in see in kodagu you can see their website you can go i request all the students to go it is not necessarily we need to use some all the technologies or all the digital technologies which is available online but some simple technologies like uh, they are using uh, zoom or cisco webex for uh, continuously streaming or training they are conducting people are collaborating and uh, facebook we can see they are putting all and people are coming these all people come contribute and uh, they will share the information these all also all collaborative learning technologies whether twitter youtube whatsapp all they are using for the professional purpose and uh, uh, you can see this may be this one you know we need to see which one practically we can use that may be more useful for us and i request all the students and kindly go for the website of the kvk goni couple and you will be excited and kvk using if across the country 714 kvks they can they may be the one of the role models use these type of tools really they are reaching their stakeholders using 
uh, this type of online. And again, maybe you are having separate session and I know uh, Dr. J.R.K. Murthy from uh, Nam and Basav uh, Brabujirli, all they are uh, part of this one. They are doing courses on MOOCs and they will be talking more. I don't want to talk much on courses around MOOCs and it revolutionates whole education and reaching large number of people. Even manage, we offer the extension courses on for the developmental professionals, uh, professionals on MOOCs. You can go to manage website. These type of platforms are coming up to collaborate with a large number of people. And uh, it's really, we are in a blessed time. It's uh, if you somebody want to learn, there is no limit for, uh, only you need to manage your time and you need to learn. And also you need to choose what tech, what tools are, what type of platform you want to use and uh, what you want to study and why. That should be, you need to be clear. It is not necessarily, there are large number of platforms, large number of tools are available. And uh, again, this is quite interesting, this LinkedIn or, I don't know, research gate and academia you, how many of you, some of many of students may be there, MSc PhD students. This may be one of the interesting collaborative, uh, uh, this one digital platforms, we can get the resources. People are asking, sharing and getting, and it is notified like that, no? It is all evolving in big, big way. I request the students to go for research gate, at least you upload your, uh, your information or publications and also you can download and uh, it is very easy once you are uh, downloaded some particular information related to agriculture extension continuously somebody notifying from this website yeah you are interested in this type of articles we have new article published by so and so like that is coming there is a great community and for especially for students uh, we can go for the research gate academia you can see always there is the insight uh, whether somebody referred your paper and who you know you can make the online collaboration and uh, that is possible if uh, again linkedin may be the one of the best professional collaboration tool for the not only for teaching learning and also job opportunities and uh, you should be students should be there and uh, it is not necessarily in uh, facebook or whatsapp but uh, those who are msc psc students should be in the linkedin it is the great way it is going the great community we are building those who are related to skills and those who are uh, looking for learning new thing and partnerships this may be the one of the interesting platform, social media platform for learning and very serious education oriented. We students need to look for these type of platforms. And, and uh, with this, I will stop and uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for opportunity. But uh, as I told clearly, I will take six minutes, some questions from some of you, I will try. Thank you very much. Can I have some questions at least from GKVK? I can see large number of students are sitting there. Is there any questions? I think no questions, sir. That means maybe, okay, thank you very much. Sir. You saved me my time. I thought you will ask question like that. I went through it till I was running uh, and uh, it's okay. It happens sometime. Uh, at least some students, uh, it will be happy. How you are using and what is the problem and uh, Ganesh Murthy, can you ask your one of PhD students can ask some questions? Otherwise, you can share your experience, not necessarily question. What your take-home message morning onwards, there is already you are almost uh, now 12, uh, two and a half hours you are there. What is the take-home message and uh, what, uh, how you are using social media, digital media for your own learning like that? Uh, kindly introduce your name and which year and you can tell me. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, sir. One question is there, sir. I will ask you. Hello. Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. This is uh, Professor Naika, Venkata Naika. Sir, I asked the students, sir. Professors also learning all the time. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> you concern me as a student. <laughs> sir, that is a teacher's great quality, sir. Teachers you, always... You don't want me to ask the questions? <laughs> sir, please, sir. Go ahead, sir. Please go ahead, sir. No. Yeah. With your exposure and experience... Yes, sir. Do you think the technology is substitute for the teaching or teacher? No. Blanketly, it is not. It won't because the education in the classrooms, it is not only teaches the subject, it also the, teaches the behavior and also personality of the students. It is much more than that. And also the teacher influences different way when personally always human touch makes a lot of difference. Uh, I may not vouch for it. Maybe it is fine to learn a little more in online, but uh, for human civilization need to prosper, there should be always like uh, 
uh, still i feel gurugulls may be even today is very gurugula you, we may feel it is not outdated gurugul or gurugula what you call gurugulam tamil or gurugul or call golden days they had still i feel that may be the one of the important thing even uh, modern colleges schools also we need to imbibe those qualities that makes i understand whenever my teachers speak it makes something different i uh, because you no know, when i uh, i am there when uh, professor venkatrangana ka pensing i will be excited because you no know, teachers influence something very differently when face to face but online when talking with uh, monitors it really won't make uh, but uh, it is totally may not possible and uh, even though people go lot of online classes but uh, teacher makes that's what no there is a saying i used to tell uh, somewhere i used to read also i quote teacher influences the eternity of the students it is we don't know where teachers are influenced how much we influenced by teachers we don't know that's why uh, thank you very much sir very interesting question and, nice sir uh, next talking to you over the virtual yes sir thank you very much sir thank you now one case student chaitra she is going to ask you the question sir yeah yeah please chaitra what is your name madam you are talking which year you are i am second year phd myself chaitra shridevi sir yourself chaitra shridevi chaitra shridevi okay very good chaitra yes Good afternoon, sir. This is also Chaitra. Yeah, good afternoon, Chaitra. Please go ahead. I have a couple of questions, sir. Firstly, Chaitra, can you come to podium and ask? And because now there is some disturbance. Yes, Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah. So I have a couple of questions. Very good. Couple of the questions, not one question. Okay, very good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Another five minutes, I can. Yeah. Okay. First. Three thing, minutes. Yeah. Please. How to overcome this problem of screen time, sir? Because uh, sitting for such a long time in front of screen, it really irritates, and uh, psychologically also, it's creating so much of problem for us. And second thing is. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to the content, how to make the content quite interesting so that the people can just attach to that? Because uh, whatever the content the teacher is delving, it is not just a point of delivering, but rather mm-hmm. looking on the other purpose, whether it is being serving or not. So I just have this. That's question. a great Chaitra. And first question, I will go for it. You can stay there only. I can answer to you. No, that will be fine. Yes. Uh, sure. First question, na, straight away you should not sit long hours in uh, screen. no basically it is not advised it is not because you are uh, learning it is no we got forced to do in the something like covid that's why we are doing otherwise also even manage we conduct the sessions five days and uh, it is nine hours 9 9 am to evening 6 or 6:30 we will conduct but now online sessions morning only two sessions not maximum it is two hours we feel very bad even two hours morning two hours afternoon two hours only even not all five days gone now only one day or two day like that because no we are not all the time uh, software developers sitting and doing education something we are ac- accommodating something near uh, new one slowly we may accommodate but still uh, the traditional blending based on our own health status the our own receptive capacity individual individual to vary but still uh, you know, people generally they can't many research sir there are different finding it simply go through how much time we can see study in online like that no they will tell very less time half an hour 30 minutes more than that they would don't have the span of attention our teachers used to teach us it not in extension also what is the span of attention it is a very less actually people will talk but it won't go to your mind somebody very enthusiastic and fascinated like you people i am really happy because even after almost going to be 3 hours still you are asked question because maybe you are young and fascinated about thing and uh, something differs about the student or uh, depend upon the individuals and another question content uh, like a teacher teaches the class they will make the content very interesting like uh, some teachers make the live example some teachers make uh, uh, other things so they will talk right and uh, they will bring something or some people will come like that we have different things some, some teacher even sing or something they will quote something like that no, there are different ways uh, and uh, but uh, when you are going online you need to use different text and uh, formats or something like we can mix with all we can play the video we can ask and uh, online also there are uh, 
so many other tools it can enhance the for example when i am using i should have used five minutes online polls simply putting you should have put a thumbs up or thumbs down and it will you will be happy my class is not there means you might be put thumbs down but it will psychologically give a lot of uh, excitement while wow, this fellow was totally talking and i given thumbs down and uh, like that no you will get happy you know there will energy will come like that no we can have quite interesting methods simply you type it know how to make uh, digital uh, learning very interesting you know online there are hundreds and thousands and thousands of pages are available just only we need to have the interest you will be very good teacher if you want to be and you can find out online you know lot of materials are available you can use it very 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 appropriately you know that makes because you know, first you need to have really you need to excite the people and if you have the passion you know you will show in the way you present you don't be monotonous with only ppt thank you very much for interesting question chaitra thank you very much yeah it is my time is over thank you very much and i thank all gkvk and my head of the department uh, professor uh, uh, i will tell my head of the department because my teacher they are all uh, those who are their seniors and uh, my colleague uh, dr and uh, professor uh, jrk muthi is sitting and uh, uh, sari is one of the mentor and always i owe a lot to norm always and also jrk muthi sir because uh, uh 2005 those days uh, uh, they teach to teach the basics of the extension and icts icts for extension and all thing i all the way from northeast i used to come and uh, sir happy to see you sir and thank you very much and uh, bye sir thank you very much yeah thank you sir i would like to thank you on behalf of department of agricultural extension vkvk us bangalore for providing enormous information in a short time efficiently thank you sir thank you so much now i would like to take an opportunity to introduce dr g r ramakrishna murthy is a next speaker he is going to deliver a lecture on recent innovations in educational technology dr g r ramakrishna murthy is a professor and principal scientist educational system management division icr nar rajendranagar hyderabad he had an 28 years experience in research teaching extension and training in agriculture with reference to e learning and farm mechanization was a scientist in farm machinery and power at icr indian institute of rice research hyderabad during the year 1993 to 2002 and he worked as a assistant professor in agricultural engineering in iit kanpur during 2002 and 3 and worked as a senior scientist and later as a principal scientist at icr national academy of agriculture research management hyderabad since 2004 regarding educational technological innovation He strengthened, he strengthened the e-learning system in agricultural education through innovative practices like learning management system, MOOCs, OERs, and technology-enhanced learning practices. As a result, about 400 plus e-courses were developed by various domain specialists in agriculture, which have lakhs of downloads worldwide. And he has developed a plan of capacity building in e-learning and trained over 3,000 in e-learning implementation. He established a state-of-art technology. Enhanced Learning Center under NAE project on technology enhanced learning in agricultural education, and he offered first MOOCs in Indian Council of Agriculture Research and first distance education online certification program, and he developed a sustainable revenue generation model through MOOCs and digital content development, and he has awarded with best faculty at institution level for the year 2019. recipient of hari om ashram uh, trust award for contributions to renewable resource of energy in 2005 and recipient of mhrd fellowship for mtech and csir fellowship for phd and recipient of gold medal from indian society of agriculture engineers ap chapter for topping the university at ug level and he has published more than 15 articles five book chapters and five team papers for seminar and international conferences and he is working as a principal okay. investigator for external funded projects technology and as learning and in agricultural Good education one. thank you sir and i would like to welcome you for this session and the session is over to you so you are not audible sir you are not audible sir madam uh, can you hear me yeah yeah sir it's audible now yeah yeah how much time i have sir uh, 45 minutes sir yeah i will not take it as per your requirement no issue uh it's okay i'll just let, let me say around uh, 130 is it fine yes, uh, okay okay friends uh, i have a very 
tough task at my disposal. I had to talk something about uh, education and technology uh, recent innovations. Uh, in this talk, I know. 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 I ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ so today i will uh, deal uh, about uh, you know uh, the education technology innovation so that is the class today uh, i will just explain how actually education technology started impacting our uh, you know regular uh, life now especially for last one year we, we all know very much that uh, education technology is playing a big role so i just i will not re- really don't go into the slides because i know the time is going to be a limiting factor so what i try to do is in this class i will just talk about uh, what are the covid effects and the et tools concepts and technology for teaching basically but while i doing so i will be showing you uh, through a demo itself because whatever i am actually teaching through the uh, slide i am already practicing through my teaching also so you have two in one actually it's a bonus for you so i will uh, take uh, you know few things of uh, to uh, insight how actually education technology started changing life if you look into this especially in this particular image you just have a look uh this is actually an image taken uh, by unesco for site at the unesco site which actually talks about how many learners were actually affected uh, during uh, covid uh they we had taken one day for example one reference date was june 8 2020 so some it's a random one not any specific uh, important if you look into that almost 63.3% of the total enrolled learners all over the world was affected directly or indirectly during the period you know what happened we know very well we are still uh, grappling with that uh, hard to that you know uh, the covid is still here and yesterday also i knew that you know someone uh, in one apartment in bangalore entire 100 uh, 103 people got infected so we are still re- grappling with that fact and uh, this education has been one of the worst uh, victim of uh, that one i don't say worst but i can say this is actually very much influence i will say for maybe for better as uh, dr sarvanan said yes nothing can replace the traditional learning but now what happens is the situation is forcing us probably to lean towards this kind of uh, you know tool also but when you know that this, this is the tool you are designed to be with then what best can be done in that that is my always look because i always believe in traditional method of learning and teaching also but at the same time what i believe in is if something is imminent if something is actually inevitable then what, what how best we can you know make the best out of it that's the that's my generally think so that's why do i i myself am a one person who really don't like technology much but at the same time i also know that where we have to use and how best we can use that where i always keep looking into so if you look into this uh, you know technology in teaching the need of the hour why i say that is how you see this in during this time students in all streams were displaced they sent home and they were they were actually they were made to sit at home and then they had to learn something they had to attend the classes and uh, you know braving all uh, this uh, you know poor infrastructure poor connectivity and all till i know that many people right from you know first standard to the professional stream all the students were actually asked to embrace this methodology now what is then if that is the case what are the new things for how best we can make you know use of education technology that's going to be an important thing for everyone else. so one important thing i want to tell you is even after covid is left let us say there is going to be one tomorrow for us 
wherein we can say, come on, no, there's there no more COVID, everyone is vaccinated, everyone is 100% secure. Let us say even that, that is the case, still now we have to look into our education infrastructure in a different perspective. Because now the social distances, the sanitization, all, you know, now they are going to come into play. Because you never know that something unexpected is going to come from unexpected corner. If that is happening, then how does we are equipped with that? So definitely, our classrooms are not going to be the same the way it used to be. Definitely, that is for sure. Now, if that is the case, how does we can, you know, tweak the existing infrastructure to for the best use? That's going to be something which we all have to ponder about. Now, I will just, you know, uh, just give one example. Education technology was it actually? becoming uh, important only after COVID or is it really there before, even before it is relevant? If you look, I just make a draw, uh, I mean, comparison here. Even before COVID, it was very much relevant. It was relevant. Only thing is, we were actually having our own comfort level. Oh, come on, let it, uh, let, uh, this kind of uh, technologies are uh, only fancy or luxury or something like that. We never tried to thought of, uh, think about it. But if you look into that, we had a problem of teacher shortage. There is a study in our uh, I mean, uh, in agriculture, there is almost uh, as high as 40% shortage is there for teachers. And if that is the case, then how are you going to make you, uh, I mean, make, make up for that 40%? And another thing is, out, out of the 60%, how many are good teachers? And how many are actually available for the students? So again, this is again a problem. If that is the case, then definitely that is where COVID or no COVID is always having a scope. And quality of education. Now, I, just, I studied uh, in, 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 when I was in my UG, I was having a notebook and, you know, simple style, I mean, at the most I had, uh, what is that they call, they call it a cyclo style style, sheet from census, they used to have that material. And afterwards, we used to have a bit of, you know, uh, PPT, etc., etc. Even now, many people still think that PPT is an education, is an e-learning. No. If, if you think PPT is an e-learning, no, it's, we are completely mistaken. So the quality of education has to take in more and more interactivity. Like uh, Dr. Saranan sir was telling that, you know, that uh, the human touch, how, yes, we know that we can't mimic, we can't come close to that. But how can we can get close to it? If there is an, uh, suppose I want to explain about a machine, because basically I'm an agri engineer, uh, probably I will say a few examples from that. If I, I want to ex ex explain a machine, what is the best method I can do without the help of you taking uh, the, you going to the real machine? So how does I can do this? So that's where the interactivity comes. How can I bring in the interactivity? How can I make the student to you know uh, get involved in that? Let's say, can I make it like a game? Suppose uh, there was a, student, a teacher who used to explain something uh, by asking the student to uh, name the part. Suppose if there is a cow, cow digestive system is there. He will ask the students to name the part. And can we make it as a, a, a playable activity? So you just make everything, you know, block and ask the students to type something and check whether they are on correct or not. So the students will start, you know, come and uh, enjoy it like a game. So you can gamify them. So the quality of education is something where a technology can play a wonderful role. There's no doubt about it. Then the inclusive access to all the people like uh, remote areas, rural areas, illiteries, economically deprived, so many people are there. And uh, technology will never, uh, I mean, distinguish who is, uh, I mean, less illiterate or more literate, who is uh, poor or rich, nothing like that. So it is going to be available. Whatever material that is being developed through technology will be available for whatever, whoever is the person. And the uniformity in syllabus we can achieve and knowledge enhancement can be done. Now, are we living out of our textbooks, can we go beyond that? That's always a question. So can we really make it more interesting? So you see, definitely, I always say that textbook is only a, a kind of, you know, entry point for your knowledge. But you have a lot many things happening, especially nowadays, to go beyond that, to go beyond that. Suppose, you know, you were talking about nowadays nanotechnology terms, big data analytics terms, artificial intelligence terms. All these things are not actually disciplined by themselves. They all have applications in every discipline. So now what happens is your textbook is not going to be your endpoint. You have to think beyond. So this is where the technology comes. You have online courses, you have so many online resources, everything can be used for 
you know, knowledge and answer. This is all no COVID. Even if there is uh, no COVID, this is all relevant. All these points are relevant. All these points are relevant. Now, after COVID, what happened? Now, we all know very well. Now, I will just move towards, towards this side. Now, you have, uh, this is the post-COVID, what, what happened. Now, what happened? Now, you are all used to accustomed to stay home learning. And the classroom is in the social distance. And then online evaluation, learn from anywhere. These are the things now happening. Now, you will be moving, you will be moving somewhere. And now you want, don't want to miss the class. You can do that. You want to stay at home. You don't want to take a risk of, you know, getting in, I mean, contact with others. That's all possible. Now, because of these reasons, now the technology is becoming very, very much relevant. So this is a very important thing. Now, if that is the case, then what are the things, how we, how we go about it? Now, let me just say, tools of eating. I will, because uh, I will not go beyond this. I mean, I will, after that, I will only show a kind of a demo kind of thing to be there. So here, uh, of course, maybe I may be at the cost of repetition, maybe there, in the, in the previous class. If you are the tools of ET, that means how do you uh, share or access the knowledge or information? It can be through your blogs or wikis or discussion fora. That's uh, some of the simplest tools to start with. And suppose if you are good in FB, Facebook, the so-called uh, social media uh, uh, platform, you can share your, I mean, uh, I mean, access other information from that. But, and also, now the mobile learning is another important thing. Now, the mobile can also become now a part of your, you know, accessing the knowledge or, the, you know, any, any kind of thing. Uh, but there will be a kind of, uh, some limitations are there, but still, it can do the job for you. And, uh, other thing is the virtual learning environment. This is probably very good for an educational organization as a whole. Suppose if you are planning, this is probably my, my baby. Always, I always think uh, this is probably my dream also. For the last 15 years, I worked in this. Uh, why can't an environment be created in, in an organization as a whole? It's not single person, Mr. X is going to develop the content and uh, share with the students. But I always look upon the organization as a whole organization as a whole to implement this as a combined at a group activity wherein the, uh, the teachers and the students both become stakeholders. Now, what do you mean by virtual learning environment? It will have everything that is done in an academic environment except that it's in a digital mode. That means your registrations are done online, your attendance is taken online, your teachers are hosting their le lessons online, your students are wa watching your classes online, if they want any doubt, they can be uh, clarified through online examinations, assignments, discussion for everything happens over a platform. And the best part is, it will be available for our level. That means somebody wants to know what Mr. X has uh, talked about a particular class on a day, on a, on a uh, last year, everything will be available. So this is actually a virtual learning environment will not only provide uh, the access to uh, information for everyone, but also it will provide a systematic way of, you know, uh, a, accessing the information and the developing the analytics out of it and taking the decisions and enhancing the quality. Everything can be done. So my, my, my uh, personal take is go for the virtual environment, learning and learning, you have to establish. And then uh, for the MOOC, now everyone is now knowing more about the MOOC, massive open online courses, sitting at your, uh, you know, at your home, and you can access a lecture by, you know, I mean, let's say Stanford University professor, and uh, you will be getting the knowledge, and also you can get a certification to some uh, such a big, uh, I mean, university. So that is a, that's an advantage without moving anywhere. So that is an advantage of MOOC, and uh, the animations and interactive exercises. These are very important to make the content more and more interesting. So the the teachers. Uh, ultimately, I will tell you one thing, there is nothing like a shortcut for making a good content. As a teacher, you know how best to send the representative. You, any small, any uh, dull, drab and dreary things also can be made interesting, provided you add a right tool, the right mix for it. That, that's always a, a thing. But I will never say that, okay, come on, if this kind of class has to be taught only by this, nothing like that. But as a teacher, you always know how best you can package this kind of content. Then the new concept called flipped classroom is also a new thing that's happening. Flipped classroom is like, you know, we do homework in home 
and slap up in slap. But what if you flip this too? That means you work, you do the homework in class and uh, class work in home. So yeah. what does it mean? I give my lessons in the form of either videos or uh, other information and that will be given to you. At, and then you have to read them at home and then come back to the classroom and do the exercise which I have given to you as a homework. So now what happens, your classwork becomes homework and homework becomes classwork. What is the advantage in that? The student will have a comfort of learning at their own leisure. The material is available, there is nothing like uh, now I have got only 45 minutes, right? In the 45 minutes, now I am in a hurry to finish everything, but there is nothing like that. My recorded lectures are there with you. You can play a number of times or you even play as long as possible and you can have the comfort of listening at your home, wherever you are. And next is, you in a classroom you will have more interaction because I don't say have to take any class. So straight away what I can do, I will ask, okay, come on, I have given an homework, let's see how many of you can attempt it. So I will also be having a lot of uh, time for the students to know what they are doing. Most of the time what happens in, a, in our traditional system is, we don't get enough time to interact with the students because you have to finish your classes in 45 minutes lecture. That's it. And uh, you, there is a time for you to interact with the students. So this kind of flip classroom can be very, very uh, useful. And uh, the other thing is, the, as far as the learning is concerned, we have actually graduated from the CDs, DVDs, computer-based training le le uh, learning materials. Earlier we all used to have this. Even floppies we used to have. Now that we have moved into network learning and cloud computing. So network learning means a classic example is, now we all watch Netflix. I don't say learning here. We all watch Amazon Prime Video. Now what is, the, are you buying any DVDs, CDs now? Nothing. I, everything is gone. Now, you, they want, the moment you want to watch a movie, you straight away, log into the site and uh, type that movie's name and it will be available. And it will, you can play any time as you wish. Totally, the, the experience of movie has changed because of the network. The learning is also now like that. The learning, anything you can you can access at any point of time. You want to, whenever, you will never be late to the class. Another good thing is, you will be never late to the class because the moment you log in, that is the time class starts. Because the feature is then only available at your own back and forth and you can watch it. And the cloud computing, this another uh, thing is, now no longer we will be seeing a physical machine feature in future. No, no computer, no computers, nothing. Everything is available in a virtual format in some, uh, let's say, in a cloud. And good part of that is, I, I can always upgrade my system. So you suppose if I have a, a low-end processor, tomorrow I decide that I want to change my processor, I don't have to throw this away. So what I need to do is, I straight away, I can upgrade this. So that is an advantage of having a cloud computer. It will completely avoid the digital redundancy. Hardware redundancy is completely taken. Completely your machines can be used the, for the purpose that you want. And you can upgrade at any time as you wish. That would be one wonderful thing uh, in the cloud computing. In education also, now even for, for that matter, I am having my own website here for my e-learning. Now I am now thinking to have a virtual machine elsewhere. So why the thing is, suppose that someday there will be, let's say there is an electric, uh, uh, I mean short circuit is there or let's say there is my, my server got uh, crashed or something like that. My system should be elsewhere available as a replica. And that should not have this kind of problem. So the, the cloud will not have this kind of problem because the machine, machine itself is a virtual. So there is nothing like crashing down. So that way, all in education, now we get this kind of uh, things, you know, uh, the education observations will be there. And you can always do that at any time as you wish. So this will, if you ask me, these are some of the tools of IET. That is actually making, uh, that will be, you know, totally, uh, I can say, that will make the entire educational technology as a big thing in education. Then, just I will, uh, I will, now I will take you to few ex experiences. Already you know how you are experiencing me compared to your other classes. This class is not the same way. You know, I, I am able to move and I can go as, as I wish. Now I see here, I am moving to you and I can talk to you as if you are right in front of me. And you see how I am giving you an experience of as if the student, uh, the teacher is right in front of you. Except the thing is, I am in a virtual format in front of you. 
and otherwise all my thing, other things are possible now i i can move as i wish and i can keep talking to you and i can even interact with you provided you have that kind of uh, you know uh, thing from you probably if you, if you are if you ask me a question i can live in from here as if you are right in front of me if you look at the, from my side i am able to see every one of you there but only one camera is there so i can only see one one view of view shot of it but if you have two cameras probably i can have the same feel as you are having about me now you can see here uh, this is my my, my entire uh, lab and you can see how i have converted this small room into my complete a uh, classroom but only the empty chairs are here but so what you are there in front of me uh, my real chairs are not filled my virtual chairs are still right over there so this kind of things we are, we have now started moving into that so this is a uh, uh, to do this one i am taking you back to my this one this is actually inspiration to me this particular image is inspiration to me uh, for what is happening right now this is a image i have taken somewhere probably in let's uh, say 2006 in us in wahar uh, state university where you know the simple thing the the very very it caught my attention very quickly as you see here right just have a look here in this image here is here is the teacher and he is having a laptop here Here, this is the laptop. You can see here. Just second, zoom in here. Okay, zoom in. Zoom. Just, can you zoom in? Yes. Now you just have a look here. This is the laptop. In this laptop, he is teaching and he is having a a stylus here. Okay. This stylus he is writing on this. You can just have a look. The same thing. I have I kept it here. He is writing. When he is writing, he is writing on this one. It's like what you call it's a board only. And the same thing was actually. uh projected on to an lcd screen probably this is the right now you must be watching me like that and uh, then the students are watching on a like screen like this and they also have a traditional board as you see here this is our 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 you know the most sacred uh, method of education technology i can say this is also an education technology definitely you know you can't say that blackboard is not uh, et no it is an also et tool now he has everything there and the students are watching on this one and also they are noting down uh, whenever you write on the board and the best part is we used to record the lecture without any camera uh, at least i am using camera here he is not using any camera so he has, he records the lecture and then the same thing will be posted on to the website the, next, the same day so the the students who miss the class they can always watch it uh, whenever they wish so that is an advantage so in future right now it may not be so exciting for you maybe few but in that time in 2006 that was probably something which i, I was unimaginable to me so oh, come on the lectures can be recorded like this too with there's no camera man and uh, a, you can write on the screen and it can be projected like this and then it can be recorded and can be shared everything that that actually opened up my mind oh so a lot of things can be done here. but the thing is how to make it more i mean uh, user friendly and implementable scalable kind of thing then i started working and today you can probably see this is all the one of the uh, you know uh, the, the lab that we established this model is now being uh, replicated in many other places also already three few institutes have done and two more already in the process of doing it now this is why what is advantage of this is uh, this kind of uh, lectures can be useful for the students because they can play any number of times this for teachers also it reduces the burden next time they can suppose if this video is available they share it to whatsapp simple as to think if you don't have anything you can at least you record your lecture and they share it push it to your whatsapp as a video 10 minutes lecture okay they just share it asking students go through this tomorrow come to the class and i will be having some questions and this question you have to answer in the classroom this is the thing you give a given exercise and make it compulsory and make it uh, gradable people will show the line slowly you know you have to bring them in this into this kind of method using the technology so this is actually of course another example of in those days they used to have a, a you know video cameras and uh, video conferencing cameras uh, like the way now we are doing they used to have remote campuses in fact i was telling even before covid i used to tell whenever i used to go to any university i used to tell we, we need to have this kind of material because many of our colleges are having remote campuses every university will have one campus in, in somewhere you know which is probably bit interior now how do we bring them onto the mainstream the teachers may not be there enough or may not like to go and students also may see 
they should not feel that they are actually being, uh, uh, you know, uh, I can say they are not getting the advantage of, you know, the speaking. So we should not make it hap hap uh, happening. So in that such case, where this kind of methodology should have been working. But thanks to COVID, now we know that how to connect to the campuses. With, with, with the COVID, what happened is, now there is no demarcation between one campus to other campus. All campuses can be dealt by one teacher only because of your online methodology. So this is uh, the thing I just told, you know, the flip classrooms, how it can, you can do it, you know, what is presented in the classes, that, uh, you know, the lectures, everything can be made available. And then for this again, I will say that you need to have a technology. So you may say, sir, I don't flip class is okay, but where is easy in that? Yes. You have to make your videos and that video also should have a good, you know, some kind of interest in that. Don't simply make or come on, I'll, I'll, I'll record my lecture and then you will finish it like a, you know, a, a, a routine monotonous work. You have to make it more interesting. That's where, again, you know, technology will play a big role. So this is, uh, if you ask me, I'll just, you know, quickly take uh, uh, into this. Uh, what are the tools available for a uh, kind of, uh, uh, let me just give you here. Just have a look here. Uh, if you ask me the yeah, ET package, there are, I can call them as four uh, methods. The first one is the teaching technology. So that means right now I'm using this as a board, right? This is my, you know, as a teacher, I should also feel comfortable with my technology. So what are the tools available? So you can use uh, some softwares like whiteboards and presentation master softwares and then all our year meeting, you know, online meeting you know, software coupled with a technology like this. This is a, actually, for example, this is a whiteboard for me. Yeah, just give, give, give me a, a, a kind of a demo here. If this is a whiteboard, you see, see here, in this whiteboard, I can, no, I don't have any chalk piece. I, my, my, my hands are my chalk pieces. I can just write the way as I wish. And I can choose the colors. I can choose the blue color. I can choose the red color. I can choose the black color. All chalk pieces are available. And in between, I want to write on a whiteboard. In between, let's say I was explaining through your white PowerPoint. Suddenly, I want to use a whiteboard. What, what should I do? Do I have to go to a whiteboard and do? I need not do that. Simply a single touch here. My whiteboard is here. If I have a whiteboard, now I can straight away, I want to draw a tractor here. I can just simply draw a tractor like this. Put it like this. And then make a, make a, I don't know, a, an MB cloud. And then let's say, you have something like, uh, let's say, I want to put a green color. So I can put crop here. And then I can, I want to write something. I can say factor here. What should I can do anything here? Suppose one, one board is finished. Do, do I have to rub it up? Yes, even if I want to rub it up, I can do that. I can just have, take my duster here. And then I want to rub this up. You see here? And have thing I can rub it up. This is how you do, right? In, in the class. Only thing is, you will have a duster. But here I don't have a duster, but I can use my, my hand or I can use my pen. Pen is also available. I can do that. So after that, is, is it the only board? I can have one more board. If I want to have one more, I have got some second board. This is my second board. I can just uh, write here. This is my second board. I want to go to a third board. This is my third board. I want to come back to my first one. My tractor is here. Now I want to jump onto my, let's say, the PowerPoint, one touch. I'm back here. Now you look into the, into the, the kind of, uh, uh, I can say, ease that I have. I, do, I am not doing anything extra, just simple touch. I'm back to this. So as a teacher, the pedagogy is, is an important tool. So these tools are very, very important to you. So this is the first uh, ET package. Suppose I want to uh, clear off everything. I can, in a single stroke, I can clear the entire thing. Now, the, when I talk about ET, this is the first method. The second method is, I can just uh, go to the content capturing software. Content capturing, I Content capturing software. You can just have a look here. Close it. Close it. Yeah. You can see here. Content capturing software is uh, what? Why? What I mean by content capturing software is uh, this is actually uh, recording. Suppose I'm, I've taken a class. How do I record one? Can I, you know, uh, 
some of the things powerpoint itself is having a recording facility and uh, there is some the software like uh, cam studio loom uh, encoder camtasia stream captomatic presentation tube these are all the software by which you can actually capture the lecture and without the help of any uh, camera person so you sit in home like uh, generally what i prefer to do is sit at home take a class actually uh, leisurely record it and give it to the students but only thing is it will not be having much of uh, you know uh, uh, i mean good effect but suppose if i want to edit them then i need to have an editing software as you see here content editing software so, so now your demands are increasing a bit little more so if uh, then i had to add some good effect good music remove some unwanted uh, audio then i need to have this kind of software like movie maker was there camtasia and creative cloud this is a bit you know little technical people a uh, hard to believe to having a little more technically technicality but still it will do a good job now once you have the content where do you share ultimately the sharing is an important thing where sharing is like you can see here the content sharing how i do this is what i call as a virtual learning environment again that also will run through a software like uh, you know moodle this is the one i just, that i use since the uh, ages i can say 15 years down the line i'm i'm using this using this uh, moodle I, i have been you know running my entire e learning site for last 15 uh, years uh, not 15 i can say 13 years okay. 13 years and uh, this methodology is now being adopted by everyone probably i don't know some of you must have seen the e course uh, which is sold in uh, i i c that i do this moodle format only we train all the domain uh, specialists of that particular team which you are seeing the here is in our courses you have used they are all my training they all have come to the i mean portals of nam and they got trained here on how to develop the content and all has uh, shown them how to develop that kind of content we have done it so this courses are now being used everywhere that's what when madam was reading my biodata she was telling some lack of download for there yes that is that part uh, so many lack of students have been benefited all over the globe even there are uh, i was told there are internationally people download no not because of me don't uh, attribute this to me but i only say that i was happy to be a catalyzing uh, you know factor for these teachers because who all develop this material because i showed them the way this is the way you have to download the content and using that methodology i am happy that they came up with wonderful material in all the things agriculture veterinary dairy technology horticulture home science engineering and uh, what else fishery all these things all all disciplines have got the material and you can see in our icr you just you can type uh, uh, icr and e courses you will get that site and you can see how many courses are there uh, for all for ug students okay so this is uh, the thing that we had so if you ask me you know now we all now we are thinking about having the web conference conference in software and all those things of course uh, i am not going to deal much because the uh, quality of time is there so with this i will stop at this point because i have shown you the tools those tools have to be can be used one is for teaching the other is for uh, capturing the third is for editing and fourth is for managing the content you can develop the content so when you develop the content i can just show you one thing that is you know uh, you can use this uh, we have for example i will just show you our uh, non website just i am i am not going to take you into into this because time is not there uh, You see here, this is our non website. If this entire thing we develop to more than only. Now here we have massive open online courses, training programs, our distance education programs. This is my platform. On this platform, I have I have hosted n number of courses. I don't know if some of you must have taken notes in my from non, and we actually use this platform for hosting our courses. So this, uh, I mean, at least I can tell you, we have hosted seven, seven MOOCs so far for the last five years, and uh, our re residential programs are also run. In this, we also have online uh, evaluation is also there. Very recently, for your time information, maybe my, the teachers if they are there, you have done you. We demonstrated how to conduct even a descriptive examination through online, which is actually uh, <clears throat> generally people don't do. Uh, but uh, i i took a you know a bit of an adventure in that i i was a teacher for one course 
So what I did is, of course, when I had a luxury of 10 students, I took the entire examination through uh, descriptive test through online. So the people had to type the answers and, I mean, send to me, not uh, in email. It will be a part of this element. That's called learning management system. So what I did is, I have not done an automated uh, correction. I, I went through that because it's always good to see yourself. And then I valued them. And those marks are automatically added into the system. The moment I gave two marks, the two marks are added to the total of that student. So that also had a combination of uh, objective type and a descriptive. That means the, exactly the way you conduct a, a, a question, uh, the examination with all the mix of questions, we, I had it. And best part is the questions are randomized and question papers are random. So no two students even had the you know, same paper. I know that there are a lot of students are there in this and in this group. They may be cutting me uh, because this is not a good thing, right? So different question papers for different people. So not a good good thing for the students, right? So this is the kind of thing we had. But from my, my teacher's side, we feel this is a one of wonderful things. So we did all the things. I'm not going to take you into this. Otherwise, I would have taken you to the entire website I could have showed you. But uh, e-learning is not CPD. E-learning is all about how best you can mimic to the real scenario and uh, how can you make it more interesting and interactive. So this is all uh, I just want to say in the short span of time. I will take the questions rather, you know, speaking like this. Maybe if you have a question, please, I am available. So now it's uh, 1.23. Yes, I have got still seven minutes. Uh, meanwhile, if you want to see, uh, see look around the uh, uh, this one, I can show you. Okay. I'll take you through, uh, through my lab now, okay? So, okay. I showed you, uh, this is the web, this is my, you know, uh, what I can say, uh, what is that? Uh, interactive whiteboard. In this interactive whiteboard, I'm, I already have shown you, I use it like a computer monitor also, isn't it? I already shown my website. And with a single touch, I can go back to my, what is this, uh, whiteboard. Another touch, I can go back to my PowerPoint. And there are many more tools I can use, like, you know, I can use, uh, like, a certain tool. Maybe it's uh, extension, uh, they use very well this, you know, uh, like, uh, point where you want to explain. So you want to explain first point, so you just drag it like this. First point is available. Then go for the second point, third point, like this. So this tool, this kind of, kind of tool can be used. And similarly, I, I can uh, put one, uh, or I can say, I can use, I can use a, a fastlight tool, you can see here. I can just start to, suppose I want to show uh, one portion of uh, an image, you know, which is actually infected by, say, some uh, virus or some insect. So I can just, you know, take you along like this. Move it like this. So, so simple. So simple, I can make very, very interesting. No, I, I'm just telling some of the things can be done like this. <coughs> so this way, you can uh, use uh, a tools like this here, and uh, then these are the uh, what I can say is the uh, teaching tools. Now, what are the com capturing tools? And now I will tell you here. See, when the class is going on, see now I, I somebody is taking me along, right? I am taking you along my uh, my lab. So how how is it happening? It is because of some camera. Now you see here, this is the one camera. You see this? This is actually uh, a camera which is rotating. If you are able to see, Ajay, can you just uh, zoom it further? You can see here, this is moving, right? Are you able to see this? This is moving 270 degrees. Now, this, because of movement, what is happening? It is covering the entire area. 270 degrees, it will, what is happening? So, it has that much of view angle in which it will zoom in, zoom out, and, uh, you know, uh, focus. So, you can just see, this is what we call the pan tilt and zoom. So it will show you the zoom out. Now Ajay will take take me long, okay? Just he he will uh, you know show a long shot of me. Yeah. Now you see here uh, the same uh, the same camera which is there on the other side. The, with the same camera he is uh, taking a long uh, I mean side and he is also moving along. Now you see here the entire thing. This is the screen you can see here. Now you see here I am moving across. And I am going to another one. This is another uh, camera here. Just you can see here. This is another camera. And uh, I can show you to another one. Ajay, can you show the other side? This is the, the one more camera here. 
you see here this is the camera you can see this this one is this is the one uh, one more here and one more is that side and i am able to see you here right you, i can see you right here so this is the way i can actually you know uh virtually do that now using this camera what i do is i capture the session i capture the session uh i think take me again uh, i capture the session and uh, that session will be recorded and stored and then we we actually a lot of add do lot of uh, editing and then we use it for our a regular online process now we made it as even as a consultancy program we we make this material and we, we provide for others so that you know they can use for their online program for example dr sarvanan sir was there their uh, their institute we developed uh, uh, three mooc for them uh, which was around you know some 67 what 68 modules i think approximately those modules we developed for them those uh, after that they became self sufficient because they developed their own lab after seeing this they went back and they developed the lab and now they are, they, they they developed the content by them but otherwise we developed the content we we showed this is the way content can be done and technology can be done. so uh, this is an end to end from producing the content to the managing and consuming the content by the end user so entire cycle we covered in this uh, particular uh, uh, you know effort so now i'll take the questions from you if you have please feel free to ask me I think I'll take it. Yeah. I will answer my screen. One second. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Pin says and pin. Yeah, any questions and any interaction? I am not able to uh, see you properly. Yeah. any questions yeah no please. queries no queries okay so shall i end sir okay sir thank you sir thank you for delivering yeah, wonderful lecture you. today uh, sir uh, remember, i remembering the uh, first time i think uh, 2007 i joined you uh, in your uh, inter school uh, one of the web based education learning applications in north so that time i uh, we learned that moodle concept and ah. also uh, we tried installing uh, uh, not in the website but in the laptop we, we tried to install and uh, try it out uh, open the course but uh, we could not put it in the net at that time network facilities and the uh, yeah. uh, domain purchase and all was uh, not that much popular mm -hmm. so we couldn't do that uh, but uh, after late i did last touch of it also uh, So can you tell me, sir? With the, now publishing and all is so easy, but uh, still uh, Moodle is so relevant, sir. Uh, what are the advantages, sir? Still. What What is that, sir? Can you tell me? Sir, how, how far we can use the Moodle for uh, learning management, sir? Uh, sir, the it has last scope, sir. As you can see, uh, you said that in two thousand seven, you have seen me, right? Using Moodle. Seven hundred years. Right now it is 2021. Still on Moodle. Yes, sir. And uh, in the 15 years, my journey has been uh, multiple things. I, though they have not told anything, but I have used it in all purposes. I used it for my running my regular courses, yes, and I use it for uh, opening my MOOC, which is generally not done by any other uh, MOOC provider. Yes, and I use it for my distance education program. and i use it for regular uh, you know uh, my training programs wherein i take some uh, online evaluation yes. this is my 15th year sir and still i am i am with it and i have you know diversified it okay sir yeah uh, and you can do anything you have inorganic tools in it that's that's only yes. 
Yes, sir. I tried for about maybe one or two years. I tried, but uh, I couldn't publish it. So then I lost interest and uh, discontinued, sir. But yeah, it happened with yes, me. I'll, uh, I'll try to uh, uh, review it. Yeah. Do come to me. Then we yeah. we we will again, uh, you know. Okay. We will announce to you that kind of thing. We will announce that. We can get a few further. Yes. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much for for sparing your time. Okay. And uh, there are some uh, delay in this session. Start no, no. uh, some uh, you are tilted at this week. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, no, no, no. You are having more than another session. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much once again, sir. Thank I'm your proper department thank and I'm uh, a person there. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Okay, now we will break for the lunch, and we can come back exactly by two o'clock to start the another session. Okay. Uh.
Just a minute, I was just locating my... Is it okay? Oh, no. It's opening. No. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Is the PowerPoint visible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I welcome you all to the afternoon sessions of the today's training program. Uh, today we are having uh, another session on digital learning for vocational and non-formal education in agriculture. Uh, this session for to deliver this topic, uh, we are having the expert from uh, Coimbatore, uh, Dr. M. Senthil Kumar, uh, Assistant Professor of Agriculture Extension, and he is serving as a nodal officer for uh, KVKs of the TNA. So he has a vast experience, and uh, in fact, he is my classmate, a uh, very clo close friend of mine, and uh, uh, and also he was a classmate for UG also. Uh, he had served in the university last 10 years, uh, and he has uh, worked in the uh, video production unit. And uh, he's the person from the university to send or uh, produce the videos uh, from the uh, video quality that is acceptable for the uh, Doodashan Kerala. So, so the team has been doing it, but now uh, uh, he has taken over the, and he is uh, ma managing the team. And also he is uh, running the uh, YouTube channel of the TNAU, that is TNA TV, he is ma being managed by him. And then he has uh, produced a lot of short videos. Uh, nowadays, uh, we don't have patience to listen to long videos. So he has produced a lot of uh, short videos on agriculture. And those videos have been put in the DNA TV, as well as it is given as a glimpse in the news channels also, agriculture news part. And uh, he, uh, he is very much instrumental. Right now, he is uh, completing stage of the establishment of uh, Digital Extension Innovation Laboratory uh, in Coimbatore. With the acoustic facilities and all, uh, now it is being established. Uh, probably he may show you if uh, possible. He will be showing pictures at least. It is not a uh, live videos. Uh, he will be showing what all the new features have been established in the uh, digital laboratories for a uh, uh, digital extension innovation laboratory. And of course, he has uh, developed a lot of uh, mobile applications for agriculture for uh, uh, farmers use. And then he's uh, for all his achievements have been uh, rewarded with the best extension worker award from the uh, TNA Coimbatore. So on behalf of everyone present here and on behalf of the department and on my personal behalf, I invite him to deliver this lecture on 
digital learning for vocational and non formal education in agriculture uh, dr sanil the session is over to you please uh... thank you thank you dr ganesh uh, uh, ganesh is my uh, dear friend uh, uh, unfortunately distance has separated us uh, for, for long uh, good afternoon to all good afternoon to all participants uh, respected chodi uh, uh, agricultural extension and other university officers and my dear partic participants very good afternoon to all so i'll just uh, after lunch so it's already 220 so i'll just uh, try to wrap up very quickly and these are uh, my random thoughts uh, uh, which is already existing i just want to present uh, before you and uh, 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 just we, I, i'll be sharing something and some of our experiences right uh, did you believe few years back uh, farmers youth use uh, smartphones or common man purchase uh, uh, items online and trainings and meetings happen virtually educations online banking online now the fintech has is has been rolling subsidies uh, given online to farmers accounts and farmers interact and host video conferencing in the post covid scenario future possibility is schools and educational institutions uh, already are online and it may go virtual or semi virtual and farmers will subscribe to extension services online uberization of farm services extension professionals may provide provide customized services to farmers and all these things are happening and it will happen soon but what are the challenges uh, we face uh, uh, non formal education uh, there are growing farmers problems with respect to depletion of natural resources shortage of labor capital and and, and there is a technology need as well more demand exists for extension support as there is a wide ratio between extension professional and farmer there is a demand for location specific technology or innovation and what are the challenges challenges in organizing and mobilizing farmers friends it's very difficult to mobilize farmers nowadays because they are also preoccupied similarly for other uh, professionals so intuition of right target audience and then there is a dynamic technology needs happening so traditional or convention method of education or extension what we have been following is are pushed all the technologies are pushed pushed to the our uh, customers and then now um, uh, pushed from the universities uh, through various media and we try to we try to reach farmers through various group approaches and future is going to be technology led and it will be a pull approach where the customers uh, will be will be uh, uh, on demand they will take the uh, information uh, so that the extension system has to be equipped in order to provide them uh, information on demand and then uberization of services will soon will happen and can anyone reflect on uh, uh, is it possible to interact if possible to interact can anyone reflect on this photograph and who is see and about uh, anything related to this uh, education non formal education is it possible to anyone to react talk back uh, sentil it is possible uh, just a moment microphone yeah now we can okay uh, students can react i request i request our uh, friends to react on this photograph please very quickly quickly whatever whatever you feel about this gentleman or about this photograph kindly react that is the idea of digital learning kindly kindly give feedback can you talk back please any one of you sir happy face pardon sir happy face sir 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 happy <laughs> Not caring. Attitude, Not attitude. Any anyone identify this person, this gentleman? Like, 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 like
ಪದ್ಮಶ್ರೀ ಅವಾರ್ಡಿ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇಫ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಸೋನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಬ್ಸಿಕ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸಿ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒಕೇಶನಲ್ ನಾನ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಇನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಡಾಟಾ ಫ್ಯೂ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ India 64 percentage there is a shortage of uh, manpower in employable skills uh, th- this is a skill shortage even we have so many universities and then uh, we have so uh, i mean uh, 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 schools educational institutions still we have a shortage of uh, 64 percentage though india has initiated lot of other programs uh, to build the skills like uh, national skill development council of india as as key agriculture skill uh council of india and so on and so forth and uh, this is uh, this shows the importance of this uh, i mean uh, non formal education and then importance how to i mean in order to bridge this uh, we can use a digital platform uh to to improve the improve the skills and knowledge and then uh, this uh, slide uh, you all know formal education formal education mostly focuses on more of theory and then uh, and, and classroom sessions and then lot of theories constructs concepts and then uh, uh, with with the practicals conducted within the classrooms uh, classroom setting or the university i mean the college setting wherein as a, as a professional will be waiting for the day when i will actually implement it maybe in your only only when you enter into the job market or only when when you take up a self employment you will be you will be actually experimenting it uh, uh, the formal education that's the that's the key thing and then this uh, formal education status when you see this see the overall gross enrollment ratio is only 25.8 that means for every 100 people only 25 people are or 26 people are enrolling in colleges this gross enroll enrollment ratio in higher education though we have over 900 universities 39000 colleges and see india is a growing youth market wherein youth are predominantly uh in demographically wise youth or uh, uh, the predominant population in, in india and this youth force uh, have not been provided with adequate skills or adequate knowledge or an opportunity to uh, uh, to grow or to utilize their uh, fullest potential so that's how this 25 percentage or 26 percentage is uh, quite low and there is a huge need for uh, for non formal education or Uh, our vocational education in this country and we all know this uh, uh, this uh, theoretical thing non formal and informal and then informal is uh, deliberate and self directed learning and anywhere throughout your career through when you as and when you born sin, uh, till you die you learn informally uh, through various informal settings and non formal we all uh, talk about uh, agricultural extension and where we teach farmers through non formal structured and uh, planned and facilitated l- learning outside the uh, i mean uh, uh, classes and skills and capabilities are mostly important in non formal education and then there is a link uh, the the, ta- the link between these two these two things non formal education as a uh, digital learning and we all know that uh, the principles of non formal education is learner centered learner centered so the the uh, the objective of the program the content everything will be designed based on the requirements to meet to fulfill the demands of the learners and then holistic learning wherein the individual's competence is the crux and then based on with the knowledge skills attitudes and other things are built to impart holistic learning to the audience we all know this is experience based most of the non formal setting we ask people we ask the we ask the participant to experience themselves and learn and then engaging life skills and that is not possible in the formal education very limited extent and involving individuals and groups so individually and then group or team work all these things involving them in doing actually Uh, uh through this education we have farm schools farmers field schools uh, demonstrations so many activities in agriculture elections and what we talk about is uh, is uh, skilling is uh, non formal education and democratic and then as and when when people want as and when you like uh, i mean uh, the participant like he can take up or he can 
uh, you can switch over to whatever you, you like. Organize the process uh, with the learning objectives. So, so all the see dem demonstrations, whatever we teach, like farm schools, it has an organized, well-planned process. And then uh, to, in the, we, we have a focus on to uh, uh, what to teach and what they what they are expected to learn and voluntary. Okay, so unlike uh, formal, uh, it is voluntarily people have to come and then they have to take and they have to learn and participatory and then reflective learning. So this non-formal platform always gives uh, uh, people to reflect on what they have learned and then learn by various experiences. So at the same time, digital learning, digital learning, the, cons the, 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 the functionality of the digital learning uh, exactly helps in non-formal education Relevant text and curriculum, higher order skills, and then uh, uh, and then feedback. It, the digital learning platform provides uh, feedback and reflection and participation, so on and forth, so forth. And then, what about the ecosystem? When we see the digital learning ecosystem, and then it is uh, always uh, it asks for. I mean, this digital age learning ecosystem sense of uh, as I mean uh, assessment for learning, engaging instructional strategies, and then supporting the classroom. Uh, environment, it, uh, it, it provides an opportunity for an offline learning, blended learning, all these things, this digital learning platform at ease, we can learn at ease and then uh, different, uh, and, and, um, and, uh, differentiation and accessibility, multiple technology tools, multi -C, multimedia we can use, and then sense of community by participation, by so on and so forth, wherein uh, in digital ecosystem, <clears throat> it facilitates more of facilitator center than uh, than a teacher-centered uh, approach, and then uh, and then see this digital learning ecosystem. It affects this one, on the one side we have infrastructure access and to learning resources, uh, most of technology. On the other side, we have the context of learning, learning objectives of the individuals, and then the outcomes uh, directly led, uh, uh, relates to the all the domains uh, of uh, you know. And we have some challenges in these things. And uh, to a certain extent, uh, this non-formal education, skill-based, still, still we follow the British system of learning. And then we also appreciate uh, all this formal system of learning. Unlike other countries like South Korea, China, uh, uh, Japan, some uh, most of the European countries uh, moved on to uh, skill-based learning and more of vocational learning. Uh, still, we are in the nascent stage, but India is coming up in a big way. However, these are the challenges, uh, recognition for people who, who take up vocational and uh, the quality of education, accreditation, wherein all this uh, digital learning platform, uh, I believe it will be able to bridge. Okay, I was talking about uh, one, one person. I was showing one person. He is uh, none other than uh, Mr. Sridhar Vembu. Uh, he is the chief executive officer of the Zoho Corporation. It is one of the billion dollar company uh, uh, based at uh, Chennai and US and, and, and in a village called Tenkasi, uh, uh, down south of Tamil Nadu. And uh, you, can, you can also Google it and search uh, more about that gentleman. And uh, this is uh, one sort of uh, yeah, platform, digital platform wherein, and, uh, wherein he has roped in, um, uh, roped in uh, dropout students uh, dropout students, that is the qualification of this uh, uh, basic qualification is age should be within the range of 17 to 20 and then the, the participant should not have any academic qualification higher than class 12 or, 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 10, or, or 10 plus 3 diploma. So they should not cross uh, 12th. So that is the criteria. Uh, they take, they have a, a system called Joho School. Uh, the curriculum and then the, everything will be hands-on, more of practical, and then more of skill-oriented. Rather than teaching theory, they, they teach directly into the, uh, into the uh, action-oriented, experience-oriented, see practical exposure to work, a dynamic syllabus, that is it, to suit the needs of the, needs of the participants, expert teacher who are active practitioners, stipend also provided to the students. And then what is the... The phenomenal uh, thing was uh, all uh, poor, underprivileged students who cannot afford the schooling are taken in these Joho schools and see well, this is the whole data. And then more than 10% of the Joho employees are 
from our uh, from the non formal uh, this joho school are taken without any degree and then they they, they draw the salary at par with the engineers from uh, iits or any other um, any other engineering college so yeah, even otherwise the managers all these uh, under under these experienced uh, uh, trained uh, joho school uh, employees all the graduates are working under them as as uh, colleagues or employees so that's how uh, the the concept this is more relevant and he has been awarded padma shri for various other uh, innovations he has made he has uh, he has uh, taken from silicon valley he has uh, uh, started a company in, uh, in in his own village and then he actually what he is he was doing is uh, he has started a uh, company there and pe people uh, uh, and started building world class platforms in that village itself and these are uh, uh, already in the morning session so many speakers have talked about all these uh, platforms and i uh, personally here uh, i like to share some of our experiences and uh, our experiences and then uh, some of the some of the examples so like uh, now we are in the social revolution this advent of digital media helped us uh, to help us to move forward forward these are the tools we all know this learning management system online courses video moocs articles vendor platforms uh, live events or moocs so on and so forth have been deliberated in the since the morning uh, as a video based instruction see all these multimedia experience can be can be drawn see this is more useful for vocational and uh, non formal education why because learners are from different learners come, will come from different backgrounds with different uh, perceptions different knowledge background different literacy literacy level understanding experience and exposure so all these kind of a visual or multimedia experience in learning when given to them uh, this will enable them to understand very quickly and then uh, and then take up uh, uh, the skill Uh, very easily and then at the same time more number of people can be trained using this digital learning platforms and this is uh, you all know that uh, ott platform uh, ott platform uh, has changed the landscape scenario after covid before that it was also there the west in the of late in south, southern part of india you know there are people in the the normal setup were in theaters people have to go to the theaters and then watch movies no what happens people at ease they can watch movies from their mobile phones with the ott platform from the laptops or from at home or at whenever time whatever time they want and how many times i mean i mean number of times they can watch this is how this learning platforms digital learning helps this especially for non formal learners uh, this type of thing when educational content are given through web series or ott platforms and these are some of the things which we have been already using like uh, uh, over the top television like number of television channels in the west are available form journal tv platforms now web series is also available so that the customer can a participant can learn in his own pace ott in messaging whatsapp all these things are uh, um, over the top messaging services what it in voice calling like viber all these things you all know and this is uh, yet another initiative like uh, a youtube channel social media wherein any i mean wherein it it uh, social media provides a platform for anyone from a participant as well as a, as, well an, as, well as an expert to share to share uh, the content online and what it in messaging we all know and we have been extensively uh, advocating this is uh, in throughout the south india atari hyderabad all kvks almost all kvks uh, individually they have farmers kvk whatsapp groups as well as uh, official groups sharing of information when you analyze the sharing of uh, content it is so much from the expert side as well as from the participant side people share lot of information marketing information technological information lot of contents are being shared through his voice message services this is one of the initiative of us and uh, we we have around over over the 100 videos 150 videos every week or every month we have been posting lot of agro technology videos and then uh, now now we have a subscriber base of in one year we have subscriber base of around 29000 subscribers and this is a very good platform for teaching non 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 formal non formal uh, learning 
and vocational learning because skill can be taught in uh, taught i mean very easily through video so that people can easily acquire <coughs> and learn skill and demonstrations they see the effective demonstrations and skill can be taught only through <coughs> video or in person people have to as as we all know i um, mean learning is uh, i mean uh, experiential they have to either they have to do or practice or in, in addition if not if you if you want to reach uh, masses you you can use this uh, video as a effective mode or even even demonstrations can be captured and be shared to millions of users this is our uh, channel you can also watch tna tv you can also uh, check in this is what i i told about this whatsapp uh, we have we have over 100 whatsapp groups in tamil nadu alone then throughout atari uh, zone <coughs> we have number of whatsapp groups farmers are sharing very useful information especially crop production technologies plant protection techniques uh, input source demand by farmers training events by uh, frequently asked questions everything is being shared and very useful uh, tool where one can reach uh, uh, quickly to number of farmers and the main advantage of this is a multimedia where you can you, you all know that audio video uh, 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 i mean can be shared and very interestingly you know a lot of farmers share audio messages uh, they also share very useful information through audio and then they also capture video and share uh, many of the many of the uh, learnings they have made this is another mode you all know this uh, twitter and almost all kvks across the india every K all kvks are having twitter account and they have been posting and this platform uh, these social media platforms i mean uh, uh, equates all like a farmer a novice experienced farmer progressive farmer rich or poor it 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 makes it brings all scientists farmers rich and poor together there is a, no uh, divide except a digital divide uh, this platform uh, you can you can do wonders and that, that we have been uh, uh, we have been reaping all the benefits uh, here and this is yet another uh, thing our in our university we have made all expert systems i think our uh, other speaker dr anand raja will speak about that lot of technological technical information contents are brought in the form of expert systems and mobile applications uh, which can be easily dotailed for uh, teaching and these are some of the initiatives of state government of tamil nadu similarly uh, in other states uh, i think i have seen lot of experiences wherein Uh, this is a good platform not only for sharing of knowledge but also uh, for marketing or registration or availing of services by the farmers uh, this digital learning plat uh, digital platform like mobile apps are useful very much so this you all know that uh, kisan call center uh, where it is very actively functioning across india and uh, there are lakhs and lakhs of farmers are benefited out of it and then uh, uh, these are in our portals and then yet another you all uh, aware of uh, this agritech portal and now that uh, we have so many web portals giving empty number of generic information and this can be a, a platform uh, uh, very well useful for uh, non formal education and vocational education especially with the, with the specific uh, with specific contents on on and specific topics and and you know the government schemes uh, to promote non formal learning through digital learning e skill skill india national skill development Uh, you 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 can see a lot of courses a lot of ebooks a lot of courses on the mobile apps on the websites for different courses this one next one course is uh, like uh, vermi composting have given um, number of initiatives of government of india to skill india i mean uh, it is it is uh, it is growing and then we should we should also capitalize and then do similar thing as extension professionals these are uh, websites and portals you all know so on all kvks we have kvk portals and other icr institutes and other universities portals can be a rich source and then these are initiatives m kisan messages right messages like uh, lakhs of farmers are getting messages then push messages uh, uh, for generic information and then webcasting is yet another initiative by nick and then uh, even private agencies are um, uh, using this webcasting platforms and through webcasting platforms throughout india uh, all kvks in uh, across india also organizing uh, launch of various events various uh, presentations these are on demand uh, live and multimedia these are the 
these are the new options now available other than OTT uh, platforms. And this can be a very useful tool. Similarly, you can see physically farmers also participating as well as uh, virtually they can also watch these webcasting by email. And yet another web series in the West, we have we a have lot of web series where in farm web series related to farming, related to farming related vocational aspects. Uh, this thing has to come now in I mean, entertainment industry is very big. And then this web series, uh, maybe in future education, we need to think of web series on various, various uh, topics and various things. And ebooks, and uh, this I, I told the National Skill Development Corporation and various other ministries have rolled out a lot of ebooks, e content, all these things. And then this uh, after COVID, this conferencing tool have become ubiquitous. And then even farmers started a lot of farmers' groups. They became experts and they 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 conduct a lot of video conferencing, audio conferencing, uh, to share information. And this can be a useful tool because with the help of mobile phone itself, people can share. And it can be a useful tool for uh, for non formal and occasional education. And over a period of time, a lot of uh, once the five G is rolled out, and uh, uh, people can do wonders uh, with these uh, tools. And then community radio, we all know. But the radio itself is a powerful tool. And then when it is become, I mean, uh, digital, uh, uh, this will be a very good platform for, uh, for uh, non-formal teaching and occasional teaching. And then accessing radio. See, all day radio, thanks to all day radio. I've given, uh, see, online, everything can be, uh, all radio stations can be listened, I mean, through your mobile phone itself, of course. We people are, most of them are not using, not accessing. All programs can be retrieved, uh, can be listened anytime. It is available online. That is a wonderful platform. Radio can be used as a wonderful platform to take a message to the farmers, message to uh, through various non-formal education initiatives. And a podcast, of course, this podcast, uh, this is an experiment which I have just uh, created. You can stream, I mean, any content, through various podcast uh, podcast uh, uh, platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, so many other popular podcasts, free pro podcast platform. So anyone as extension professionals, uh, as students, you can also start a podcast and then you can have your own radio and you can have your own customers. Okay, you can have a group of farmers on various topics, various interests, and then you can share. This is a wonderful platform. Only thing is you need to have a mobile phone with internet, a smartphone with internet. You can also try it out. Uh, the, uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this is a wonderful platform. Then virtual exhibitions and digital exhibitions. So these are uh, the, in the digital learning platform. Is it visible? Is the video visible? Yes, yes sir, it's visible. These are some of the virtual platforms. There are so many other virtual platforms. We all know this exhibition is a very challenging part for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for extension professionals. Like we will be creating a poster and that will be obsolete over a period of time. Now we can have all the digital tools available, digital platforms, screening platforms available, wherein the content can be dynamically changed according to the needs of the audience. This can be a very well used tool. There are a number of uh, number of uh, I mean uh, digital exhibition tools available and that can be that can be detailed can be uh, very well utilized by the extension professionals and we all know this artificial intelligence uh, technology uh, geo glass Google lens is one example and uh, they are I mean, it is being experimented and this can be the future uh, of uh, non-formal or vocational education or even a formal education setup this uh, this this will supplement uh, uh, supplement our learning experiences. And similarly, virtual reality or augmented reality tools. And, uh, <clears throat> and then the artificial intelligence tools, like even like uh, Google Home and Alexa, now we use for uh, our, I mean, uh, normal purposes, wherein these tools, where the, the problem is uh, no one to provide content. See, as agriculture professionals, we are the one uh, who specialize, uh, who have the content, who have the content with us. So we need to we need to think we need to exploit all these tools, develop content. I mean, customize the content suitable for our group of audience, and then we can use all these available technologies 
like simple thing like Google Home or uh, Alexa, uh, uh, using these various AI tools, or um, we can deploy uh, this uh, digital learning uh, to 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 reach maximum number of farmers. And this photograph is a virtual laboratory we have created with the funding of uh, National Higher Education Project. This uh, the this laboratory uh, is kind of created in the Extension Department. I am also a partner to it. Mm, uh, wherein we we like uh, to impart skills to the students uh, in order to use these digital learning platforms for the betterment of uh, for betterment of uh, the individuals as well as the betterment of uh, uh, farmers. So in order to develop, we we want to skill uh, skill our our extension professionals and faculty in using digital tools in exploiting digital tools. Uh, for developing content, accessing content, and using the content for the betterment of farmers through various uh, platforms. And uh, with this, I conclude, uh, these uh, farmers and learners need to master the art and skill to identify the use of existing platforms, tools for accessing information. One thing is uh, creating a new platform, and the other thing is uh, we have sufficient platform uh, to exploit, sufficient tools, ICT tools to exploit, the only thing is uh, we, we need to have a capacity. We need to have a capacity building of extension professionals, farmers, and then provision of infrastructure, connectivity at affordable cost will bring effective and efficient use of, uh, uh, you know, use of digital tools you know, for the betterment of uh, uh, people. Therein, we can bridge the grass enrollment ratio. Therein, we can bridge the skill sets required in the agriculture sector. Especially agriculture is a skill intensive sector and then growing population and only old people are uh, uh, involved in agriculture sector we need to bring in youth not only bring in youth uh, we need to we need to make them uh, to use this technology and then uh, bring in not only youth working professionals to use these uh, tools to learn um, and effectively use it in agriculture for technology transfer for education and for uh, other other uh, uh, development purposes uh, thank you. Thank you all uh, for your patient listening. Um, I thank uh, for the opportunity given. Thank you so much. I, I invite questions uh, from, uh, from my friends. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sindhu. Now I invite uh, some queries from the students. Okay. Afternoon, sir. What is the success rate of digital exhibitions or virtual exhibitions? How do we take the impact of that on? Yeah, it's a it's a very good question. Um, the, uh, the thing is, in the West, uh, uh, digital is predominant, and then uh, you go to China and other countries. Uh, the entire thing is a display has been made digital. Uh, but if you see in agriculture, this digitization. Uh, is coming up and uh, wherein in our in, in Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, we are setting up a, a digital exhibition hall. Uh, right now we are building it and it's coming up maybe in two years time we'll be setting up. It's success. There is no, I mean, it is 100% successful. All these digital technologies are 100% successful. Only thing is the cost, the cost involved in it. So when capital is uh, given, say, uh, if you watch a sports like a cricket or any other corporate events, you can find all digital digital media tools are being exploited. Why agree in agriculture it is not uh, happening because it is happening in international fairs, but it has to happen in our universities. It has to happen in our farmers fairs. It has to happen in our KVKs. Only thing is it needs capital and it needs experts. Besides tools and
Hello. Any other question? If not, any other questions? I think there are no more questions, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I invite uh, my senior, my friend, Dr. Anand Raja, program coordinator is waiting. I welcome you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for your patient listening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I invite my uh, classmate, Shalish, to uh, introduce the next resource person of the session. Good afternoon, one and all. It's my privilege to introduce Dr. N. Anandaraja to this program. Dr. N. Anandaraja is presently working as program coordinator of ICR TNAU Tirupur. He joined TNAU during 2004 and served in various TNAU institutes for the past 16 years. He has been specialized in ICT, in agriculture, and bagged two prestigious awards on ICR's best postgraduate research awards on Jawaharlal Nehru Award and Young Scientist Award constituted by Indian Science Congress Association from the former president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. And unique and noteworthy contributions are TNAU AgriTech portal, multimedia conferencing facility, dynamic market information, and expert system in agriculture and animal husbandry. He has instrumental to avail best e-governance award to TNAU during 2012 and 2015. He has explored the power and potential of ICT interventions in transfer of farm technology which may be which may accelerate the speed of flow of technology weather data and price information to extension system and finally reach the needy farmers for the for his credit he has published seven books and more than 45 research and popular articles in national and international journals welcome to this program sir and uh, session is over to you sir thank and you. Uh, thank you for that opportunity and uh, dear participants uh, this afternoon session, I think it is very tough to that uh, both uh, uh, the resource persons and as well as the audience. I hope uh, I may not make uh, such a kind of boring. And already my predecessors, uh, Dr. Sendil and others, uh, have shared you about that much of information. And it's my duty uh, to share you that uh, uh, the, the small information what I have been contributed uh, for the past uh, 20 years uh, where I am being served as a, a faculty. Um, shall I share that uh, PPT here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it is visible to you? Yes, it's visible, sir. Yeah. So now you see this, uh, particularly on this pandemic situation, and we are all uh, being confined to our home. We cannot move that uh, outside the world, one or other reasons. And uh, yeah, sorry. One second, please. Yeah. And uh, even we are unable to move, but our uh, learnings uh, never stopped it. That means that even though we are at home or at our office or wherever we are, and thanks to that, uh, the, particularly, you might be heard about that Sam Petroda. He is the father of uh, the IT kind of facilities which we are all enjoying. So he was an advisor of information technology to the former uh, Prime Minister. Dr. Uh, Narsim Rao and as well as Dr. Manmohan Singh. He is a uh, venturesome and an entrepreneur who was born and brought up in India but settled at UK. Again, he back to India and he has uh, all the uh, places you might be seeing that OFC cables, that is optical fiber cable. So he is an instrumental, he is the think tank who established that all the facilities. That's why India now it is being considered as a yeah? superpower in, in IT. We are not only providing that large number of uh, employment to that uh, 
our our educated community we are leader in information technology almost you see either it may be a world bank or it may be an unesco or it may be an undp or anywhere you find indians or or the it persons even even silicon valley our people are dominating on it keeping this background i will come over here yes we are all being that the fraternity of extension we know about that uh, the education is the desirable change in behavioral aspects particularly in the form of knowledge skill and the attitude but we should not stop with this so you see that we are the uh, kind of uh, a kind of agency even even i will tell you that we are kind of a, a, a pathway to connect the research systems and as well as the pharmaceutical systems but of late it is missing even you see that uh, the icar in every year it's an annual report and as well as every state agriculture university it's an annual report only 30 to 35% of the technologies are reaching to the end users where is the gap why it is not happening the reason is that the proper feedback mechanism when we have training and business system even yesterday you see that in our krishi vigyan kendra a representative from all india radio who came over here the big success of green revolution one is the 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 participation of media and as well as the the extension wing where we have really transformed our india into the self sufficiency and you know that uh, before independence we 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 don't have such a kind of infrastructure facility such a kind of things now we again even though we have all kinds of facilities but technologies are not reaching to the end users ultimately the farmers so there is a huge gap on the learning aspects or the we have so much of technology tools at one end and which tool we have to use it and how we are going to use it for education purpose and as well as the technology education purpose at the farmers level we are not able to um, derive out of it so that's why there is a research extension and farmers have to be connected so coming to that our uh, topic i am going to list out a lot of you might be knowing about that zoom meeting you might be knowing about that um, the webex all these known things i won't uh, share it instead of that i would like to go with a little, little bit of different way and what are the different kinds of it it or the ict tools for education what are the different platforms are there and how these uh, the user and what kind of problems and the receiving and what kind of problems how best we may be able to go for it so coming to the first slide or the second slide you are all aware about that what is the difference between it and ict anybody any one of the students or any one of the participants may able to answer it unmute yourself and introduce yourself and you can able to answer it and don't tell that it means information technology and ict means information communication technology could you could you able to elaborate on it anyone are the host or the facilitator please are you on online Yes, sir. Yeah. Anyone? Silence to be broken. Even though we are all virtually connected, but we have to have kind of relationship. So okay, no issue. So the IT as uh, it is a separate degree in that engineering colleges and the the tell, and there is a, in in extension even even contextualization is the definition. that means that you can uh, even you can frame of your, your own definition that's why the the father of uh, participatory approaches robert chambers tells that always you don't go with the confined definition so uh, as per my understanding it means it is the study design development and further improvement on the both hardware and the software components yes you know this hardware it may be a, a any any machine or the desktop which you see it the software where which connect that both the machine and the human interface okay so that is the the definition or the understanding about the what is it it tells what is ict sir it is only that communication is being added and many people have many kind of person in fact morning you might have have that uh, my classmate dr saravanan in fact he is alumni of uh, tnu and as well as vas uh, bangalore and um, many uh, my uh, dr sendil might have shared you or might have used that uh, the terminologies of information communication technology often but it denotes any tool or any device or any gadgets 
or any equipments which you take it these are all that we made your studied these tools equipments machineries and all these things we made your studied in our engineering class but these tools have the future of entering data the data means not only the numerals alphabets or even voice if you able to for example if you take a voice recorder if you able to record the voice it is a entry of information entry of data even you take a, a digital camera where you can uh, enter that images so that is the future of any device which has the future of entering data and it has its own processing for example you take that uh, the camera for example it adjust according to the light whether it is in opposite di direction of sun or whatever it may be or even if you go with the night mode automatically it adjust it and uh, what are the entry of data automatically process it when we take food that is the entry of of information or the system and the processing we may not able to know it how the, the digestion is happening we might be studied that uh, what is that the the small intestine big intestine how these all the parts we might have studied but we may never notice only we know that the taste of the food and it goes down of that our tongue we may not able to know it it automatically it makes the processing then the devices may have that the future of storability for example as i told to you take an a voice record so once you enter the voice even your phone itself you can record the voice then automatically it is processing it saves as a file okay then it is possible to store that information in our systems or in the place then finally you can transmit that information either in the form of output or in the form of delivery so that's why any device any gadgets any tools or equipments machineries which have that functioning of entering of data and processing on its own and the future of possibility of storing that information and it is transmitting that information to the others is being termed as the information and communication technologies so in future you see that uh, there are uh, two uh, three pictures i have given here and you see that there are humpty number of tools for example you take uh, a photocopier or popularly we, we call as xerox machine it is an ict tool or the bus conductor who is giving that the bus tickets by the by the pressing of two button from button and the end button and printing out that is the delivery even if you go to that petrol pump you are you are taking that uh, uh, 200 rupees you want to put a petrol the person is entering the data and the machine it is processing automatically how many liters of the petrol is being pumped it is being stored and as a print out it gives an delivery or gives an sms to you so that's a humpty number of tools are available in ict but often very quite few limited number of tools are being used for our educational purpose exclusively for educating the farmers so that perspective uh, we got to we got to see it so that's why there is a quote in 2030 after the oil we will live off with the knowledge you see that the the, the oil is the one one big resources which are ultimately we are exploiting it once uh, the knowledge is in another another area we got to find it out and another important thing is that how we are going to use this ict tool it lies on our hand how how effectively we are going to use that the ict to ict tool it is in our hand so coming to this uh, my uh, junior friend dr sendil might have shared you that what are the different uh, formal and informal uh, tools of online education just i am not uh, spending too much of time here and if you take that the online learning there are many agencies many organizations are functioning on it even Uh, the norm is working icr is working manage is working igno is providing so much of universities are providing just i will here and there i will touch some of the examples very quickly and you take that uh, the branches it is a distance and the correspondence education now there is an institute galileo institute in italy how many of you i don't know it they are offering a paid course for example 300 us dollar for 24 hours of the duration of uh, Two months. You have to in the two months you have to devote twenty four hours. That means that alternate days of one hour you may able to complete paying of three hundred rupees dollar of monitoring and evaluation. And they are giving that the precision farming and the drip and education. There are so much of tools. Kalilio Institute of Italy and even some of the institutes like if you take that Harvard universities or Oxford universities and very popular universities in India and abroad, they are all offering that web based tutorials. even you know about that um, 
Khan Academy. Khan Academy is the best tutorials ever I have seen in India. And they go with the content, uh, either it may be an, uh, tomorrow Dr. Kadireshan is going to share and he is an expert on these learning management systems and the content management systems, how the learning and how the content has to be there. Even today morning, you might be seen that uh, Dr. Murthy from NAM, he is specialized in education technology, how that the, the, the kind of uh, steps has to be treated. And now you are all knowing about that uh, Google Meet, Zoom Meet, many conferencing tools are there and we are all enjoying audio conferencing. Even on mobile, we have audio conferencing. There are free services and the paid services. Skype, like kind of many, many tools. Okay. Then IITs, Mumbai and IITs, Kanpur and Garakpur, they have started that the MOOC courses. Massive online open source uh, courses. Now it has been catched up by Manage and as well as the NAM and all the state agriculture universities. Particularly these project, World Bank funded projects, what you are all being connected. Our TNA is also got that. They are also developing the lot of uh, MOOCs based courses. There are humpty number of mobile applications. Even though we are all using Android, iPhones, or Symbiances, or many, many system applications. Even yesterday, you see that MacDoot is a, a mobile application introduced by the IMD, Indian Meteorological Department. There are humpty number, even you might be knowing about that the ordering of food. So there are many, many tools. Even, even every banking institute, they have their own kinds of applications. And what we needed is that cross-platform application. That means that I have developed a TNA Agritech portal. It is an open source platform. That portal, if I will go with the laptop, the content should to be fit on to the laptop screen. If I will go with the iPhone, or the, it has to be fit on. If I will go with the tablet, if I will go with the Mac system. So that is called that the cross-platform applications. That is for the, the same content, which is being fit to that any tools, any devices, any gadgets that is called that the cross-platform. For example, some of the devices may not fit. Even, even you see that the Google always announced that it is better you browse in particular browser or any platforms, any devices, any application which comes. So that is the way the cross-platform application comes. So these are the few branches in the online. And this is that uh, the Indian uh, Institute of Open Schooling. And you can log on it. It is one of the best uh, site where you can have that even if you want to study the communication, the basic concepts of communication, every information is available here. Then coming to that uh, hardware online courses, if you go to that online e-learning, hardware.edu, and you can see that the plenty of courses, even, even not only that hardware, you might be knowing about the tech change, Coursera. So these are all the two, two aspects which have the widest reach. Even I am I am studying that as the psychology course from the tech change. And as well as I'm studying that the personality development from the course era, it is freely available. Only thing is that your mind and your time availability, you have to register, and they are, they are providing the free of cost. And this is about that our uh, norm where uh, morning Mr. Uh, Dr. Murthy might have shared you that even I have undergone the course on this e-learning and content development. It is an um, uh, 30 days uh, myself and Dr. Sandil Kumar, we both have been registered and we have got the certificate out of it. And this is that uh, eagree.org. Our uh, university have registered these uh, entire online courses, which is only available in PDF format right now. We got that fund under this National Agricultural Innovation Project. Smart actually we did it is that we have gone to that uh, the UG classroom and as well as the PG classroom, we have recorded that the entire audios of the teachers and as well as student interaction. And we put it through that uh, systems, but ICR doesn't have that such a kind of it was in 2009 that time they don't have that kind of uh, server facilities but it is in offline only that videos but right now only the pdf persons of these courses coming to the, our subject right now i'm touching on it digital education tools for the teachers and the students you i am i am giving you that a very very highly usable tools which are all available here there is an animato you want to you see that uh, if you reach to the kit or if you want to explain the, the botanical uh, botanical aspects or the insects, you have to always go with the animations. 
even for example the processing the change of treatment of colors for example filtrations in the soil change where you are once you add some kinds of chemicals how you have to replicating it so you can use the the animata these are all freely available online teaching tools then edit clipper it is an another beautiful tool where you can connect that the, the kind of things how uh, it is it, the clipper is uh, the climbing the kind means that from the basic to the higher order of information there is a ck12 that is the cent century knowledge 12 it is an another another tool think link it is an another tool these are all uh, you can you can access it then uh, socrative which is very popular in uh, russia and they are all using this uh, high education the storyboard it is like uh, how how earlier when i have studied in the schools we have a drawing master he is a, a moral teacher normally in the evening time he will come over uh, three o'clock and he will take that uh, the drawings for one hour and he will tell you that lot of moral stories that is the way we are all brought the middle age of these uh, citizens in our country now you see that we are all all are um, painted with that so much of whatsapp application so much of video conferencing tools so much of chatting even you might be knowing about that last three four days the hindu newspaper headline is the toolkits that is the tool they have used it to share that or disseminate the information okay then class dojo is an another beautiful tool you might be knowing about that uh, tech education you know about that the video the famous video in usa that uh, all the all the business people eminent speakers are being documented and put. this is an only for education purpose then project this is an another tool then for emotional sometimes we, are, we may be uh, emotional teachers emotional intelligence so edmodo is then the kind of way then canva we transfer pin interest it is an another tool pixeler calendly then schooly edge creations class craft sees are dude these are all that humpty number of tools still that list may go and uh, it is an it is an uh, many countries are using many ways for example in india if you take we are highly famous on the facebook e email is that one social network pole then followed by facebook and the twitter and of, of late we are we may be using that whatsapp but beyond that all our tools are very limited limited purpose so these are all the things which are all going to be uh, the roll round are in the the days to come coming to the learning platform as i told to you we have two kinds of learning platform like uh, the content learning platform or the um, design learning platform and there are uh, many platforms are freely available these are all the platforms which are, which are all freely available there is no need to pay for example even if you want to create a website you need to if you go have to have that gmail account you can go to the google and you can create on it but if you go with that institutions you have to have a kind of uh, ip addresses and you have to register it for the uh, address either it may be a org or it may be a com or it may be a in and and it it, it, it tells so these are all that uh, the learning management systems or the content management systems these are all the different platforms where you may be able to use it skillshare masterclass edx.org coursera as i told to you the coursera and tech change is the the kind of website you, you see that how they are all documenting how much of information even you may not go to that the unit 2 once you complete unit 1 and you have to write your examinations you have to score 50 percent of mark then only you are being admitted to the unit 2 at the end you complete it automatically the pdf of your certificate along with your photographs is being reached okay that kind of facilities are there then teachable think fig kajabi learn dash then active member 360g saw academy academy of mind podio plural site treehouse whistle you see that uh, when we make that whistle cube then rusku then linkedin as you might be knowing that the LinkedIn where uh, many of our students and the scholars building their own biodata searching for the job, then Udemy, Udacity, futurelearning.com, then Membrium, Member Mouse, Learn Words and the Code Academy. These are all the different platforms. You can create the content and you can keep that platform where you can invite the many friends. Even for example, my kids are studying the BSBB Millennium School. They are undergoing that. Uh, the Flip Learn is the platform. 
that means that the the entering uh, the admission itself that principal is asking other do you have systems and do you have the internet connectivity we will send you that all these course content all these materials through the flip plan only so like that the the, the world is moving then i am coming to that few of the popular very popular applications in agri uh, not only on agriculture in general education you might be knowing that uh, even our indian cricket players during the test match they are all wearing the the byju's logo of uh, t-shirt that means that it is an educational technology company where that competitive examinations those who are all preparing for the jee and cat examinations they are all being the big aspirants of byju's vedantu is an another uh, live learning tutorials which is available then vn academy topper unfold you it is an another uh, uh, cohort which is gaining uh, very very popular uh, among the all these iits you can see about the gohus the extra marks particularly in these the us and the europeans you can see the solo learn flip learn these are all the tests i told you flip learn is the platform which is being used by my own kids you see that how these applications are working here and uh, this is an another uh, interesting i have given you the tools given you the platforms given you the applications how you are going to design how you are going to learn it it is in our hand this was the tool you might be learned uh, it was a conceptual ideas or the framework was developed by the edgar dell in 1969 and he came out with their two aspects one is the passive learning another is an active learning how is a passive what is the active now you are all in passive learning situation that means you are not interfacing with me even sometimes if you ask my questions nobody is responding it is a simply when we watch a movie in a cinema theater it is a passive when we see an exhibition without an interaction it is a simply a passive so when i want to interact when i want to reciprocate when i want to discuss that's why it is the online teaching cannot replace the personal teaching or the one to one communications so we hear most of the time either it may be an education purpose or it may be a technology transfer purpose we have humpty number of reading materials printed materials uh, mobile based or uh, um, mail based so much of reading but uh, this he edgar dell uh, who was in usa he developed this concept one of learning he said that if i will give you a 20 page of case study and i ask you to read the case study and i will get back the case study materials after two weeks if i ask a question you may able to recollect only the 10% of the knowledge what you have gained out of it similarly if i will give you an audio a 10 minutes audio you may able to hear it i am withdrawing that audio then after two weeks of time if i will ask some questions you may able to recollect only the 20% of the content in that audio by see like visual exhibitions the a name board and kind of things we may able to recollect 30% that is the seeing behavior and both the audio and video seeing and hearing we may able to have the 50% up to this 50% is totally and passive and for example if i am prepare presenting a discussion and giving a talk if i am making a my own powerpoint presentations i know that even power goes out without the powerpoint support without the any kind of things i may able to make a presentation and extempore for uh, one hour Uh, that is called that uh, or, or 10 minutes we must done i i may able to recollect 70% of the knowledge which i have gained out of it many of the speakers many of the orators you see that uh, in evening tv programs you take all the tv channels there is a panelist if they have that their own talk and they are preparing on it it is it is even when you performing on stage audit if you, if you learn at uh, a cultural activities so it is a 70% the information you may able to recollect after two weeks of time then if you ask me a uh, agritech portal the portal consists of almost around total and of like pages of information what content where it is available and how it is being interfaced because i have been working uh, worked in uh, 2008 to 2016 there were 200 plus manpower who have been devoted to the service i know that each and every page is interfaced so that's why you see that the hindi film star anubham kar or even if you take in tamil k bagi raj or you take uh, uh, t rajender you ask that how this particular scene is being documented what is this movie and how it is they may able to recollect and narrate right now that means that 
they have been fully involved in that activities so where we have to give much of our focus is that we have to give much of our focus for the inviting the students they have to practice it stimulations that's why the artificial intelligence or uh, export systems without any demand if you give that nobody will take up that's why our governments are giving so much of freebies of of curtailing our knowledge nobody should ask any questions you are not freebies okay so we have to change our mindset then coming to that another important five sensory elements which we have taste touch smell sound sight the sight is the one sensory element which has that highest reach and all other sensory elements particularly for the education purpose i am telling you a yes, sound which has only 3.5% smell which doesn't have much of uh, relevance to the our any have uh, 1.5% and touch 1.5% taste is very very minimal so that means that we have to go on much of impressive and elegant way that's why you see that some of our own websites and you look after the talks code website you look after the hard word website you look after that year or even you see the bbc news sites cnn news sites and coming to that our dinatandi or tirumalar our local daily paper you see that how the the pages how elegantly they have been designed okay so that is an another important so coming to that n the virtual for uh, design for the virtual learning these are all the concepts you have to keep it in your mind so the first thing is that when you creating a content you have to have that more of visuals that's why tinu agritech portal you have that more of visuals less of text then you have that podcasting or the audios podcasting is a new concept in in ict where you may able to hear that all these online even now you see that fm radios in online in mobile apps are there so that is called that podcasting where you can have that uh, hear that audio files with the facility of internet then you may able to put it then digital storytelling that is in another way visual art and music these are all that the the kind of 3d animation the kahoot say as i told to you uh, it is an best animation tool where you can incorporate the gog band or the acid music the music so you can go with the multimedia based content the reach will be very high then you have to have the thinking how it should be a thinking tools we have to emulate it should be a problem solving otherwise the people will not be an uh, interest over on it the people will not keep that the same how long you may use that facebook if the same version is there how long you can take that the same food that your hostel and the menu that's why every six months once you are changing your menus okay so similarly if the, the tools are the platforms which has to even you can you can think of robotics you can think of survey some kinds of question given i have shared you that some of the pre test questions whether they, they have shared or not i don't know it but normally i will always go with the the pre testing what is their knowledge level of the audience before i am taking the class then after the i am taking the class then what are the students point of view coming to the e learning the students have that facility of 24 in taxes there is uh, uh, in the classroom if you being absent on a particular class you may not able to take it only thing is that you can copy the notes from the students then there are a lot of social networking Uh, one tool is failure you may able to share it web conferencing wiki is that mobile phone these are all that the forms and the discussion and the chat box these are all the the student friendly the teachers and they have to have lot of learning they have to devote their own time then only they may able to create a such a kind of beautiful content beautiful informations and not only that uh, it is beauty it is a, a kind of uh, knowledge building exercise even bit it is very difficult to share the skill component but thanks to that our uh, video channels and the uh, the videography where we may able to share it the skill aspects also ultimately these all these elements are helping to make the our society and the community as the better thing and where we can have the better learning management aspects coming to that uh, the concerns and the challenges in online teaching learning process for example at the faculty end the faculties even even you see that some of the senior professors doesn't have email account doesn't know about that the whatsapp still they are all using in that uh, 90s mobile phones you see that how they can cope up with the the new system of administration the skill position the practical ability usabilities even i have not learned about that any degree certificates or anything from that uh, Uh, pgda or any computer skill but it is only an interest okay 
then what kind of facilities available in the institute are the the facilities available at his home that that also being we have then handling of numerous tools i have given you that uh, n number of tools which one is the best and there is no study there is no research how these tools are being performing on educating or skill or changing of mindset or the cognitives or the uh, affective domains or the attitude okay the connectivity even some of the places the internet connectivity is the big problems and the power connectivity is still there and how they are going to do it it is difficult then creativity that's why uh, we have a very very uh, less amount of patterns in the world you see that where you have creativity where the novelty comes where the new technology evolves there you may come out the time management even sometimes you see that when the students uh, even the open platform uh, and the the the, the uh, forget about the time and they will continue it okay then control over it is very difficult to control the audience even my son who log on to the online classes and he give that attendance and he give that immediate answers then he will immediately go to the another link and he play the game and put it to the mute okay then assessment and evaluation it is in another toughest time to the teachers and the grade and the teachers health if you putting so much of pressure the mindset the mentality of the teacher you see okay coming to the learner and even you see that uh, everybody you are all in metro cities and um, you think about the the persons coming from the tribals the persons coming from the the vocational stream the persons coming from the the backward class so he has uh, the wage laborers or the or the daily wages sons and daughter it is very difficult to invest for a laptop or a mobile it is it is unaffordable okay so we have to see that the socio economic conditions also then again their level of knowledge how you because in, in kind of these kinds of webinars these kinds of things the english is the common language i am making on it but the first time entering into the college he might be studied in kannada media you think of how he is going to going to pop up with the the regular stream now then again the skill position of the students the facilities at home and as well as the institute and he has to have a basic interest to learn it is very difficult uh, otherwise it is uh, uh, nothing can be built so the students or uh, the persons or end users have to have the interest and again another thing is that connectivity creativity as i told you the same issues in the the teachers time management then attention and the attendance it is an another tough job where uh, even now right now you see that there are 10 people are being connected and i don't know how many of you are sleeping how many of you are really attentive how many of you are giving on it it is very difficult okay then the reading habit and notes even uh, after this session is over it is very difficult to take up the classes and uh, taking of the the notes that is the another important then again the health even continuously you are all wearing that head mask and continuously reading you see about it so for this the institution has to have that the en enabling and the institutional environment that the kind of facilitation is needed then monitoring and evaluation now you see that almost online monitoring online examinations these the facilities are there and the infrastructure and many institutes are using that the proxy versions are the uh, opposite of the licensed version of tools and accessories we have to have all the licensed versions you should not use that any kinds of unlicensed versions tools and these things okay is it replaces the physical classroom or the environment or it is it is uh, up to you how best we are making up uh, making up these uh, for as yes, per my answer is it won't replace the the physical classroom and environment it is very difficult even even we are all built with the culture customs so much of rituals it is very difficult to change we don't know that another 20 years what it is going to be happen but i feel these it and ict tools are complementary and the supplementary tools now you see that robotics and you might be seeing in that lot of uh, aspects coming to the last slide i am feeling on it and you see that uh, the pc takes uh, reach of 1980s internet 90s social media and 2000 platforms and now you see that ai tools blockchains robotics artificial within another 5 years the world is totally being controlled automatically 10 years 20 years back we have to be in the 10 years back you see we all have to be in the bank 
uh, for queue and we have to withdraw the money now you see that smart cards internet phones mobile application all these things are there which is very easy to educate which is very easy to transfer on it okay so this is the world which we are living i am going to stop it and i hope uh, as i feel any session any kinds of activities more than 30 minutes in online is very very tough okay so finally i will final slide and uh, let us let us have the discussions and we will we will spend another uh, 10 15 minutes please unmute yourself and this is an only an yes or no type questions now you tell ict tools are supplementary or complementary in nature Students or the friends, please respond. It is yes or no. Anyone? No, supplementary and complementary. That means uh, it cannot be together. Okay. Yeah, both the ways, sir. Both the way in the sense uh, sometimes it may be a supplementary, sometimes it may be a complementary. So in Corona time, it's a supplementary. So yeah, sub, 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 supplementary in the sense sometimes uh, where the teacher is not available. So you can you can run your video programs. Okay, the complementary is that the PowerPoint where you cannot uh, use that uh, the blackboard. Instead of that, you can you can make the the complementaries. You can you can make that drawings. You can make that uh, the pictures and the post everything, and you can you can go for it. And another second question is that uh, there are n number of n number of tools you might have studied that the class teacher is the tool to educate the behavioral change of the learner. So you have to see the content and you have to then only you may be able to answer it. But actually, this is an wonderful tool. Uh, it is very difficult to change the behaviors. That's why uh, even even it is uh, even in our uh, colloquial way, it is very difficult to bend that uh, the tail of dog. Okay, it is it is very difficult. Even some of the behavior we cannot be changed until our death. So that's why uh, the behavioral change is the the very important aspects uh, as far as our extension is concerned. And uh, it is very difficult to change the behavioral aspects. So if you go over to that the class dojo, you can see it how it builds the behavioral change. Okay, uh, then coming to that uh, the other tools like. Um, Mind class. And the major concern and the challenges in uh, online teaching learning is that diversified socioeconomic conditions in the network. So that is a major concern. The mind class is an industry leading and the cloud-based learning management solutions. So now you see that we are all, uh, we never use that servers uh, right now. Almost everybody is having that three or four uh, servers. Uh, our remote servers are cloud based servers so mind class is in one uh, one tool uh, or one platform where you can keep the, the entire learning management and the creativity and communication are the most essential component building of the online models without creativity without the effective communications it is very difficult okay then another thing another sixth question is it is possible to access that the content and connectivity by 24 into 7 yes we may able to access it vimeo is a, a video sharing platform where you may be able to share that uh, the entire tools, even even access agriculture, you can go to that access agriculture. Uh, it is a beautiful uh, agriculture based, uh, yes, like uh, YouTube channel. You can have that so much of, even you can edit that the video programs in there itself. Design and development of e-learning or the multimedia you have to have combination of modules. Yes, I retreated that there should be a combination one sensory elements alone will not reach. You have to have all the sensories. Then Joomla and Drupal are the, the best content management system in India. It is an open sources. There is no price for it. You can download and you can create your own contents. And what is the video conference is that the two or more location to interact via uh, two or multiple way of video conference or the audio transmission simultaneously is not the video conference. As I indicated in the first slide itself, the missing link in the present day online platform or the missing day link in the extension is the feedback. Many of the time we may not be able to get the right feedback to modify the contents. So uh, uh, actual, whether it is the appreciative feedback or negative feedback, we may not be able to get it. 
then udemy is that a very popular uh, learning platform in the western world you can check off it then animated modules are not easily to create and share it is it is uh, you need an extra energy then only you may able to create it then icit builds cognitive cognitive is the knowledge domain the blue zone is the recent addition in the video conference app you can you can go to that many apps you might be seeing the blue zone is the very recent tool which is available here and you can access it now i am going to stop the presentations i hope uh, within within 45 minutes uh, i may able to deliver few aspects whether i am being sensible or not sensible i don't know if it is uh, your feedback only you may have to tell it and thank you very much uh, dr ganesh murthy and professor krishna murthy sir who have given me the, an, an excellent opportunity to share you that how these different applications tools are helping and uh, facilities so thanks to dr ganesh murthy thank you very much thank you very much sir uh, for delivering wonderful lecture today uh, so now if there are any queries from the students it's open for i can make it now any queries any any questions later to not only on this online any any aspects anything if you wish is a very resourceful person he has worked on different projects and especially the uh, agri tech portals and so he was instrumental behind that he has collected lakhs of pages and then uh, validated also and then it was published and uh, he has a rich experience about even running the pr project after the funding period also they have worked out the ways and means through which they can sustain the projects through different sources within the government sources okay like that uh, we, many times we complain that the ict projects are not sustaining after the project period So regarding that also, you can make some queries if you are having any doubt on that. Any queries? Yes, I am making my justification. Any, any, any one can uh, tell that is is something is uh, learned by you or. Uh, please. Please make queries. I thought one at least one or two queries. He has been presenting for last half an hour or forty-five minutes. For every speaker, if you say that, uh, what to infer, infer from that? As senior PhD students, please respond. Okay, doctor. If you don't have any students, doesn't have any kinds of questions. Thank you very much for the opportunities. Uh, convey our regards and uh, thank you very much to the all the university officers and heads of the department and thanks to the students and the friends if time permits we will meet uh, in some other occasions thank you thank you very much ganesh okay sir thank you very much thank you very much for joining under in the lecture thank you sir thank you
uh so in meantime while the other speaker is ready being is, is coming so you can uh, join through zoom and give uh, your feedback it is the the feedback form is in the chat window of zoom so please everyone join through zoom and give your feedback thank you the speaker will be joining us in 5 minutes So, hello, welcome, sir. Good evening, uh, sir. Uh, PowerPoint. Okay, we'll start, uh, sir. On five minutes, sir. Tea break you have given. Uh, uh, just no five, problem. Five minutes, okay, no, no problem, no problem. If uh, sir, you're not able to provide you online tea. Uh, no problem. Doesn't matter. Thank you. Thanks. No I, I think uh, uh, I can I can interact with Santil, sir. By that time. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. 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 Namaskar, Namaskar. You're looking smart. Very looking smart. Your, your session over. Huh? Just now your session no, was no, over. No, no, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, sir. Tomorrow. tomorrow is your session. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Very good. Namaskar. How are you, sir? How are you, sir? Fine. fine, fine, sir. I have seen the schedule. Your name was there. But I yeah, was not yeah. recollecting. It, it is tomorrow, sir. Today, okay. just I wanted to know. So, what are the contents that are being provided so that I can uh, arrange accordingly tomorrow? Right, right. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. Uh -huh. Something he is making a program over Ganesh Murthy. Ah, ah. Okay, good. He is very active. He is very active. Good. Nice. <clears throat> very nice. Mm. So, how is college, your BHU? It's fine. Uh, sir, today onwards, we are reopening for uh, second year MSc students. Okay. And uh, fourth year BSCAG students. Okay. And uh, rest of them will continue with online. Oh. And uh, university will take the decision. In due course okay. of time to open for uh, other rest of the other, batches. other batches. Fine, fine. So this is the latest update, sir. Okay, good. We mm -hmm. are waiting for the arrival of our new vice chancellor. Oh, on sir. 8th oh. March. 
Okay, okay. Presently, so, we don't have. Presently, we don't have VC now. No, no, no. We have his uh, salary is going to be over by twenty eighth of March. Okay. So by then uh, means now we are in a transition phase. You can say. Okay. So uh, just we are we are waiting for the arrival of new vice chancellor. Okay, 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 okay. According to the news, uh, more than six hundred people applied for the position. Ah. And uh, uh, scrutiny and selection process is going on. Okay. Six hundred. Six hundred people are applied. Huh? Oh, very. Six uh, hundred plus. Six hundred oh. plus. Hmm. And uh, the selection uh, committee member is uh, one of the member is from uh, Andhra. Okay. The vice chancellor of uh, Central University of Andhra or so. Okay. 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 Suresh, okay. Suresh Kumar or so. Suresh Kumar. Okay. Fine. Hmm. Hmm. So means uh, Telangana is having a say. in the selection of vice chancellor of banaras university you yeah, are fine mm. you are sitting in such a powerful place you know uh, i okay very nice but i may be sitting in a power place but i don't have any power <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah just on the lighter side lighter side good good nice we need, we don't we don't need power also in fact we are all <laughs> professionals it's comfortable we are there. See, now this position is very most comfortable for us now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how about Nam sir? When you are opening up? Nam already opened. No, no, no. Opening means uh, uh, the uh, training. Offline training sessions. Ah, uh, offline uh, training we didn't start, eh? uh, but yeah. uh, the PGD and post graduation program has started already. Students, Achha, students. Students. Uh, Online or offline? No, no, offline. Online. They are personally they are here. Even we completed four course training also. No, in completely three months they were here four course. Okay, 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 okay. Uh -huh. so, only only part the training program we have not yet started. Probably maybe after April next academic year may may probably we may start. We are eagerly waiting for to go offline, sir, everywhere. Ah, uh -huh. because we are tied up for last one year. The tied up and it, it's not giving any type of you know it's not comfortable. We are not comfortable also. <laughs> we are not comfortable with this online program. It's not. Definitely. It's not happy that something we are <laughs> uh, completing our target. It looks like we are target target oriented one. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> There is no interaction. Uh, no face to face. Yeah. Otherwise, would have met Bangalore uh, in in Bangalore today and tomorrow. Ah, we, ah, there is a lot of fund. This fund is available <laughs> under this project for you, actually. Yeah, correct. <laughs> But we are missing so many opportunities, you know. Yes, true. I am also missing to come to yeah. Arunachal. <laughs> hmm. Okay, sir. Okay, I'll just complete it one file, small file. Okay, 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 okay sir. Please, I'll please, please. Anytime when they join it today, one, okay. one, 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 one response I have to do it for one mail.
हेलो सर सर आई वेलकम यू बैक इन द सेशन नाउ द टी ब्रेक इज ओवर सो इट्स माय प्लेजर टू इंट्रोड्यूस यू सर डॉक्टर एस सेंथिल विंगयाम एंड ही स्टार्टेड हिज करियर इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी वन एज प्रोग्राम ऑफिसर एट जोनल कोऑर्डिनेटिंग यूनिट आई सी आर बैंगलोर फॉर नाइन ईयर्स एंड सीनियर साइंटिस्ट एट इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइन एट सी आर कटक एंड NRC for soybean indoor for 8 years later he worked as faculty head at Rajiv Gandhi National Institute for Youth Development Chennai for short period during 2007 and moved moved in moved to NIRD yes, Hyderabad in 2007 as a professor and project director for 4 years followed by director at manage Hyderabad for three years on deputation. On complete on completion of his deputation, he worked as principal scientist at Directorate of Sorghum Research for one year, and now working at NARM. He is deputy. He was deputed to South Africa, Kenya, Liberia, Malawi, uh, Afghanistan as an expert for sharing Indian experiences on agriculture and rural development. His area of interest include capacity building, inter entrepreneurship development, project management, monitoring and evaluation of extension project, agri agri business. management participatory approaches for agriculture and rural development i welcome you sir the session is now over to you sir thank you thank you so kind of you uh, thanks for the welcoming me uh, very uh, very grateful to uh, us bangalore because i was a little alumni of that to your university uh, us bangalore quite long back 1990 uh, 1990 1990 i was there as a student in the phd scholar for short period Uh, later afterwards i joined in icer okay one time during the time trimester was there so i was the i have done one trimester in one your university later i discontinued and joined in icer when i got the position thank you so kind of you <clears throat> okay now my topic is on the communication skill and competency enhancement for digital teaching so this is a topic given by your uh, institution so first let me talk about the competency because competency required in all areas so let me talk about competency management what is the competency uh, what level it is required it and some aspect related to the communication skill and on the digital teaching so these are the three areas actually this topic is been will be covered uh, for you uh friends uh, all of you know that uh, mr our uh, who has done in it revolution actually today he got all the information technology today we talk about ict uh, our strength of our computer science uh, our mr yanar narayan murthy uh, he always he has given a statement that i have always looked at my competencies before accepting my responsibility uh, it means uh then uh, what he is uh, it understand very easy meaning that we whatever the job it has been given to you now as a student whether you are a student or you are a faculty or you are a, a director or you are a professor head whatever may be the position right everything is your own status now you are a student when you are as a student right when you are taking a responsibility as a student you should understand about what are the competencies required for you as a it at your level if you are if you are having that competency when you take that responsibility you will be able to succeed in his uh, in, the, in the career the similar the similar thing mr narayan murthy said it that when the responsibility given to him first let you let you will understand that what are the competency required for that particular responsibility then he take the net it has become the success for his that is his success mantra so in our case in some cases we suppose if you are not having competency it is that there is a scope for enhancing your competency for example now you are joined as a student you can enhance your competency so let us understand what do you mean by competency so uh, when we are using competency in the meaning that it is a three things has to be uh, important for you it is a combination of your knowledge your skill and attitude so you when you are a student now if you are a student your competency can be enhanced they see among we are all the students of your your batch right Uh, you if you somebody wants to excel in there or somebody wants to uh, go in a very high level right somebody want to be at the competitive level it was, he has to be in the three aspect he has to process it one is his knowledge level his knowledge has to be enhanced his skill has to be enhanced and his attitude towards uh, whether that subject or towards the person attitude towards the aspect 
he has to make it so the the positive attitude towards the uh, particular profession make you to be in competency for example now if i assume that if i am considered as a professor in this position or as a principal scientist here my knowledge level my skill and my attitude towards this particular job has to be enhanced i have to acquire it i have to acquire it to if, i have to acquire it so by having those information those aspect three aspect only i can perform my position in excellent extremely well so it is the combination of knowledge skill and attitude which enable the individual or the group of individual to perform the work to define standard so the expected level can be approved when you improve the three aspect please remember we call knowledge skill and attitude so the your competency of the any every job for if you take it as a if any faculty or if you take as a, any position for every level what are the competency required for it has been mentioned if you are a student what is the competency required for students it has been clearly indicated it right as a student you are supposed to have a no you are supposed to have the time management you are supposed to have a scholarly student you are supposed to have a, a subject knowledge in all the areas you should be very sincere in submitting your assignments or uh, workbook this all your this all your job this job if you are doing perfectly and you are a competent student you are the very your competency has been explained this is what the competency says so to reach your enhance your competency there are six levels uh, one one has to reach it to have to bring to the the competence level the level one we call aware of competency it means when you are joining as if as for when i will consider you as a student now so when you are joining your bsc agriculture at your in us bangalore so you should aware of it that's called level 1 what is the aware of it you will be and yes now i am going to join as a first year bsc agri student so what are things i am supposed to learn aware of the competency yes i have to take care of it i have to be probably there will be a practicals there will be an assignment there will be a, a regular classes there will be a morning there will be a practical session field work will be there these are the thing you should have aware of it so before entering into the joining organizing uh, organization if you understand what are things for example now you are finally a student somebody might have got a placement or somebody is getting a job in a bank or some other places you please make yourself aware aware of that okay if i get a position of an agriculture officer my roles will be what are the i have to be the field work i have to contact the farmer i should develop the communication skill i should these are things you should have aware of it right that's why so you make a list of the things and you understand it when you understand it first awareness itself will create lot of knowledge to you number 2 the second level so once you join it in the aspect then what you will understand you will be learning based on awareness you will start learning basic knowledge basic skill you will be understanding it you know how to talk how to express how to take a note down it how to take the records how to write the record notebook how to submit it in a better form right in this time what happen you will be need of your some type of your seniors or some type of a a seniors or an officer or who will be supervising you and he will be helping you during the time you will be able to acquire your skill in the second time the third stage stage is called you are, you have reached the stage in which you, you don't need any type of senior only only you need occasionally that once in a year six months or once in a two months only somebody will come and see you that yes now you are picked up you are you are occasional supervision we call that and he will come and see that the fourth stage called for that stage when you are coming into the second year or third year what happen you will be know that you don't need any type of uh, supervision you have exceeded the skill level no need to supervise for you so okay, nobody is required for you you are individually you are able to do all the work you are able to do the practicals you are able to do your no, theoretical examination very well you you don't need any type of support system or no need of any type of supervision by any of the people so you have become an independent at the in that stage called advanced skill stage that stage called advanced skill stage the fifth stage is called the, the you are the, for example you are in that case you are coming like a final year students there or fourth year so that's called master master of the bs agriculture here now what is the advantage here you are able to supervise or you are able to guide the first year students here you are you become a leader you become a supervisor and you are able to train the the person first year student who are coming it the who are entering into the stage that is called master stage the sixth stage called expert since in this stage you are coming out from the your bs agriculture 
you have become you 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 have got your degree and now you become a, a, a exclusively in an agriculture graduate and you are able to provide lot of support to the farming community and you become an expert you may be an expert in some of the area sometime you may be an expert in an organic farming you will be expert in a, a soil a soil aspect or you may be an expert in in pathology maybe with the bs agriculture itself you become in some expert in some of the domain areas or you may be an expert in the different areas also not only single area that time to people will call you as a competent person so to reach this for example with this i have given as an example as a student for you that level 1 to level 6 there are many stages so that we expect that every student of the bs agriculture when you are completing your four final year student right when you are coming you should be a competent student your your competency level has to be fulfilled you should be a, a competent bs agriculture graduate and you will be get you, you should be able to get a right job as per your qualification and you should be able to provide some support to the farming community so this is what called the competency level so level 1 onwards one has to acquire lot of competency level have to be acquired your skill has to be your knowledge your skill and attitude this all three are required to reach to the the final stage that is called in the competency stages and the there are another terminology called capacity so there is there is a little difference between competency some sometimes your students may be using the word called uh, he is having very good capacity sometimes we are using that competence so these two are little little different meaning so competency is the uh, which i told that knowledge skill and attitude but if a person is able to do the job right using his competency then he is called the capacity so capacity is the ability of individual to use his competency right so it means now once you are completing your bs agriculture and you are, you have become a competent person now you have to use your competency aspect in the practical field you have to meet your farmer or you have to get some particular job or you have to get an a uh, master degree in agriculture you have to get a jr of junior research fellow so there you are your capacity has been shown so a competency has to be expressed in the way of capacity by, by showing your capacity you will be able to express your competency in the different domains of that so this is the ones which is a minor difference so and normally when you are uh, having a competency so in the selection process there are when you are trying for some job right the the selection models are there are two type of competency models are there which will normally we will apply in the selection process one model called cake make bear model it is called behavioral competency model so called k make bear model another one model called dacum model k make bear it says that here they consider when you are in when you are appearing for an interview or something people will consider behavior is the only one when you are entering into the field for example you are entering into the a position when you are trying for some job uh, right when you have been called for an interview the people will see the your behavioral approach and when you are when we are make making an interview with you how your behavioral is answer your behavior aspect will uh, responsible so based on the behavioral aspect they will select it later they will give you technical support to you so that is model called hay make bear model it is in this column the behaviors are the driving force behind the individual ability to perform therefore behavioral assessment is an important indicator so this some of the private companies nowadays if you look into some of the private company they look about private uh, on the behavioral aspect and how the person is uh, you know re responding to our interview board right how he, we can give a, a separate training to him later he can become a, he can change it so they they look on so that is called behavioral competency which is otherwise called may hay medber model but normally in india system we follow the second model called dacu model dacu model is nothing but here they consider as a role assessment suppose if by by giving a post called an agriculture officer to you or by giving a position as a bank officer to you how you will work so the role assessment will be uh, uh, taken it role assessment and functional assessment based on his technical expertise besides behavior so here in this model they will assess your knowledge level your subject knowledge suppose if you are been uh, recruited by you are been att attending interview for bank post right they will be reviewing about your uh, your aptitude towards that or by giving some type of roles and responsibility subject matter will be evaluated here 
technical knowledge will be evaluated here and in addition to that they will also see your behavioral aspect so indian situations indian uh, companies or organizations uh, we follow the model called dapu model so so when you when you have been called for any type of selection process or anything any interview you please have the the model will be applicable to us is called dapu model that they will understand they will study about your subject knowledge and also your behavior so that's why when you are attending for interview we, uh, in indian situations we follow the dapu model when we have been called for an interview we see your subject we ask lot of questions either a questions have been asked from subject or some type of multiple choice questions or question paper has been given they will evaluate based on that then there will be an interview during the interview we, they will also see your behavioral aspect of that right behavioral aspect so that model called dapu model so you have to be get ready for dapu model selection in the places so so to develop your competency what i have meant that's what competence development based on that that i have made the now the list of thing so first one is called identify the job what job what is the your job position which you are trying for it and conduct the job task analysis suppose if i give the some job how you will perform right suppose if you are given the job of the agriculture officer how you will perform they will look into that the third aspect called what are the rcl it's called required competency level if i give if i if i give the competency to you if you give the job to you or what are the competency required for a particular job we will assess it right and uh, the if you are lacking on some of the competency then they will be sending for training that is called established competency gap for example uh, say now you are attending a training program under this program in this program why what why they have been deputed for a training program they have identified there are some competency has to be fulfilled there are some of the competency has to be addressed to you people so they have mentioned establish the competency gap this competence gap can be filled through training exposure visit conducting uh, making them to different or institutional visit by that they will acquire the competency level then for that they will identify good number of training program wherein they will be sending you now you are attending a training program it's nothing but fulfilling the some of the competency which is required for you then after attending the training program you are you are, the organization will start assigning the uh, work to you right now you undergone the training so you will be you have to do this particular job for it then there's called validating the competency validating means verification that yes whatever the training you have undergone have you are you able to uh, are you able to produce same output or still you are having any gap on that then they will see that how an individual competency has been uh, worked up based on that only you have been considered as a competent person so this is what yeah competency of the process of competency has been identified so if you attain all these percents then we call as a person is a competent person so how do you call it? a person is said to be a competent when he, he or she is assessed by a trained assessor right somebody is the expert on that subject for example you you have been uh, you have been considered as an uh, organic farming uh, expert it been another organic farm expert has to judge you that yes he is the right person for organic farming from that right so that so that is those person only will be selecting you or considering you as a you are a competent person in particular aspect so a person is a competent when he is assessed by a trained assessor and is found to have demonstrated and required competencies his behavioral and role functions are very very good if they identified they are called competent person so now uh the, the, now you could be able to understand what do you mean by competency uh, of that so uh, dear friends now i have told about competency required for you in in all the areas so far you have been you are you are the student here probably i could not get your introduction there was less time for it otherwise i would have interviewed with you and i would have selected some of the names i would have asked lot of questions to you what you learned it so what now i so far what i have given to you that competency is most important for everybody you should become a competent person to become a competent person you have to acquire the knowledge skill and attitude to have a knowledge to acquire knowledge you are subjects you have to be very thorough on that you have to develop a skill to do skill always it's like a practice oriented right you have to you should have a skill towards that and third important aspect your attitude is towards to learn attitude towards to work 
these three will make you to become a competent for that i have given a lot of steps to you that you how do you become a competent person i have given that six stages i have given that you have to aware of that and you need somebody support later without support how you will do then you how how you will become a competent person competent person when one say another competent person in that subject domain only will be saying that you are a competent person for it so to acquire the competency any gap anybody is finding it we will send them for a training program we will send them for exposure visit we will identify where you are required for example uh, you you don't have competency in taking a good photograph in the field oriented so then they will be sending to you a, 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 a video unit or photograph unit to have a good how to take good photograph some of the people are not familiar with the in in the in computer system some of the new software so we will be sending to them as a computer training for particular software training to them there you will acquire the competency so this is the role of the officer officer who will be identifying the what is the gap is required what is the competency is lacking they will identify based on the competence level the uh, competence mapping is uh, have been worked out that's called we call competence mapping mapping mean we will identify what are the competencies required for a person and uh, identify for it so anybody can uh, recollect what i said it somebody can come forward one of you can speak now please give a feedback about my uh, first one one to two minutes kindly re, uh, add, recap it volunteers i i am bringing water please just a minute okay anybody can uh, what do you mean by competency student student please what, what do you mean by competency ability to do something successfully or efficiently good for that very good for that what are the things are required i told th three components are very important to be a competent which are things tell me knowledge please answer which are the three things are required to become a competent person please answer before i proceed for communication skill i need the answer from you volunteer knowledge skills attitude and knowledge skill and attitude there are three are required to become a competent person right thank you now now we are going for how do you enhance your competency in communication skill right so you have studied extensive subject what do you mean by communication what do you mean by communication yes what do you mean by communication exchanging information by speaking writing very good very good how many people are how many people are required for a communication aspect minimum two people minimum two people very nice very good very good right now so here to make your uh, very good communicator to suppose somebody wants to be a good communication the main important quality is required for a person is listening listening is most important right now i asked a question to you and you answer to me so it means you listen so listening is most important for the the basic things required for the communication for so god has given it two years to us two years so what i what has been written in this powerpoint slide somebody can read what is written in the slide two and one two and one what is the meaning of two and one Two years. What do you mean by no? Can you read out the read the last line down the line? Two years are given for what? Listen twice. Listen twice. As much we speak. So to make you a very good communicator, if you if if anybody wants to be a good communicator. suppose in interview when you are attending in some place if you are if your communication is very perfect if you are expecting it you should be able to, you should listen the questions properly 
right you god has given the two years to us right not for getting years and not for uh, not for just hearing hearing this one and passing on to others not that you hear both you listen twice you listen twice and then you speak then there will be a so listening is the most important aspect for a, a good competitor so how do you make it very good listener there are four basic principles are there suppose in in a, in a, in a group of students for example you are one of the leader you leader this you are the leader in your classroom right and uh, there may be around 30 or 40 students are surrounded by you right but you should if you want to be a really a good leader and you have to be a good communicator also right to have a good communicator you have to be a, a good listener first then your communication will be an answer your your communication will be clear to all so how do you become a good listener there are four basic principles are there one is called listening with empathy right listening with empathy empathy in the means you consider yourself also in their field means you are also a student leader don't consider as a leader now you consider as a student yourself you keep yourself in their shoes their problem also it's your problem you consider that then you you will be listening here properly so consider somebody's issue as your own issue then it is you will listen properly number one that is the first principle that is called listening with empathy second is called listening with openness so as a leader when you are listening from other student don't have any predetermined ideas let's say perceived ideas no no my this my these students are very always will give a wrong information they will be telling the you know they will be giving a lot of rumors don't have any type of message in your mind right you please hear anything from other person as a openness right that's so openly you discuss with them then you will be a good listener the third pr- principle is listening with awareness so you listen you as if you are hearing that problem as a first time you are listening as an awareness just as if you are you may be aware of earlier also but don't show that you are aware of it somebody is talking something yes sir yes, i know uh, i know i know this case i you need not tell don't say like that if you are leader don't interfere when somebody is presenting you somebody is discussing with you so listen with awareness listen with a openness then listening actively actively in the sense you have to participate in the discussion oh right yes agreed you you participate you participate in the discussion then what happen you will become an active listener otherwise what happen your mind will be somebody will be talking with you something and you will be thinking something for example even among the your students also now some few may be attending my class may be hearing it somebody's mind may be in different it means he is not actively is listening his classroom he may be thinking about so uh, evening tea he is thinking about night dinner or the thinking about his own friends that means they are not listening actively right they are listening passively so we want active listener if you are the four aspects of somebody is having who, who will be called good listener so good listener is very very important for a good communicator so the basic principle for communication start from good listener that's what i would like to make it for here so communication as somebody was telling that exchange of information exchange of ideas right so whether communication here here there are, which i written around some three points here you look at that speaking and listening right it is in a communication you somebody is listening and somebody is speaking it right and writing and reading is also a communication when you write letter to somebody that is also communication when somebody is reading your letter that is also a communication happen that he by reading that he is understood some of the aspect there also communication happen some type of actions some type of now i am showing my hands right i am showing my thumb some type of assigning you know, action sign code you are when you are when you are going to the you know some of the roads there is a u turn is indicated right turn left turn in the traffic places only signal boards are there they have not written that you have to make right turn or left turn they have given only direction the direction says that it is the communicate it is communicating to you that this is the straight road this is the left road this is the right side you have to go so action signs code this all communication only so communication not necessarily that only the about speaking it can be in writing it can be reading it can be you know action it can be sign it can be code okay so this can be any of the aspect so the communication we can make it in the two types one is called indirect communication another one is called direct communication 
direct communication means now i am talking with you as in a classroom situation right assume that uh, you are all in front of me now so i am doing the classroom situation. it's called direct communication only you that 30 or 40 students are there i am taking the classes to you and another one is indirect communication wherein my lecture has been already recorded and the recorded version is been shown for example some of the movies when you are seeing them these are recorded communication it's already recorded and it is been retelecasted many times it's a recorded and broadcasted right there are tv some channels are there tv some of the agricultural films have been shown agricultural activities have been shown somebody's my lecture can be recorded and uh, and given broadcasted that is called indirect communication so direct communication indirect communication to communication which we have it on that okay. so these are the in the communication aspect whether you are listening uh, the, these are these are the very important communication skills which you have enhanced the competency which i told you competency means knowledge skill and attitude now i am coming to that those competence may which are the communication skill has to be increased there are communication skills are these are the which i indicated here there are receptive skill expressive skill and processing skill these all very important for a for a communication these are called communication skill receptive skill means you should be able to receive when now i am taking the class to you you should be able to listen you should be able to listen and you should be able to read my powerpoint right and you are able to observe in some of the practicals you know you will be observing you are observing some type of specimens right observing some of the, the pathology some of the diseases some of the leaves you will be seeing some of the pest you will be seeing it observation this observation will be giving to you in your mind it is called receptive skills it is called receptive skill so receptive skills it, it can be enhanced through listening reading and observation right listening reading and observing the things you are receptive skill many times we ask you to observe the things so by once you observe the things you will be able to remember recollect lot right some of the practical and all we will be giving observation things to you and that will make you to your receptive capacity to be increased second important skill is called expressive skill now i am talking in front of you that i am expressing to you so here in the expression it may be in the speaking or it may be i am writing in a board or something like that i am scribbling to you which it's also expressing skill and non verbal my movement my which are the non verbal you may be knowing that lot of body movement hand movement eye movement these all called express non verbal skill these all call which which make as a expressive skills these all called expressive skill and the third important skills are for the communication skill to be is called processing skill it means it's related to your mind now well now i am delivering the class to you how many of you are taking down notes we have no idea about it you will suppose if you are taking notes and you will be start thinking it what topics are is talking it you will make a point which is a point to be written you may not be writing all the points you will think you analyze and you make a decision which are which are the important points you have to take down notes that is called your mind processing like so to there are these are the three uh, skills are very important receptive skills expressive skill and process skill which will enhance your communication skills so now if you are a, you are a student you are going to be in an in an agriculture officer or you are going to be in a bank officer or you are going to be a scientist you also supposed to have this three aspect of them receptive skill expressive skill process skill that three skills will enhance your communication skills and enhance so it may in the in the uh, we, we, we teachers used to give a lot of no um, library classes to you when you go to library what happen you will read so when once you read it what happen your skill of the processing skill is increased you will make it to read more and you will think and read and you make a note of the important points you will make it your mind process is more important and your mind process and you will analyze which are the points are very important to be taken as a note which are not required it so you will be making an analysis and you make a decision so when when the exam question papers are given now your process skill works on that right you will think you analyze and you make a decision yes this is a five marks question i should be able to write this many answers this many words i have to write it so you have to think you have to analyze and, and you are communicating in the your answer sheets you are communicating in the your answer sheets that's all so these are the three important aspect receptive skill expressive skill and process skill it all can be improved by these are the aspect so if you want receptive skill to improve you should be the listener reader and you have to have lot of observation capacity 
and you should have speaking and writing and non verbal make you to good expression skill and process skill think analyze and decision making will make it as a process skill so you this competency of your communication skill can be enhanced by having this all three aspect of them so the type of communication which we can have it two types one is called oral communication another one is called right written communication oral mean which i am talking now with you oral it may be a verbal or it can be a non verbal what do you mean by verbal verbal in the means words which i am using the words now i am taking the class to you it's a totally verbal communication non verbal communication where there is no words only actions are there right non without there is no words are available but there will be a only non verbal that is called other than other than verbal other than words it is called non verbal so in the verbal communication there are three types of communications are there three type of com one is called passive communication one is another one is called aggressive communication another one is called assertive communication right so this three co comes under the verbal communication aspect verbal means words communication passive communication means uh, what it means the if i am i am if i am the head of the department and you are coming and asking some type of leave permission sir tomorrow i don't want right examination tomorrow i have a um, a, a match or between uh, juniors and seniors we have a match tomorrow it's very difficult for me to write examination so that may be your request so you assume that i am a passive communicator so what i will answer to you i will not give you the correct answer to you yes you please go for play yes you i will allow you to skip examination you please you may what i will do i will not answer to you i will keep my answer in a very silent way i will not see your face directly i will show my eyes in the down right i will not see your face to face contact i will not answer i will see that oh it is up to you to think you decide what is to be done i am not i am not, i will not say anything on this aspect whether tomorrow is examination you decide whether exam is important or your sports are important you decide it and you people you knows better than me you are here for last 4 years and you know the all the all the teachers what are the uh, things are here so everything you will be jump on me so you you got this uh, communication called passive communicator passive communicator so here you will not get the answer from me that the, the, the you are you come you are, you are you came to me for a particular purpose but you didn't get an answer for it that is called passive communicator aggressive communicator means the word name itself you know that it is a very anger man he will be very very angry that as soon as you come and ask that sir tomorrow my examination has to be postponed i have a, i have a game for the same thing and if i am aggressive communicator i will shout i will raise my voice right my eye my eye will be burning eyes will be if you see my eyes you will have a fear right and i will speak very bold way i will speak in a very different languages i am using so that is called aggressive communicator assertive communication is there another communication here what happened uh, yes acha you have exam tomorrow you have exam you have a tomorrow you have the game also so what what time when your game will be over it will be over by evening or a forenoon game okay forenoon game so afternoon whether it is possible to you write examination after 4 o'clock i will come specifically for you to write examination can you complete it tomorrow or day after tomorrow early morning can you come and i am giving lot of option to you to make it which is uh, which is the convenient for both of you so i i, I want to solve your problem in this process what happen i will have a direct eye contact i will be able to speak your answer to you properly and you will be able to get a solution for it right so so then which is the communication is the I mean, which communicator is the best communicator here please answer from you whether passive or aggressive or assertive volunteers Assertive communication. Thank you. So, you 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 should develop a habit of, you should have a develop the habit of bringing you as in a assertive communicator. Assertive communication means you have you hear the issues. Some whoever comes to you that what are the problems they come to you. So you may be a student leader, right? Or you may be a, a person and then somebody coming with you with some problems to solve to you. you should behave like an assertive communicator you hear the new hear the aspect and find a solution what extent you can help him instead of giving a passive 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 many people try to be a passive communicator they want they want to avoid the risk 
right why you should take risk for conducting examination again i have to do the second time i have to fix a question paper again for you why you should take a risk or somebody will be questioning me i i don't i and moreover the passive communicator will not bother about the relationship right whether you whether you 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 have you like me or not i am not bother about and so he is a different nature he will not see the eye contact so always you please remember that eye contact directly whoever speaks on direct eye to eye those people are you can believe somebody is talking with you without seeing your eyes contact direct eye, you cannot believe they have they will not have a trustworthiness on them so these are the three aspects of verbal communication please remember it of aspect, aspect. so non verbal means non verbal which i told that is other than words no words are there but even in a non verbal also there are some small small words are expressed in that small words that word which are the words ha ha ho ho these are the words also some sounds are expressed but not the word if you are able to you are seeing some of the meanings in the dictionary you will not find a meaning for those type of words are there so the study of non verbal communication here it is depends on the depends on the how much distant physical behavior vocal cues and spatial relationship so non verbal is behavior is been designed designed based on our physical movement body movement right and your vocal cues ha o q right and the spatial relationship distance maintaining about how much distance you are maintaining between an individual to individual for example your mother we can make a spatial relationship uh, in a in the four column which i will be talking in spatial relationship means sorry spatial relationship means depends on the distance for example your mother and baby right here they they call, call intimate zone we call means your mother and baby will be placing with only one and a half feet distance right one and a half feet distance your mother and baby will have a communication mother will speak and baby will laugh and when the baby cries mother will understand this cry is for what what for she is crying he is crying the baby is crying whether it is having food or it is for the stomach pain or anything baby mother will understand it that is called intimate zone we call it right and there are some of the zone wherein the class teachers are there that there are so we maintain the 4 to 12 feet distance in the auditorium we will make maintain the more than 12 feet distance so based on the distance also we will make a spatial relationship and we communicate them so um, in the non verbal communication these all the uh, in the non verbal of 100% of your communication now 100% if you consider as a non verbal in which there will be a 7% will be some type of words right hello who how these are the words are there it is called 7% is the verbal and 38% depends on your volume now i am taking your class now probably your everybody is audible so it means my volume is correct your pitch rhythm how how flow i am taking the classes very i am taking very fast or i am taking very slow or i am making a arithmetic the classes so the 38% it depends on the vocal which is 38% of your non verbal depends on the vocal remaining 55% it depends on the per, your percent with the body movement your 55% is based on the your body movement how you are keeping your body your bo entire body in front of others so that is more important that's called 55% you are keeping it so so in the non verbal major contribution is from the your body movement so in a, in a classroom situation non verbal will have a more values when you are taking classes to anybody or when you are talking with somebody that your words will have only 35% only a contribution remaining 65% is depends on your body movement only will suppose somebody is taking class your class teacher right your is subject will be delivered only will contribute only 35% but how he stands in front of you and how he talks with you that makes around 50 65% that is what which is called in the whole communication in in the both verbal and non verbal when you combine 65% non verbal and 35% verbal will consider yeah only non verbal will be considered as 100% there in 55% which goes for your body movement which are called body movements now so um, so in the body movement the very important aspect called eye contact so i how 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 extend you are having which i told you that always a direct eye contact direct eye contact will help you to arouse the interest direct eye contact will help the people to stimulate to ask questions and will listen somebody now now 
you i have a direct contact with you for example in a classroom situation if i talk directly or in my contact you you with the, the individual will be interested to ask lot of questions and it will be it will be also interesting for a teacher that my flow of communication will be go very fast where it will go very well if i have a different type of eye contact my eye contact will have in a negative in nature right i am looking you in in a different angle then my my communication flow will will not be a, a very smooth flow i will not be able to take a classes regularly so that is called so that that contact has to be avoided so always direct eye contact will help you for a good eye contact good, good communication aspect so that's one aspect similarly your face when you are when you are attending any training program or when you are attending any interview program or when you are talking with somebody people will see our face the way you are seen eye contact your face also more important total face so the face what they have indicated is around 80 muscles are there we have around 80 muscles which is expressing around 7000 expression which is making it 7000 expressions are there from your face so kindly keep your face is in always will be somebody is looking your face so that more important of it right so facial expression you have 80 80 muscles in your face which is expressing around 7000 yes, expression normally how many expression which are the our facial expression somebody can tell me how, what are the facial expression expression volunteers volunteer which are the facial expressions some example yes what are the thing your face can express volunteers no ah laughing very good next anama ana i am not hearing anger anger very very good very good which are the face which are the things we our face can express hi thank you sir you are no your happiness your sorrow your anger everything can your face can understand somebody is seeing your face immediately they will say why today you are happy your face looks very happy today why you are looking very sad what happened to you today we are smiling we are smiling. your face is having a lot of smile and somebody will have surprise for example among you somebody has got a, a gold medal today some news has come that you have got some gold medal then there will be surprise on your face so there your face is expressing lot so face is most important when you are communicating to others so that's why you have to keep always your face is a very you know, charm and you have to keep very smiling so that people will be enjoying your you know your your presentation right so facial muscles produce varying expression right emotion mood ideas everything can understand from your facial expression and your emotional expressions are the primary the how you are emotionally we are expressing that is the primary result of your facial muscle how you are taken the emotion your emotion has been the way of jolly your emotion in the form of you know happiness your emotion in the form of surpriseness this all will come in the facial expression this all will come in the facial expression so you have to keep your face always will be very smiling in the thing so when you are call for when you are attending any if you are communicating to somebody you are we are in a very tight place your face is most important so please remember that uh, keep your face always when you have been called for it don't carry any type of sad sad sadness or sadness or any type of worry don't keep it with you right try to have an enjoyable mood try to have an a, a happiness mood then your your performance will be a best for it so so non verbal communication which eye contact is one another one is called uh, facial expression the third important non verbal communication model is called gestures gesture in the sense gestures are always support your communication so gestures here what happen there is no words here this picture will answer to this picture will communicate it it will complement the the communication aspect by by for example you are seeing these three pictures this picture we need not write anything here this is communicating that It, these are so without word this is more effective by seeing this picture this is by this more effective on that this is called positive gesture this is called positive gesture it means it is communicating and it's communicating for a good purpose don't hear don't see unwanted things don't hear un undesirable aspect don't speak in undesirable words so they are all expressed here right these are called gestures these are called 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Support your verbal communication. You need not speak. Now you need not give writing. The picture itself will communicate. It is called gestures. At the same time, the, there are some of the negative gestures when you are when, now when you are a student here. You try to if you are having this type of negative gesture, you please try to avoid. What are the negative gestures? Suppose you are pointing out some people, just raising your hand and just showing to them, dragging their feet and keeping your head down. Somebody speaks to you, keeping your shoulders like that, right? Weak handshake. Shifty eyes and keeping hands in the pocket when somebody is questioning you or thing, you put your hands in the pocket or putting cross leg when sitting in front of some seniors. No, put yeah, keeping your leg in the cross. These are called negative gesture. It communicate a wrong information about you to the outsider. So try to avoid this type of negative gestures uh, in your, your communication style. The next one is called posture. Posture is nothing but how do you sit in your classroom. How do, when you are called for, in, for example, in an interview board, how do you sit in the chair? It's more important, right? How you are keeping your body and in the chair, it's more important. For example, now I am taking class, right? Now I, my posture is very straight. I am not sitting like this in my chair. I'm not taking a class. If I take a sit like this and start taking the class, you may not take interest of that. So how you have been keeping your body in a position, right? How you are, so the leaning backward and then the head, Keeping your head in the other side, head down, tilted one. This all called posture, wrong posture. This wrong posture will not be more effective in the community. So when you call for interview, you have to sit very properly, very straight, and you are you are able to express through your body movement. Your body, you you should lean forward. We call you call pay when we when you wait lean forward. What happen? You are paying a lot of attention to the the, the interviewer. That's called. So you see the news leaders. The, when you are seeing the TV news, when you look at the news, that how they are sitting the position, they are, that's called posture. That's called good posture. If they sit comfortably, if they, if they give the news, then nobody will take interest to understand their uh, thing. So posture is in another non-verbal aspect, aspect of that. The, this one which I told you that distance measure. So how, how uh, depends on the, to whom you are communicating, right? And what is the distance you are going to maintain? Accordingly, your communication nonverbal starts. There are four types of zones are there, intimate zone, personal distance, social distance, public distance. Intimate zone, which I told that mother and baby call very close, only one and a half feet. If there is a 18 inch and 14, four feet, for example, you are going to talk with your professor in his room, right? Then their table will be always, most of the, most of the tables for the professors will be, faculty will be around four feet. So you will be talking in another four feet opposite side and you will be answered. That distance called personal distance. So you will be talking a, in a, a, a very close and a confidential message, something you are talking on them. And social distance, in a classroom situations, in a classroom, your teacher will be standing minimum of four feet, maximum of 12 feet distance. Your, your benches, now your benches, you are all sitting in the benches now. So he is maintaining around minimum four to 12 feet distance he is answering to you. That distance called social distance. And suppose your teacher is taking, or you are talking from the an auditorium, in a big auditorium, there your distance is more than 12 feet. That is called proximity. That is called how much distance you are maintaining accordingly, based on the maintain uh, aspect, the distance maintaining, in the, the discussion or the communication takes place, proximity. And uh, the another, another aspect in nonverbal is called paralinguistics. Paralinguistics mean, which is a, a vocal aspect of communication, which I told you that how you are using your rate of speed, where volume, pitch, filler, filler words, right? Ah, mm, mm, ah, oh. These are called filler words, right? These are called filler. These filler words also will support your uh, communication. It's called paralinguistics. Paralinguistics, obviously, it's not linguistic, it means language. Para is always, it's not original language, but at the same time, it will give some meaning. That's called paralinguistics, which is which will support your communication, your voice, your vocal, your rate of speed, your pitch, your volume. This all will help you for your this all help for the proper communication. So, so which I have told you that there are two types of communication. One is called oral communication. Now I completed oral communication to us. So somebody can uh, uh, tell about what do you mean by oral communication? Oral communication, what are the things? Please, quick, because I have to cover a lot of slides are there. 
communication. No, I am not hearing properly. What do you mean by oral communication? Which are, how many types are there? By using the words. Words. Other than other than words, that's called verbal communication. If they are not using the words, then it is called non-verbal communication. Non communication, right? So, uh, in the any any communication in a total of communication, verbal contribute how many percentage? Verbal contribute only thirty five percent, right? Sixty five percent contribute. If you are a really good communicator, sixty five percent your non-verbal contribute for it. Non-verbal means which are non-verbal. Very good, very good. So you are your body posture, right? Your body position, your gesture, posture, your eye contact. Your these all called uh, non-verbal. These two combined only it makes to be a, a good communicator. If with respect to the oral communication, oral communication. Now I am communicating. Now I am uh, talking about written communication. So now written communication means which something we we'll write and we are giving to somebody. So it is a very best method to communicate. So it is in this in the writing is the one of the important form for communication and writing in the form of written form. So so when you are writing the form, so it means you are writing a letter to your 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 professor. You are writing letter to your uh, uncle. You are writing letter to your, your vice chancellor. You are writing letter to your director. That is called a written communication. So you cannot. So there also you can very formal and informal way of communication is there, right? Informal means what happened? It is called the internal communication. Informally you are communicating. For example, your own your your colleagues. So about today's class in WhatsApp, we are sending a lot of messages to them. It's all it's all it's all informal communication, which is not a very formal. We never write every time that dear sir, respected sir. We don't write it, right? Just you send a message to them. Right, will not have a very grammatical aspect anything. No grammar, nothing. We can send a just a message. We can communicate. Right, it's called an internal communication. Tomorrow class is there at nine nine a.m. Please join it. So your your class leader is giving a WhatsApp message. It is called internal communication. So there there is no not not much uh, etiquettes. Etiquettes means some type of rules and regulation. Formality will not be there. But when you are writing letters to the in a in a official. You are writing letters to you in a in a professional way, right? Suppose you are joining an or a company or joining in a particular office, you are joining it and you are writing something. So there you have to follow the some of the rules and regulation because you are communicating in something. What is that? You focus on the format, structure the content, ensure the connectivity from first line to second line, and level of formality, dear sir, respected sir, uh, those things you have to maintain. And you have to use very short form information. Don't give a long information. Your grammar is more important. Your spellings are more important. Where you want to give the full stop, where you want to give the comma, you have to write it. And to whom you are writing it? Let us say audience. Who is audience? You are writing to director, or you are writing to the farmer, or you are writing to the, your own uh, uncle. To whom you? So that type of sensitivity to the audience and creativity should be there in your communication and. Unwanted words, jargon words, you are not use it. So these are the things called the rules and regulation. So when you are writing a written communication, that's called etiquettes. We call so etiquettes of when you are writing something to them in an officially. So when suppose you join in a company, right? Uh, in after this, we are base age. You have to follow the this type of things, right? You have to follow a very proper way of the aspect. Then the communication will have a more effective. Call etiquettes like that. So uh, I told that excessive words. See, for example, when you are writing, always when you are writing to somebody, try to avoid more words in that. Try to give. If there are some more time, sometimes three words also will give the same meaning, and five words also will give the same meaning. So therein, you can reduce your two words. For example, you see here, you are writing the word called. You are writing an essay.
one more so when you are writing any sentence for written communication you try to have not more than 17 words that and at the same time a single sentence should not have many ideas it should have a, for example you are you are requesting for uh, a, a, a change of examination date in a, in a request letter to your professor like you cannot write sir i i need to change the date and i have my subject has to be changed and i try to the content should be reduced don't write so many ideas in one one line one single line a sentence should not have not more than one to two if you are right so many ideas in one sentence writing and 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 it will not have any meaning for it so try to have a limited word, limited ideas only one or two ideas and not more than 17 words that you maintain it next similarly when you are writing a letters to someone you try to use very small paragraph don't write it a bigger paragraph when you are requesting something right you and one paragraph should have a link with the second paragraph first paragraph should have a link with the second paragraph so making a, a formal letter when you are writing it smaller paragraph normally what happen when we read some letters right we try, we will be reading the first line or two lines only later we will come to the next paragraph so if you have a, so many photo paragraph many we will you, we will read more officers used to read more if you are writing one big paragraph people will not read more we will read they will read first two lines then they will read last line so probably you may not get a proper answer for it proper answer for it so try to use a small paragraph in your written communication similarly when you are writing a letter also or when you are responding to somebody right always try to use a positive tone a positive words what is the positive word you use this such a word i am very much glad to hear a report from you and i need some type of improvement in your letter i will be very happy to hear something good news from you you use instead of writing a negative word why you delayed it why i have doubt on your note i have you know you failed to submit it uh, you you are creating a problems your problem is you know not understandable instead of, that is called negative tone 
right then that's called negative tone if you use positive positive tone now the other party the kind the person who is receiving communication from you will be more happy on that that's called positive tone so you use the always word when you are communicating to somebody when you are communicating it can be in a written communication itself right i am very glad if the examination has been scheduled as we rescheduled tomorrow right i need lot of uh, i need can you improve some uh, some extent can you do the improvement over the night last one so right such a words will be so use the positive tone in your written communication so in spite of these all barriers there will be a lot of barriers will be there these are general barriers in a, you cannot expect that everything will be for example now in the communication itself class if they, you, you your disconnection happened it network network has gone right so it may be due to the physical barrier it can be an environmental barrier it can be time or sometimes the wrong choice of the medium the type of selection sometimes my powerpoint may not work properly or some type of my cultural issues why may be a cultural issues may be problem so psychologically for example today if i am not well or if i have psychologically my health is some issues are with my mind right i may not be able to take a class also comfortably right some type of the emotions some type of my attitude this all also will spoil it Yes, these all call. So these all the barriers are there in the. Still, you want to look into the barrier and you avoid it, and you then you make it a better communication. So so uh, so far I covered a uh, uh, oral and written communication for the competency for uh, communication skill. Right. So any questions? So can you somebody can say about written communication quickly before I talk about digital teaching? written communication can somebody can brief two lines volunteers volunteers very quick time is very less for me how your written communication supposed to be hello i need answer otherwise i will not take class hello 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 sir ha ah, can you tell me about the important tips for written communication so written communication means sending messages or orders or instruction in writing through letters or manuals reports bulletin okay. it is a formal method and it is bit less flex flexible than the oral communications okay and what uh, if you are writing a written communication in a formal communication formal right what are things you should remember it it should be clear and ah. understandable hmm whatever i said it can you make it uh, what should be the number of words should be in one sentence maximum words in one sentence what is the maximum number maximum words in a one sentence you can keep it 10 to 15 words okay maximum of 17 words right that is the maximum of 17 words one sentence at same time yeah, yeah, you uh, you write in a smaller paragraph in written communication don't use a bigger highest big paragraph right a small paragraph people will understand and it will it will communicate very well don't use negative negative sentences negative words use a very positive word so these are the things which we have covered it okay thank you ma right thank you now i am coming to for the competency on the digital teaching right digital teaching in the sense today we are now it's so i am talking about the classes on the digital teaching what is the going on in the digital teaching this is the conventional in the general classroom situations at general classroom teacher version a teacher will be presenting about some in front of around 25 or 30 people they will be taking it you will be taking more time for the lecture here and very less work they will be giving for the homework that is a conventional learning conventional learning students will be more, students will be teacher will spend more time with the students in a day hour and while leaving he will give little less work on the homework activities but now what happened now in the in the present system the it should be modified the new education system is different in which a teacher will spend very less time with the student and more time students have to spend among themselves that is called learning by doing we have to make the learners we have to make the students to think 
thinking you have to give more on that that is called the, the present uh, aspect to think more why you think think more today students are covered with lot of aspect you will see here this picture which i am showing to you in conventional learning uh, teacher one teacher will be there and there will be 40 students at there everybody will you will be coming with the course material and you will be taking lot of classes to them and if you see this particular diagram that is a present one where the teacher is in the border teacher in the outside where students are in the center of the aspect why students are center here the students are covered with email every students know the email email they they read they can so the e books they can see the lot of photograph they can see the audio video search engine website for example now i am taking a class i am talking about and uh, written communication so somebody can uh, type it in google also what do you mean by written communication you can verify whether whether uh, whether dr sendil sir is taking correct class or not whether sendil sir has given the correct point or not whether he told 17 words whether it's correct or not you can very well correct it because students are presently students are covered with lot of technologies now your technology is surrounded by the students so that a teacher will be able to stay he is sitting in the outside now a teacher has to equip himself now to understand about the student psychology students learning aspect so that the, the model has been changed now from teacher centric earlier teacher was the centric and teacher used to give the material so that material was learned by the students now it has become the student centric so the in the digital teaching now today is it's become more important now as our students are all all of you now you are having the laptop all of you are having the you know uh, um, phone you are able to see the net uh, you are able to down, see the internet you are able to see the e books even some of the aspect with, with before we take a class you are able to collect a lot of material so there are good students they come with the preparations now they are they will come will come compared with the compare with the teachers the students will come prepared with a lot of books and material so they are covered with the digital aspect so digital teaching has become a more important aspect so in this process the teaching learning from teaching to learning it's more important now so we are making the students to make it understand by learning by doing lot of practical right concept map brainstorming quizzes lot of quiz programs combine with combining the lectures with the videos see nowadays teachers are taking the classes and they they are, they have a, a master board the board i think dr murthy might have murthy sir will be taking class to you that how a lecture can be combined with the videos today suppose i am talk, i am talking about my anatomy by body structure or i am talking about how the heart function earlier we used to draw the heart and we will be working that how this you know blood circulation happen now i need not draw anything directly i can bring a video of the heart how the heart function how the blood circulation happens so combining the lecture with the video will become a more effective on that and uh, conducting a small small quizzes in the classroom now the way i i ask some lot of questions to you teacher used to ask some quiz, quiz program they used to give some question paper all of the sudden so people will become so you have to become more active in the classes so in that process student can become more engaged that will become a we are more learning aspect will be happen on that so that learning which we call it a blended learning that so it's not like a traditional learning like where teacher comes when we were attending classes thus them only conventional learning right when we were a student a teacher used to come with the notes he will he will present it he will speak he will write it in the board and we will take a note of it and that was the our subject now it is a different modes teachers are using their methods of teaching is changed style so accordingly your styles of learning also change you are you are also you will not read only lecture notes alone you will be reading the e books you will be going to search search engine you will be seeing the reference books so many books you are able to read and you are that learning called blended learning that learning called blended learning of that right so by having the blended learning what happened we are able to teacher are able to give yes in currents it means any time any place you can read that right yes in synchronous mean all of you are reading at a time yes in currents mean occur different people different age group different places you can sit and read it that's called as in currents communication and there will be active participation in nowadays it can happen it by by having the digital blended learning you will be involved in the video when i start showing some video you will be doing that active participation and uh, you, we can complete the subject very fast you can do the scale up you can you can speed you can go i need not draw anything directly i'll come to the video automatically it will be shown to you right so bringing together of your online and face to face together 
that will become more effective today's world. That methodology, it is called the digital teaching. Today, of course, the digital teaching, it is not for you, it is for the teachers now. Anyhow, since the topic has been given, I'm talking to you. So it is called digital learning, wherein uh, technology has been used for learning purpose. So now, for example, ICT, your computer has been used for technology. This technology is used for learning purpose. That's called digital learning, which in which learners are uh, able to have, he is having control over time, his place, path, and pace where he can choose according to his time. Anytime he can read. So now, anytime you want to read, any any place you can sit and read. So digital learning, people, uh, recorded versions are anytime you can. Even now you can record my lecture and you can read anytime. You can see anytime also, right? So technology helps. Technology enable to learn uh, by you at any many places. So that helps the students today. Equipping the youth and workforce will be become employable skills and their knowledge level has been improved. So there are even there are a lot of animation has come today, right? Even some of the practicals we can do through the digital aspect of them. So that make the youth to become very active, youth to become an employable skill, and we are able to give the aspect of that. There are many uh, uh, organizations are doing it. For example, school level, there are organizations like Khan Academy, NIT, Educom, uh, Meditation, Educart. Now, even recently, now if you're not uh, by use, also giving the school level, right? By use science, if somebody if you buy it, you will understand. A lot of practicals are given in the digital learning. Students can understand very fast on that. Similarly, Khan Academy is giving it, Gyan Lab. These are school level books are there. Similarly, in higher education, in Medrac is they're doing it completely on medical education. Completely from first year MBBS to final year MBBS subjects are covered by MED or EC, Medrac. They are giving, he has given anatomy subject. Otherwise, even in medical, if you are buying a book, it is cost around, minimum of every book cost around 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 rupees. Now you need not buy for it. Everything that Medrag is an organization giving everything learning, everything giving the digital solution. So all the chapters, all the aspects are available. NPTEL for engineering, engineering courses, whether civil engineering, chemical, any engineering course, NPTEL has done it. Yeah. Uh, all the courses have done it, digital courses. And similarly training also, for example, IGNO is having providing a good material. Right? Uh, there are many university, NIT university, there are people for training online uh, digital training you can so without under, undergoing a personal appearance you can under and learn from a digital learning provider they are all le different learning provided this all also is digital learning aspect of that so ict is uh, helping more for learning so the scope of the uh, technology enhanced learning is we are you able to use uh, digital video for uh, capturing the different session different learning resources can be used interaction can be done you can do the Online evaluation, now even examinations also can be done in online evaluation. Quiz can be conducted, assignments can be submitted in online, in which so technology, so tell means technology enhanced learning. It means technology is able to help in our today's education. That is called the digital learning or digital education, which you are making for it. Right. So in agriculture, it is particularly in our agriculture university, many of the universities, our faculties are very, very less on that. So we the, the technology enhanced learning helps, the technology helps even due to the shortage of manpower, we were able to use uh, for our different domain specialist. For example, yes, a specialist not available also, a recorded version can be used in places. So shortage of faculty in many agriculture universities, we are able to use digital education to reach to the many students. So, and it provide a very high quality education we can provide. And we can provide a lot of practical examples we can give a lot of Workbook we can give, literacy level can be increased, we can do it, they can make it. So only thing, only thing they should be well aware of the uh, use of the technology. If you are very familiar with the use of the technology, the learning can be done very, very fast on that. And uh, in this process, I should make you to understand one word called MOOC. Please remember the word, of course, as a student, you need not learn much on that. It is called Massive Online Open Courses, right? Massive open online courses. Massive open and massive mean large in number, and it is open for anybody. It will be done in online courses. So there are now in agriculture, and as a student, you can join it. Any organization, for example, BHU, Banaras Hindu University, Dr. Patel, Sir Jerry Sir will be taking class to you. That they are offering large number of MOOC cources. Right, Army is organizing some of the MOOC courses. 
MOOC means massive online open courses to them. So those courses, you can join it. It will have a lot of additional advantage to you. This is a, it is a, you know, anybody can join for the course. So it is called massive. People will join with a thousand, two thousand, three thousand people will join it. Five thousand people can join it. So there is a, a, a technology is able to provide to the education to the, all the people. That is called the MOOC, massive online open courses, and which is uh, which can be conducted, which can be shared to many people. It's not like 40 students or 30. It will be in thousands of people can learn, and uh, we can provide the videos in the MOOC courses. We can provide audio. We can conduct examination. We can conduct the quiz. So only thing you should have the willingness to learn through the digital courses. That's all. You should take interest on that. That is called massive online open courses. Only there are some challenges that challenges in that you should have a digital literacy and you know, the the system internet system should support you. It should be able to provide. Otherwise, it is a one of the best online courses are nowadays able to provide a very good education material. So otherwise, uh, if you are you are able to use those online material. You, are, you, you will be succeeding in the, you can learn a lot from the his MOOC courses. So, so with this, I'll uh, complete it. I have been asked to complete by 5.15. So uh, this is what can competence in digital teaching, which you can be helpful. So I covered for you competency, how do you enhance it? What do you mean by competency? And communication skill, what are the types of communication where you can enhance your competency? And the, in case of the digital teaching, what are the new types of new digital teaching? What are the advantage for the digital teaching? How the students can understand, uh, how students can use massive online open courses for their better understanding. With this, let me thank you all of you for uh, patient hearing for last one and a half hour to undergo this my session for you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir, uh, for thank you. the lecture on the communication skills and competency management. Uh, so if there are any queries? The microphone. Hello, sir. What is the difference between the mic and the mic? Sir, are you audible? Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Are you there? Hello. It's got disconnected. No go there. Oh, sir, I got discounted again, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, just a minute, sir. One query is there. You can answer in the phone itself. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Sir, uh, uh, what is the difference between the live learning and uh, uh, means, which is the advantage? Is it that live learning or record, recorded online learning? Vishant, are you ready there? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, I welcome Dr. Vishant uh, to the deliver the lecture. So, before starting his lecture, uh, let us uh, uh, go through his uh, curriculum market. I request um, uh, Vina to present the curriculum market to the audience. A very, very good evening to one and all. It's my privilege to introduce about the next speaker, Dr. Dishan Georgis James, currently, currently working as assistant professor, Karuna Institute of Technology and Science, uh, 
they come uh, coimbatu they completed their bsc agriculture from the college of agriculture bc from manda in 2015 after that he completed msc in agriculture extension from the university of agriculture science bangalore in 2017 as well as completed phd in agriculture extension from the university of agriculture science bangalore in 2020 coming to achievements uh dr dishan sir cleared uh, ugc net and qualified for assistant professor and jrf in 2017 in the subject of andragogy and also cleared ars net exam conducted by asrb in 2019 published a novel titled unshelled affinity in 2019 published eight first author research articles and one book from 2017 to 20 and secured the university gold medal Uh, that is for academics for agriculture extension in 2017 and own prize uh, own first prize in national level allocation competition in 13th agri science congress held at us bangalore in 2017 <laughs> he secured the university gold medal that is in uh, cultural for 2011 to 15 batch for bsc iag program own first prize in ex uh, Uh, extremper in national level inter agri youth festival conducted at bangalore in 2014 won first prize in allocation in the national level inter agri youth festival conducted at jabalpur in 2013 won uh, the title of best outgoing student in post graduate degree program and also won title of best outgoing student in undergraduate degree program so i welcome you to sir and uh, the session is over to you Okay. Uh, very good evening, respected uh, professor and head, Dr. Uh, Krishnamurthy sir, and all the dear professors. And I can see online uh, there is Dr. Jirli sir, Dr. Basuprabhu Jirli sir, good evening sir, and uh, Dr. Vinay Kumar sir. He has always been my role model since 2011. And a very good evening to all uh, dear juniors, uh, dear students of uh, Department of Agricultural Extension. Indeed, it's a privilege uh, for me to be just talking to you. I'm just one among you. Just that uh, I've moved out of the department few months ago. But apart from that, compared to all the expertise of other speakers, I would say that uh, my level of uh, knowledge is very less. But at the same time, I've been given a chance to share a few thoughts with you regarding the trends in uh, e-learning. So I'll try to use this opportunity to the best extent. and uh, give some insights i'll be sharing the presentation now and uh, hope it's uh, visible so it's not visible now 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 it's visible okay yes so uh, i can understand i can totally understand what you will be going through right now as students because uh, i was in your seat a couple of months ago as i said so you would be exhausted uh, listening to a lot of lectures the whole day though they would be very insightful lectures but uh, uh, i can understand you would be in a fatigue mode so don't worry it won't be a complete uh, you know theoretical lecture it'll just be a brief explanation that's it of whatever trends are there so if you recollect uh, exactly one year ago all right we were all uh, having physical seminar seminars in the department right so if you didn't attend that seminar that day that means you were absent if you are not feeling well or if you are not present in the particular place uh, in the hall you would be marked absent so all of us were skeptical both students and teachers alike were skeptical to conduct something like online webinars in fact we never imagined that there would be webinars in our department that too the webinars of seminars right but exactly one month after the lockdown began uh, the webinar sessions began in our department we were the first to initiate right uh, hod sir and dr ganesh mithra sir initiated uh, online webinars for our department and we were the first to finish also so almost overnight change right in a span of a fortnight the uh, trend of online education had began in our department and uh, now everywhere we can find uh, a digital education and online education e learning small students to phd holders and postdoc fellows all of them are involved in a digital education and it is here to stay but before beginning uh, the presentation i would like to say one thing no technology can replace our teachers right any technology can come but teachers are the foremost pillars in uh, helping us in guiding us reach our path reach our destination and uh, technology cannot replace teachers but saying that uh, that being said it is responsibility of all teachers to incorporate whatever technologies are available to the classrooms okay sorry 
to make the study material engaging, interactive, and refreshing, right? So what is the main advantage of digital learning? I would say that uh, the main advantage of digital learning is that it helps introverts a lot. Okay? I used to be an ambivert. Sometimes I used to be introvert. Sometimes I used to be extrovert. But I have observed that most classes, majority of the students happen to be introverts, especially uh, with respect to answering questions when they are asked. So in this classroom, even an introverted student can give answers or can interact with the teacher because there is no fear of people laughing. Otherwise, they would think, okay, what will the other students think? Will they laugh? Here, there is no possibility of all the other students unmuting and laughing, right? So that uh, possibility is nulled out. So uh, that is an advantage. And uh, also, I have already said e-learning is here to say there might be dusty blackboards, there might be smudged overhead projectors and oversaturated photocopies that we have been using for so many years. But e-learning has come here and it is here to stay. All right. So regarding the trends, which I'll be focusing on, Sentil sir just mentioned about this and it is actually known as the flipped classroom. All right. Our traditional classroom has been flipped upside down. Okay. Earlier, as I said, what used to happen was we used to come to the class unprepared and uh, the teacher used to give a lecture and we used to go back, end of story. But here it is the opposite. In the flipped classroom method, which has already been practiced in uh, abroad and other US and other countries. So before the classroom, the students will prepare in the regarding the class activities. Okay. They might uh, view a video regarding the class or they might go through the lecture notes. And in this, during the class, what they will do is they will apply whatever they have learned along with the feedback from the teacher. It will be more of an activity session. And then after the class, again, they'll go back, they'll surf the net, they'll try to understand what they have learned and they'll try to grasp more concepts related to that particular subject they learned that day. So this is how it will be a continuous process rather than a one-time process, okay? So this is the flipped classroom trend. And we all have been acquainted with all the Google Classroom and Zoom Meet. So these are all platforms for us to study nowadays. And uh, how can they be enhanced, right? So even now, I'm just saying this as the possibility. I'm not a user of this, but maybe in future I might, right? The, con the convertible laptops or the hybrid laptops, two-in-one laptops, which have touchscreen and with which we can you know, annotate using an e-pen, right? Uh, so that is a possibility. And uh, using a Wacom tablet, all of these might be accessories, definite accessories in the near future. Because earlier we used to go to the Blackboard and we used to write down something if the teacher asks us. But now that is not possible, right? Due to the distance uh, that needs to be followed in certain situations like the present pandemic. So here, what we can do is we can use such uh, tools and make it more interactive. And uh, another trend is social learning. Uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. Am I audible to uh, all? Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay. Yes, so uh, we have always been social learners, right? What does social learning mean? It means we need to learn from the, the process of learning from the behavior of others, Im imitating others, emulating others, right? So since time immemorial, we were uh, hunter gatherers. We used to learn from the uh, elders, what they did, their activities, etc. But as time passed, learning started getting confined to four walls. Right. I was never or most of us were never fans of that when we were in school. We wanted to learn from the interaction and all because each and every student is a specialist in a different type of learning in a different type of knowledge. Right. So one person might be very good at reading notes. One person might be really, uh, very good at uh, grasping something from videos they watched. Uh, one person might be good at uh, listening to audios of other eminent personalities. So when there is an interaction and a social learning atmosphere, there'll definitely be an impact on the learning process of the students, uh, whether it is class-wide chat rooms or file sharing platforms. So social learning has always been better and it will continue to improve in the electronic space because collaboration is always better than self-learning, right? So regarding social learning, one of the possible uh, features that, uh, that are presently available is Flipgrid. You would have heard of it. So Flipgrid is an, a platform wherein responses of students can be recorded. All right. So it can be used to focus on student-centered learning. So uh, the, the, the tagline of Flipgrid is catch the Flipgrid fever, but I don't want any of you to catch any more fever. We have already been uh, pestered by the pandemic for the last one year, but it's just that you can catch up with Flipgrid, of course, uh, and other such uh, modern technologies for learning. Let's just look at uh, how it works. So by, in the meantime, while it opens, 
um uh, i would like to say the first time i came across the concept of moocs uh, was when dr basav prabhu jirli sir and dr deepak de sir had come to our department and given a, a talk on moocs and that was really uh, an enlightenment for us uh, new learning and uh, also uh, during the gcra conference we had learned a lot regarding the online learning and all um so this is one of the classrooms created uh, by me in flipgrid so as of now i have not added students but you can see one of my responses so you can record a response and you can post it okay all the students can do that and it will be very easy for the teacher especially during the ice breaking session the first class usually is the ice breaking session wherein the students introduce themselves right so instead of each and every student introducing themselves and some students hesitate getting to do that they can just go to this flip grid and record the response also various debates and all will be conducted but uh, due to shortage of time they might not be able to express themselves usually only few people will express and the others would want to express but they will hesitate so all of such students can go to this flip grid platform and they can express themselves right okay and then we also have uh, video learning and virtual reality video learning of course now everybody every teacher during the practical classes it is not possible to take the students to the field so they focus on youtube right youtube is one of the best platforms for video learning where in practical aspects can be shown with high clarity in fact it is more advantageous i was uh, discussing with one of the agronomy professors and he was telling that uh, the working of uh, the disc flow or the rotavator is seen by the students online with high clarity and with explanation so if if they go to the field the first row of students might be able to see the activities of whatever is happening in the field regarding any uh, implement or technology but the remaining students we all know usually i was a backbencher and a, you know a relatively less interactive person so whenever we were taken to the field i would just stand at the back and uh, pretend to be listening but never listen but here it is very clear to you and you can access things in a better manner then again another aspect in uh, video learning can anybody say what that person is wearing on his helmet that name of that device person is wearing in the helmet second photo left gopro 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 very good who said that very okay good so usually we use gopros uh, we would have seen this in uh, manali river rafting or dandeli river rafting right that guide who helps in rafting usually has this Uh, or people in bannergatta or any national park or zoo they'll be just holding a stand with a gopro and they'll be moving around even if the stand bends the gopro remains uh, you know upright and uh, recently i was just surfing so for some bike reviews and bike riders also put this on the helmet and uh, ride and give their reviews simultaneously so it is a very good way of demonstrating things and this can be used by our teachers also right they can just have a cap and on that a gopro if it is available in the department and whenever they are going to the fields especially for ug students and all uh, suppose a teacher has gone to a, a a field somewhere far away in the farmer in the farmer's field somewhere far away uh, they can just ask the students to log in to their uh, mobiles and view this they can connect the gopro to their mobile and uh, the students can have a real time interaction or a, uh, or an updation of what is happening in the field through the almost like through the eyes of the teacher right or at least they can be recorded the videos can be recorded and later shown to the students so that is the video possibility the other thing is uh, virtual reality right virtual reality has been uh, used for gaming and all but now it can be used even in agriculture right uh, we can have all of us cannot have access to farms we may not be having uh, agriculture lands or even in the uh, university sometimes due to some constraints the all the students may not be able to go to the greenhouse so in the virtual reality headset we can view things nearby very close and as if they are uh, we are viewing them in uh, reality is what uh, is the concept behind this and a lot of uh, modern technologies can be viewed through virtual reality so that is also a prospect uh, of uh, e learning and moocs a lot of this has been already mentioned and again dr basu prabhu jirli sir will be uh, detailedly explaining to you about moocs uh, but uh, personally i found two platforms uh, very useful one is swayam of the government of india wherein i had just gone through few moocs including uh, agricultural journalism and agricultural policy and ag moocs is also very useful wherein uh, one of the courses was entrepreneurship rural entrepreneurship development and it is being uh, conducted with uh, collaboration with bihar agriculture university and iit kanpur i guess okay you can just go through the moocs 
And apart from that, there are various uh, MOOCs courses like uh, in Coursera, there is social psychology and uh, public speaking. Most of us have a problem in public speaking. So you can just take courses on this rather than saying that I'm not good at speaking. So most students uh, tell that they're not good at speaking. But uh, if we put in a dedicated effort, we can definitely come up in speaking. I can see one of my uh, friends, uh, Dr. Sanket, is also here. And uh, we uh, used to hesitate initially to speak out. But later on, uh, both of us improved ourselves in the public speaking platform. And um, again, coming to artificial intelligence, there is a course in udacity.com. And uh, I've provided the links. Maybe I'll be sharing that. And even for English in the workplace, also we can have a certain MOOCs. And all of these courses can be viewed in our mobiles, right? Mobiles are have become our appendages, just like how we cannot live without uh, breathing. Now it has become uh, a part of our body, right? Uh, we always keep searching for our mobiles. So these apps like Show Academy and uh, uh, edX and other platforms can be available as apps and uh, they can be regularly viewed. And regarding apps, can I ask somebody uh, present there, how many apps do you have in your mobile? If anybody wants to answer, how many apps do you have in your mobile as of now? Anybody volunteering? 35. Uh, who is this? Imran, sir. Uh, hi, Imran. Okay. 35 apps Imran has. And uh, so, the, which is okay, nominal number, not a high number. But usually I have seen students who have hundreds of apps in their mobile just because they have storage space and high-end mobiles. They keep on downloading apps, gaming apps, that app, this apps. In, for newspaper reading, it's like they have 10 apps and they won't be reading one also. So instead of cluttering our mobiles with apps, we can restrict the number of mobile apps to maybe 20 or 30. On a particular domain, we can have one or two apps, right? So in that way, we won't, we won't be confused and overwhelmed as to which app to use. And always, once you have downloaded the app, you can switch on the reminders and uh, at least once in a day or once in two days, keep on learning something, especially you can use the app Duolingo, right? D-U-L-I-N-G-O to learn new languages, especially now if you want to go abroad and work, you need to know that particular language, whether it is German or whether it's Spanish. So in Duolingo, there'll be a regular updation uh, of your knowledge skills and you can do that. And also uh, regarding uh, courses like Shaw Academy offers many courses and edX. There are a lot of free courses available. Please make use of all that uh, because now the uh, even the job market next in few years, you'll be all searching for jobs. So a lot of uh, you know employability is required. Additional employability options are required. Skill sets are required. And this is available unlike earlier at your fingertips and we have to make use of that. Sir had already mentioned, Sentil Sir had mentioned this. So NPTEL is on the platform, even Karun University, which I'm working in right now, which is National Program on Technology. Anytime, right? So a few courses, let's look at humanities, one of the courses in humanities. So he, these are the upcoming courses you can enroll, uh, microeconomics, econometrics, language science, sociology in India, effective writing. We need to be good writers if we want to uh, you know, uh, express ourselves properly. Okay. And then there are a few management courses, also courses related to agriculture, which can be helpful for the UG students and also for us because we need to be updated in agricultural aspects like dairy and food process and farm machinery, irrigation, organic farming, etc. All right. So, and then coming to social media and education. Though, <coughs> sorry. Um, though social media has been there for a long time, about uh, till 2020, it was mainly used for communication, right? We can agree to that. Uh, just for chatting, text messaging, sharing few videos or images, that was the main role. But now almost every educational university or institute is using social media and education. Okay, whatever activities are performed by the students, a snapshot is taken and immediately it is updated in Instagram as a post or a story or in uh, WhatsApp groups or in Facebook. So Students will come to know, even the teachers, they're sharing informative links to the students on the uh, chat groups and social media. And I'm not saying this uh, just like that, but there is proof. Uh, let's look at the top tools for learning.com wherein a survey was conducted. And based on that survey, let's look at the results. Okay. 
These are the results of the 14th annual survey published in 1st September 2020, very recently. And it gives the top 200 uh, tools for learning. All right. So in this list, you can see the first rank which was similar to 2019. In 2019 and 20, the first rank was backed by YouTube. So YouTube, though it is a social media, has been ranked as the first educative tool, okay, tools for learning. And it has been ranked first in the category of PL 100, which is personal learning, also first in the category of ED 100, which is education, and uh, fourth in the category of workspace learning. And in workspace learning, the first ranked tool is Zoom. Okay, and then also Google search, it might be a search engine, but it has been ranked highly third rank in the top 200 learning tools, even a PowerPoint has been ranked high. So there is word LinkedIn, Twitter, and you can see WhatsApp is also there in the top 10. So social media, you can see here also Facebook and so many other social media are there in the top uh, 200 list. So make effective use of social media. Occasionally, we can take a social media detox when it comes to unnecessary uh, you know, spending time, if you are spending more than four or five hours in social media doing nothing, if that is unproductive, then it is time to take a detox and then focus on only those groups, only those individuals who will provide us some information, some growth in our life, rather than just being in all the groups and not growing out of it. So occasionally to have some fun, one or two groups uh, of our friends is fine, but uh, unnecessarily involving ourselves rather than studying in other activities involving others in other activities is not recommended. Again, it's left to you totally. Here again, in online learning, it's totally dependent upon the students. More interested the students are, more dedicated they are, the better they will learn. Teachers are just facilitators here. And in the physical classroom, the teacher will be there to monitor you. But here, you, all of us, including me, all of us as students of online learning have to be more and more dedicated. The next concept is podcasts. Podcasts, we used to hear this term, but exactly what are they, right? They are small video, uh, sorry, audio recordings, audio clips of people speaking, maybe on various aspects like spirituality, uh, on the life stories, on uh, various technical aspects. So I often listen to podcasts of uh, Gaur Gopal Das Swami. Uh, if you have heard of him, he usually gives these funny, uh, you know, anecdotes and he's uh, very influential as well. Also, there is Sadhguru's podcast. Then there are podcasts on famous personalities like uh, Newton, their life story, Einstein's life story. There are educative podcasts. Um, so all of these, what, what can be done is, one thing is if I just uh, tell you to listen to podcasts, none of you will do that, neither will I do that. So every day, GKVK is a wonderful campus, right? We go for walks every evening or maybe, uh, uh, maybe say Chandan and other people who are passionate about the gym, they hit the gym every day. So usually what happens is they, all of us put on our headsets and we listen to music. One hour of hard work, full-time music. So if you're walking through the campus of GKVK for one hour, uh, engaging one hour with music may not be that interesting for us also. So half an hour, you can listen to music, your favorite music. Remaining half an hour, you can listen to three to four small 10-minute podcasts or five-minute podcasts of influential people who will be giving some information regarding maybe a philosophical aspects or maybe new technologies. So in that way, we can improvise and, and not waste our time particularly for that. We can integrate both our work and the education. Then we have digitalized books, okay? So eBooks are very common to us, but most of us don't procure eBooks because they are costly. So one option is Kindle Unlimited, wherein you can spend around 169 rupees per month uh, just like you, you would definitely be spending 129 rupees per month on Amazon Prime. 40 rupees more, you'll be getting Kindle Unlimited. And uh, it can be a good gift for others also, right? And audiobooks are there. So the difference between podcasts and audiobooks is podcasts uh, wherein people speak to you. Audiobooks, the text is already there and a recorded voice would convert that text into their voice and they will speak to us. Uh, they'll read out that story to us. And then there is multimedia ebook where an audio, video, images, and text would be con uh, collaboratively presented to us in the form of an ebook. Okay. So those were few tools. I had already said a few trends. And uh, right now we are almost done with this pandemic, but can't say completely done. And especially in the last one year, students across India and the world suffered a lot. Especially in India, you can see 32713,000. 3, those with a million number of students who were severely affected by e-learning, but also because of that closure, temporary closure of all the schools, 
overnight we were all uh, you know forcibly shifted to the online mode and in fact we are slowly learning the benefits of online mode so yeah two trends we had discussed earlier one was uh, social learning the other was flipped classroom another trend is gamification right gamification is converting the educational process into a game like process so vinayesh is uh, fluent with uh, game theories and uh, he used to conduct games uh, in whenever we used to come to gkvk and uh, give uh, classes so uh, we used to enjoy you know playing games and uh, studying in that process even uh, whether it is dr shimuthi sir or uh, krishnamuthi sir he used to conduct they used to conduct games in the class or uh, activities in the class and that we still remember those activities and games through them we used to learn more so it doesn't matter whether you are 50 years old or whether you are 90 years old whether you are 5 years old learning is always more interesting when it comes to games you can see our parents they'll be very serious right but as soon as you give them a game like uh, candy crush or something they'll become like children in few minutes of time they'll get involved in that similarly if the study material can be converted into small games and presented to the students they're already available even the teachers can develop their own games also so that will be a better process for learning so that is gamification for example see look at this slide this is one of the game i took a screenshot of this Uh, it is related to management account management so here uh, a person called john is there we have to help john overcome the challenges in his path to become a successful account manager okay so a lot of options will be given what we have to help john in decision making right so similarly we can imagine a game wherein a farmer is there and basically extension and extension is deal with decision making of farmers so how can we help them so through these games we will be acquainted to various problems of farmers how solutions can be given what would be the end result whether they will be benefited or not all this can be integrated based on big data game can be created and uh, by playing these games the students will be immensely benefited and they can help farmers take better decisions in the future in an interactive and informative manner as well as in an interesting manner all right now coming to micro learning that's another new method or trend which was again i feel all of these concepts would have been mentioned so i don't want to elaborate on this but simply put if a 2 hour lecture is given to you how would you feel you would feel really boring right uh, totally worn out at the end of the session so the concept of micro learning is break it down mix it up okay so instead of 2 hours continuous lecture make it four small sessions of 25 25 25 25 minutes and give 5 minutes break in between and each concept the main concept can be uh, divided into four sub concepts and each concept can be delivered or uh, ex explained on for few minutes of time so instead of swallowing the complete apple and uh, suffering later we can split it up right so in this uh, moment i remember an event that happened um, i guess in ug so i was in first year ug and my senior uh, immediate senior so he had he, he was given his batch was given a whole notes okay whole uh, syllabus notes by the teacher almost 100 pages and that person hadn't studied for uh, the exam previously so entire night that person studied that senior studied and uh, in the morning at around 7:30 he slept he couldn't attend the exam also most of us would have had some of the other experience like that so instead of swallowing the complete apple instead of grasping the whole notes one day before the exam if it is taught bit by bit even we will and if it is blended with that earlier flip classroom method so we'll also go back we will also interact with uh, the net and the e learning tools and we'll be registering them in mind okay one of the concepts that uh, educators say is don't underline okay we usually have the habit of underlining why do we underline we are actually procrastinating saying that we we'll underline now later we'll come and learn but actually how many of us go back and learn that and when we were in 12th standard when we were in 10th standard what we used to underline next day itself we used to read again but as days passed as the flexibility increased as our pressure on us decreased uh, the revision part came less and less including me most of us so if the subject is taught to the students then and there and if it is you know uh, i would say reaffirmed in that particular day it will always stay in our mind because even even the uh, you know edgar dales kind of experience we would have learned in ug and all that says that whatever we do we retain 90% of that so that's what we should be doing rather than just listening to like just the whatever teachers tell us we should supplement us supplement it with our own work okay and what are the ways to deliver micro learning it can be micro nuggets it can be infographics or the serious games micro podcasts micro presentations videos assessments etc 
and then there are interactive learning quizzes okay so quizzes uh, in fact uh, ganesh muthu sir had given us the quizzes app uh, you no know, introduction on quizzes app and he had shared the link with us and all i uh, guess two years back and he had asked us after every uh, webinar uh, sorry after every training session sir would ask few questions related to that on quizzes but we never responded and then that uh, sort of subsided but now i regret it i feel that that should have been used better by the students including me so at least now you students whenever teachers give you such innovative concepts especially people like ganesh muthi sir they are uh, you know they have lot of information and they are uh, potent sources of e learning so you have to uh, i want to exploit them you have to at least try to extract whatever information they have by interacting with us and responding to them and coordinating with them, with them right so vooclap is one of the interactive learning quiz you can see the teacher there they have, the teacher has asked some question and the students are responding on the mobile phones so mobile phones are being used and uh, allowed the teacher is allowing the students to use the mobile phones and laptops especially in foreign countries it is common so here whatever quiz is done when a teacher in the traditional classroom asks a question maybe one person or two persons repeatedly they will only be answering other people will not respond here we can get the response of all the students if not all 90% of the students okay and then uh, kahoot is another platform where you can create host and play the quiz then there is something called cloud credits okay cloud credits are nothing but tokens that you can get for your e career cloud career okay you can learn and become uh, professionals in the cloud career nowadays even if you sit at home and if you have a laptop uh, and a uh, net connectivity you can earn your salary right my brother in law has been doing work from home since uh, last one year and is getting a regular salary in uh, us so most of the professionals techies have the advantage of this why not even uh, agricultural professionals agricultural graduates um, post graduates and psc students why can't we make use of these platforms so what is aws actually in fact it is amazon services so just look at uh, what amazon has to offer all right so in the amazon web services one of it is uh, aws educate wherein it is a token for our cloud journey okay so a sh- small video uh, please tell me if it is audible it's not audible i guess Uh, can somebody tell me if the video is audible it's audible sir okay Yes, that's a the cloud journey that you can have. So. it can be viewed on youtube or on amazon platform so yes that was i okay uh, so how many how much uh, time more do i have because it's already late A few more slide maybe 5 minutes Okay, this is another five minutes. Okay, so five minutes. Okay, so here again we have online teaching resources, right? So we have heard of hybrid classrooms, and now we are moving towards high flex classrooms. Okay, I would like to open that link, but again it will take time. So in hybrid classrooms, usually a portion of the uh, classroom material, okay, uh, the syllabus or the curriculum will be dealt with in online mode. The remaining will be face to face mode. Whereas in high flex classroom, in the classroom itself, uh, as the previous speaker said, sir said, we can have access 
to internet, uh, online learning, as well as the face-to-face -face communication. So this is another trend wherein our education is moving towards. But again, here we have to consider as teachers, you, or most of you are future educators, right? That's why I'm addressing you. Consider this uh, tag that is Maslow before Bloom, right? We should always consider the basic uh, needs uh, of the students, whether they need, whether they have access to the laptop, whether they have access to to the internet connectivity, try to solve their problems. If they have some problems, try to you know uh, facilitate their issues. And then later on, con uh, concentrate on the uh, extent of teaching that you would be having or the toughness that you'll be introducing in the teaching. So this is my last slide. In fact, uh, I took five minutes because I just wanted to focus more on this. This is the virtual labs. Most of you would have heard of virtual labs. You would have gone through the virtual labs as well through websites. But you can see, uh, can anybody say what is IPO2? There's no such word, but if you can read from right to left, you can get it. The first one, right to left. Nobody? Just read this word right to left. Somebody can give me the answer in the Utopia. meantime. Yes? Utopia. Okay, exactly. Right. So this is uh, actually from the derived from the word utopia, which means it is a very ideal situation for learning. Uh, so here you can see uh, a lot of concepts can be learned, especially for UG students and all. For us, maybe when the genetics uh, course was taught, we were always confused as what is the three to one ratio, what is the nine to three to three to ratio. So here you can just do your own, uh, you know, you can involve in the lab activity. You can cross any two organisms virtually, you can self cross any organism or subject any organism to random mutagenesis. And uh, in that way, you can understand what are all the outcomes of those uh, activities. And when it comes to biochemistry, we had to by heart all those Krebs cycle, ED pathway and all. But here you can examine the structures and edit the amino acid sequences and learn in that manner in the virtual lab. Also regarding DNA sequences or whether you know evolution practices, all that. Okay, so then we have something called Labster. Let's just check what Labster is. I'll be ending uh, with this slide so you can go back, no problem. But it's informative. I'm sure that once I say you please go through that, maybe after you go back, you may not go through all this. So that's why I'm just doing this. So Labster again is for chemistry and bio, uh, chemistry oriented subjects. So you can see one of the examples, acids and bases. So if you go to this virtual lab, you will have various day-to-day uh, -day activities that you'll be handling. And for example, this is where you'll have the acids, you'll have the bases, you'll have various other chemicals, you'll have the weighing machine, you'll have the gloves also. So you can uh, you know, use this to virtually conduct an experiment rather than going to the lab. So this is how it works, right? And then you have iCivics, which is a civics oriented subject. Uh, in fact, this would be very interesting if, you, if I got at least one minute to just show what this is, or you can go and just you know, practice this. So here what happens is there is a game like, uh, a lab like situation wherein you are a law student and you are asked to solve the problems of your clients. Okay, it's very interesting. This can be, again be used in agricultural extension as well, maybe E extension or something like that. So, uh, it's a bit slow anyway. All right. So the other is uh, Sakshat. Sakshat is again uh, our own IIT, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati's virtual lab. So, so there are a lot of subjects being taught in this lab, like business communication, common errors in English, communication skills, grammar, etc. Let's just click at business communication. Uh, we just, the procedure is simple. You have to select the exercise and uh, answer the questions and test your score, right? For example, uh, the, uh, you know, finding similar words from a, pa a passage. So the first question might be something like prime. So here I can find a word called vital. So if I just type uh, vital here and check the answer, it is correct, right? So you have to pay several thousand rupees for IELTS, TOEFL coaching. Such free courses are available on uh, virtual labs of IITs, et cetera, wherein you can go through all these and enhance your skills. Okay. So this is the last uh, thing that I would like to mention. Anyway, you can just go to this platform and uh, 
see what is the icivics thing okay so all of these are available on the internet there are these trends are being uh, practiced and they are there to stay these are followed across the globe and uh, even in a few days earlier when you used to say future trends we used to think of what would happen 10 years later 5 years later but now it is what will happen tomorrow or what will happen next week so that is the future for us so we should all be updated we should all be uh, at the you know best possible form of us and in that way we can also help ourselves as well as the future students who will be teaching right so thank you so much for uh, listening to me and i would like to conclude by saying helping students okay as teachers helping students find a path to purpose is the noblest aspect of teaching one of the noblest aspects of teaching all right so we have online uh, teaching tools but through all those tools we have to help all the students find a path to their purpose if not show them the purpose at least a path to the purpose and that way we can uh, have a, an influence on them through our teaching thank you so much for your time and listening to me and uh, thank you for the department all the professors to for giving me an opportunity to interact with the students and share my thoughts thank you Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shri Bishal. Uh, so now, if there are any queries from the audience, any queries? Okay, he anyway, is very close to all of you, so you can make a query to him. Maybe having his number, you can just call the call him and uh, call over phone and try. Uh, since the time is running out already, uh, I thank all the participants uh, that were stayed back till now and attended the marathon session session today. Uh, so tomorrow we will join again at nine o'clock. I thank once again all of you for uh, attending this program and making it uh, even fun. So thank you one and all for joining. Disham, especially thanks to you, you have made a wonderful attempt and it has a nice presentation now. Uh, thank you. Uh, I could have given you could have given some other slot, but you are also occupied tomorrow morning. That's why I couldn't uh, accommodate uh, tomorrow morning. I thought of giving you a nine o'clock slot. But no problem. Anyway. Uh, so keep in touch. We'll have some more uh, occasion. Sure, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll meet again tomorrow morning.